Okay, test, test, one, two, three. Can you hear me today? Are we in a 360 live stream or are we in a normal one? This is very important. <laughs> we got to make sure all this stuff is working before we get rolling today. Uh, so we don't have any big time screw ups like yesterday. Uh, first things first, uh, thank you to everybody uh, for showing up this morning. It's bright and early, 4.50 a.m. on the East Coast. We are awaiting landfall uh, from Hurricane Idalia. Uh, we've got uh, storm chasers out there. Um, we got Y'all Force One already on the road near Ocala, Florida. Uh, we've got uh, Chris Hall out there as well. And we've got a collection of storm surge sensors and we've got more storm chasers on the way, okay? Um, we have got, uh, you know, a lot of stuff going on today, uh, so hopefully you guys are ready for that. Let me edit uh, one of our filters here just to make sure my voice is coming through loud and clear. Uh, we don't want me to be quieter than Zello whenever it comes through and stuff, so I'm going to turn that back up. And, okay, we should be good to go. And, um, guys, this morning... We do have a major hurricane on our hands, okay? We, we figured this was going to happen, uh, but it is, it's real now. we got a Category 3 with 125-mile-per-hour winds uh, getting ready to make landfall here somewhere uh, between Horseshoe Beach and um, I'd say Keaton Beach, all right? We've had a really hard right turn uh, right here at the last minute, um, and it does look like this is going to go straight into the Big Bend area as a Category 4 storm. Still expecting 130 mile per hour winds upon landfall, and that is exactly uh, what we're uh, getting ready to get into. We've got our storm chasers, uh, Brad Arnold, and um, yeah, Brad Arnold's up here near Perry. He's live. Um, if Carly can hear me back there, we should probably go ahead and get his feed pulled up. Um, and then we've also got Chris coming on, and, and there's a lot of other people that are going to be uh, involved in the stream today. Even though the storm is about to make landfall, we still have rapid intensification going on with these uh, convective bursts on the western side of the storm. And you can see this really well on radar, actually. The, the, the western side of the storm, surprisingly, is the most impressive on radar right now, which is normally not what you see. Uh, but still, this is going to be quite the um, uh, the intensification process as we're going through a little bit of an eye wall replacement cycle on its approach to land. So I still think that this could kind of cut up a little bit farther hey Ryan, north. It's Chris, just letting you know, power flashes are already being reported here in Perry. We've had a couple of significant wind gusts, probably 40 to 50 miles an hour ahead of the uh, land falling hurricane. Okay. All right. So we've already got uh, strong winds in Perry, which is where um, Chris Hall is. It's also where uh, Freddie McKinney is and Ryan Scholl. Um, uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, pretty much everybody that we're working with here is in Perry. Um, uh, we do have a couple of other vantage points that we're going to have today, including from Y'all Force One, which is probably going to station somewhere between Mayo and Lake City, uh, maybe even up there towards Madison. Uh, as this monster hurricane comes in, guys, this thing, after we ended the stream last night, it literally blew up unlike anything that we've really seen uh, before. You know, we had some rapid intensification, huge pressure, pressure falls, um, and uh, we've also seen a couple of uh, tornadic problems today. So let's take a quick look at that. We do have one tornado warning right now. Um, I want to show you what we're dealing with over here uh, to the east, uh, to the north and east of Orlando. We do have a tornado warning for Seminole County in Florida. And uh, this is radar indicated, uh, but I, I don't see a whole lot of evidence here for it. Uh, on the most recent scan. So there was quite a bit of rotation moments ago, but it's led up a little bit. But man, we are going to see a plethora of tornado warnings likely today. So make sure you guys keep up with the ticker down below, um, and that'll allow you to keep up with all of the warnings as they come through. Um, uh, we are also going to see at some point today excessive or extreme wind warnings being issued. Uh, which is uh, a very rare phenomenon uh, in the, the weather world where um, we have that uh, 
uh, the National Weather Service issuing winds that are going to be uh, potentially deadly, and that's only going to happen right around the uh, the eye wall as it comes ashore. I would expect those kinds of warnings to be issued uh, somewhere between Horseshoe Beach and potentially up there towards Perry as well as this thing makes its approach to land. We're watching this thing. It's a now casting event, okay? At this point, we're watching the wobble. We had a hard right turn. Um, and now we've got another kind of more loft, uh, lofting to the north, okay? So this thing's going to kind of wobble around and make landfall somewhere between Horseshoe Beach and Perry. Uh, and we are going to do our best to try to tell you exactly where that's going to happen. Two things to keep in mind. Um, where it makes landfall is incredibly important because the biggest surge problems, that's going to happen on the southern side. Uh, so we're already starting to see those water levels rise pretty significantly uh, over here near Cedar Key. And it looks like that's going to continue to be the case. Uh, it looks to me like some of the strongest winds are actually going to be right on the top of the storm. So that's going to be bad news for Perry. Uh, that could even be pretty bad news for areas just east of Tallahassee um, over here towards uh, Eridu, Lamont, uh, and up towards Greenville, and eventually Madison in Florida. The strongest winds with this are going to be right in here as this comes up to the north and east. It's also going to have some incredibly strong um, uh, rain with it. Flash flooding is going to be a big time problem. And my goodness, guys, look at the velocity on this thing. You can see very strong winds right here around the top of the storm. There's really strong winds all around it. I mean, we're talking about 120 mile per hour sustained winds all around this thing. And for those of you who don't know what that means, in a typical thunderstorm, uh, like a severe thunderstorm, you'll get a 50 or 60 mile an hour gust. It all comes at once, right? And that knocks down trees and that kills power uh, for a lot of people. Well, today we're going to see double that for extended periods of times, so maybe 100 mile per hour winds for hours uh, for some people. And that's going to knock out power for a very long time. And it's going to cause significant damage to structures. Uh, we're gonna see uh, lots of debris. We're gonna see lots of downed trees. We're gonna see roofs ripped off houses, you know, all that stuff. But unfortunately, even with all of that being said, the main problem today is not going to be uh, at all uh, the winds. Uh, the big problem that we're going to have is storm surge and flooding. And that's one of the reasons why we have um, all of our cyclone ports uh, pulled up today. We've got uh, cameras staged in the perfect areas to try to keep an eye on this stuff in the Radar Omega app. Uh, so uh, once again, I want to show you guys this. If you have the Radar Omega app and you have like the alpha subscription, um, you're going to have access to this in your app as well. But if you don't, I have it for you right here for free on YouTube. Um, uh, the If you zoom in and you enable Project Mesovort on uh, the Radar Omega app, you're going to have these little uh, green symbols. Here's the one near Cedar Key. When I click on it, I can pull this up and I can show it uh, and I can look at it. There's 55 of you watching with me right now in the Radar Omega app. Guys, we looked at this same camera yesterday and all of this was beach, okay? So the water level has risen significantly in Cedar Key and we expect it to get even higher. Uh, and Carly, if you can hear me, this needs to be one of the cameras that we've got pulled up. Uh, go ahead and replace it, well, you know, well, one of the other ones that's got nothing going on. Also, Carly, we need Brad Arnold in the number one spot and we need to tell Y'all Force One that uh, for some reason we're, it's pretty choppy. Um, uh, so, like, if we can uh, check the internet or, or just see if, if there's something that we can do. Uh, but in the meantime, let's put Brad in the number one spot. Um, so, uh, we also have an update from uh, our beloved uh, meteorologist, Andy Hill. The lights are green. Uh, so, go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. Hopefully, you can hear me nice and loud. Let me know if you can. Uh, yes, I've got you loud and clear. Cool, cool. cool. Thank you. Um, I just got done with the overnight coverage, continued all the way through and sent everybody over to you. Um, it was uh, a wild six and a half or almost seven hours on on my end. And I'm feeling perky though. I'm I'm ready to keep going. So we're gonna do this uh, eye wall coverage together. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to what you have to say about it because I've stared at it for the last seven hours, but I'll do my best to uh, continue providing updates and also focus in on that uh, tornado coverage. 
Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, Andy. We're looking forward to hearing from you throughout the stream. Um, and uh, thank you for covering the, this throughout the night. Uh, I, I tried to sleep last night, but during the moments where I couldn't, uh, I was tuned in to Andy's uh, coverage and realized once again how lucky we are to have Andy on our team. This guy, he's very good at what he does, super smart, and uh, just absolutely uh, killing it with uh, relaying the, this vital information that so many people are in need of uh, ahead of this uh, extremely dangerous storm. All tornado warnings, I believe, uh, have been allowed to expire for now, but we do expect that to change as time goes on. So just like a severe weather uh, sort of situation uh, where we're tracking tornadoes, uh, we are going to hear from Andy, um, hopefully, uh, as we notice some of these new storms that will be forming um, that will, could potentially cause problems. Um, we've got the lights turning orange now, so that means we've got an update from Y'all Force One. Go ahead, guys. Hey, good morning, Ryan. How are you today? Doing good. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. We just wanted to hop on and check out the and then we also have a little update. Hold on. Wait. I've got a big time echo. Um, I think you guys are unmuted in Zoom and Discord. We just need to hear you in one. No, we should be we, good. We should be good now. Okay, you're good now. Yep. Perfect. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick little update. We have access to uh, Tempest weather system kind of around the U.S., specifically around the western edge of Florida. And we're already starting to see wind gusts that are getting up and exceeding 35 mile an hour, which along the coast is actually going to start to hinder the response of uh, first responders in that area. We talked last night on stream with the Inglis County Fire Department. And they explained to us that as soon as they reach that threshold of 35 mile an hour, they're not gonna be able to respond to calls. So I would say that this is probably people's last chance that if they wanna leave, they realize that this is something that they don't wanna handle. This would be that last chance to definitely get out of there because your shortly fire department police are gonna be unable to respond to the area. Okay, yeah, so that's very important information. Um, I, I'm interested in your all's final decision as to where you're going. Are you going to be setting up shop near Live Oak or Madison or Lake City? What are you thinking? So I think I think right now we're going to head towards the Live Oak area. It puts us about 40 miles inland, so we're going to see a little bit different effect. We're not going to see as much of that storm surge effect. However, we are going to see probably significant winds as the storm does push on inland. And it's going to put us in those just inside the outer bands, uh, but still in the main circulation of the storm. So I think we could still see pretty significant um, wind damage and probably power outage is likely in the area. But like I said, that uh, storm surge, I don't think is as likely to reach that far inland. So just to put us in a more safe position. Okay. All right. Thank you uh, very much. We're going to be checking in with them uh, periodically throughout the day as well. Um, I'm also going to uh, just go ahead and check in with uh, Storm Chaser Brad Arnold because I see he's on the road and also uh, Chris again. Uh, so let's reach out to Brad. Brad, we're live on YouTube. We see that you're live as well. Just wanted to get an update from you and see how you're doing and see how you're doing this morning. Just let us know whenever you get a chance. Uh, let's see, uh, Chris, is your plan to stay in, uh, the Perry area for the duration of the storm, or do you still have, uh, the ability to make a last minute move? Um, just, just wondering what your plans are right now. Yeah, Ryan, we're going to stay here in Perryton just for the safety sake of things. Uh, there's not a lot of towns here um, with a lot of infrastructure. I guess you could say this is about the only town that you have with uh, sturdy buildings that you can actually take shelter under from flying debris or anything. Um, especially if you get winds over 100 miles an hour, you know, you're going to have shingles flying, you're going to have sheet metal flying. Uh, so, yeah, we're probably going to stay right here in the area of, per uh, of Perry. I keep thinking Perryton. Uh, but of Perry, I'm half asleep. I've had like an hour of sleep, so you have to look over me today. Um, but on my stream, you see a bank directly in front of me. Uh, I do think that I will eventually mosey over there, and I think I will ride it out right over there under that bank's awning if it comes to be at that point. But, yeah, we're going to stay right here in Perry and uh, until we 
physically can't anymore or the storm's over so hey ryan um didn't get much sleep last night it's been uh kind of a crazy 24 hours uh just got upgraded to a category four hurricane as you probably know um sitting in perry florida right now trying to get a little bit of b-roll as uh the winds are starting to pick up starting to get tropical storm force winds uh in perry uh conditions are going to deteriorate rapidly as this uh, fast moving uh major hurricane works its way inland a little bit um trying to pick out some areas that we think are safe uh to run from the wind or hide from the wind um also looking at some structures that may be good visually uh for for damage and things like that but um Exhausted is an understatement, um, but uh, we're we're pounding the energy drinks and uh, we're going to do what we can. So, um, just hope everybody stays safe uh, and hopefully everybody has heeded the warnings and uh, evacuated. So, um, as soon as I see anything, I will let you know. Okay, all right. So that's Brad Arnold, um, and we are still getting everything set up with our uh, multi view and everything. And uh, we, that's an update from pretty much everybody that, we, that we've got with us right now. We're still waiting so, on some of our other uh, storm chasers to get out there. Uh, but uh, that's what's going on. And it's official. Um, Andy turned the lights green, and I, I, I guess I missed it or it got overridden uh, by a different alert. Uh, but it is official. Uh, this is a Category 4 uh, hurricane now. Uh, and we do expect, officially from the National Hurricane Center, a catastrophic historic and unprecedented uh, storm surge and destructive winds uh, in the Big Bend region of Florida from now uh, for the next several hours. Okay, and uh, this is something that, you know, you've probably heard uh, multiple times now and it really we hate saying it just because it's it, it's hard to say and also sometimes, you know, people will think that you're just trying to over dramatize things. Uh, but it's true. This is unprecedented. A lot of people uh, have been asking, you know, am I going to be OK in 10 mile if I don't evacuate or, you know, uh, Perry or, or or Cross City or Trenton, these areas. And the the correct answer is um, we don't know. We don't know for sure, because this has not happened before in this area at this magnitude. Everybody that's alive today that lives across these areas has never seen anything ab like what we're about to see. What does 15 feet of storm surge do uh, in, you know, Appalachie Bay up through Suwannee and Cedar Key? We don't know. We're unfortunately about to find out, though, as this, um, you know, huge storm continues to intensify on its approach to the coast. It's already a cap four. We still have several miles of open water for this thing to traverse before it's really going to start rapidly uh, decreasing in intensity. So uh, keep that in mind as we watch the storm come through. Hopefully, everybody got the heck out of there um because uh, it's getting to the point now to where it, it's almost uh, unsafe to try to keep going uh or to get out now uh so let's see if i can refresh this and get that updated okay we don't have an update here yet but i will show you that graphic information as soon as we get it um uh, once again officially from the national hurricane center we do have a Category four. Um, and let's take a look at this thing in uh, 3D mode on Radar Omega. Hopefully you guys are following along with me on Radar Omega. You guys have the same ability here. You can see that we had um, the really deep and uh, kind of clear eye uh, just moments ago. And recently it's kind of become a little bit deformed where we had that brand new convective burst happening on the western side of it. You can see how much taller that is uh, than the rest of the, uh, the storm, if I can get it zoomed out correctly here. Yeah, you see that big convective burst there. That's, uh, you know, even though the eye looks a little bit less um, symmetrical on satellite, that's a sign that this could, once again, continue to uh, kind of blow up in intensity all the way until it makes landfall uh, and that's going to try to wrap around and we'll see the eye kind of uh, straighten back out again here uh, in moments from now potentially as this gets closer and closer to the coast here is the official update on radar omega we have 130 mile per hour sustained winds now um, and a 160 mile per hour gusts, a minimum central pressure of 940 millibars. Uh, and we do expect that to continue to be the case as it makes landfall here.
Worst case scenario uh, is about to happen in, in Florida um, as we continue to watch this come in. Uh, guys, please do me a favor. Uh, just like we did yesterday, we did a great job of this, uh, trying to get the word out. Um, if you can, uh, if you want to share this on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is, um, you could really help us spread some uh, potentially life-saving information as we get into the thick of this storm. Uh, the number one way that we're able to reach people is through you all. Obviously, the YouTube algorithm, you know, we, people see us that way, but nothing beats whenever you guys come together and we have thousands of you sharing us all over the place. We are going to uh, be able to really impact a lot of, of uh, people and, and help people make decisions and help people keep an eye on their interests back here along the beach that have uh, evacuated. Um, but once again, we can do that without your help. So please help us share and we can get some vital information out there. And also, unfortunately, unfortunately, it looks like at some po point during this stream today, uh, we are probably going to have to... Um, uh, fundraise uh, for our nonprofit organization and the more people we have whenever we decide to to do that the better the more people we're going to be able to help so uh, if you're just now tuning in this is live coverage of hurricane Adalia as it makes uh, landfall here in the big band of Florida we are going to follow this thing all day all right it's about to make landfall with catastrophic impacts uh, as a category four here within the next little bit after that, it's not over, okay? If you look above my head, you see the big cone there. The center of the storm is gonna continue to go into Georgia, and we expect there to be hurricane force winds all the way through the panhandle of Florida, all the way through southeastern Georgia, even as it approaches the South Carolina border. This could still be a hurricane at that point. That's how strong this is. That's how long it's going to take for it to weaken. Um, and we're going to try to be with you for uh, a vast majority of the duration of the, the trek that it's about to make. So we started this live stream around 4.50 a.m. We can technically go until you know 4 or 5 p.m., uh, however long we're needed. Uh, so, you know, once we get a little bit farther inland, um, we're going to start really uh, paying attention to power outages. That's going to be a big deal. One second. Road closures. Um, there's going to be a whole lot of devastating flash flooding, unfortunately. And we're going to, and uh, also potential uh, tornado outbreaks uh, in the front right quadrant of the storm, all the way up through the Carolinas as well. Uh, so we're going to try to keep you updated on that. But obviously, until the extreme wind warnings are allowed to expire, until the incredible storm surge is no longer uh, the issue, we're going to have to focus on that, okay? All right, so we've currently got Y'all Force One in, on their approach to uh, either Lake City or Madison in Florida. Uh, we've got Brad Arnold and uh, let's see here, Chris are in Perry. Uh, we've also got Storm Chaser Zach Hall in Madison. I don't know if we've got a feed from him yet or not, uh, but we're gonna try to keep you guys updated uh, with all of our Storm Chasers uh, as they come online. It's early in the morning, everybody's just getting started. Carly, if we could put Y'all Force One back in the one spot uh, for now until these other guys get moving, that would be great. I'm going to go back over here on the Radar Omega uh, app, and we're going to check back in on our storm surge cameras and uh, really try to get an idea of what's going on here. Cedar Key um currently getting a pressure of 996 millibars there and it's pr pretty blurry you can't really see a whole lot of what's going on but the water levels have come up significantly here i don't know how many of you guys were watching yesterday i don't know if anybody has a screenshot of what this looked like yesterday but i'm telling you this was all beach okay this was all dry sand and now all i see is water here so i don't know exactly how much inundation we're dealing with in Cedar Key at the moment, hey Ryan, it's but I'm sure uh, it's had another power bad. flash to my southeast in Perry. Okay, so already we're hearing about power flashes uh, in Perry, which you know that means that we're already seeing wind damage to some extent. And guys, I can't even explain to you how much worse this is going to get. All right, 
Uh, so keep that in mind. Horseshoe Beach, this is what it's looking like over there. Uh, this one, we have a really unique uh, view uh, because of the light. If the power stays on, uh, we're going to be able to really gauge how incredibly uh, big the, the storm surge is getting here. The water is back in this area. It's not over these rocks yet, but I expect that we will see water. Maybe the only thing that we'll, we will see on this camera at some point this morning is going to be the roof of this building as the water comes up once again 10 to 15 feet here maybe even 16 feet uh we've got another camera back here uh towards stein uh stein hatchy or steen hatchy um can't see a whole lot on it also as the sun rises this morning uh we're gonna have a little bit of a better vantage point on some of these uh fish creek florida uh, we've got a storm surge camera here as well uh man there's a lot of these the the radar omega team has done wonders at getting this stuff together. This is another very unique view here, um, and this is close to Keaton Beach, Florida. I expect all that sand to be covered with water at some point here. Uh, and then we've also got uh, Deckel Beach, Florida, where the there's a big pier that we're going to be able to gauge uh, as the water comes in on that as well. So. Right now, the storm surge isn't that bad in some of the places where it's going to be the worst. And the main reason for that is if we put the radar into motion here, you can see the direction that the winds are coming in here is still pretty much from the southeast to the northwest. So the water, uh, the winds are still coming in like this. Whenever that changes, whenever we see the overall motion of the storm bringing the water into the bay this way, uh, which the eye will probably be making landfall at that time, that's when the gates are going to be unleashed and we're going to see the wall of water uh, try to you know, infiltrate some of these areas. Uh, once again, between uh, Cedar Key, uh, Inglis, uh, all the way up to Suwanee and Horseshoe Beach, Looks to me like those are going to be some of the uh, hardest hit areas. Um, maybe even, I mean, we've really got to watch the wobble here and see how much more of a northward turn we get here. But even over here uh, towards Steinachie and Deckel Beach, could those could be some of the harder hit areas as well with the incredible storm surge. It just all depends on where this motion sets up um, with the, you know, the orientation of the eye and the beach. Uh, that whoever gets kind of lined up perfectly there is going to see most of the water. And unfortunately, because of the shape of the Big Bend of Florida, that's going to be the vast majority of you guys for a, a, an extended period of time during landfall. And then, of course, you're going to have the hurricane force winds come in and stuff, and it's just going to be a long morning for a lot of people in Florida. Uh, some of the stronger winds and the heavier rain are gonna be right along the northern side of the eye here. Um, if we look at velocities, I mean, you can see it's literally breaking the scale right now uh, as we do have a lot of different, uh, at least uh, above the ground, a lot of different areas reporting well over 100 mile per hour winds here. And that's gonna continue to be the case uh, as this gets closer and closer to land. I wanna show you some of the updated NHC graphics uh, just to make sure, just to see if there's any sort of uh, new Hey Ryan, it's Brad. Um, just, I just wanted to say real quick, um, I, I've chased quite a few hurricanes, numerous hurricanes. Um, the eye wall presentation right now on, on, uh, on radar is behind, it, it reminds me a lot of Hurricane Michael. It's, it's, the, it's one of the best presentations of an eye wall from a hurricane that I've seen in quite some time. Uh, it looks looks better than uh, Hurricane Ian was last year. So very troubling to see this. Um, it's going to be a very concentrated area where the biggest winds are. Um, but the eye wall is uh, visually extremely impressive right now. I agree. I agree completely. And and once again, Brad, um, we call Brad the tornado sniffer because he's such a good tornado chaser, but he's also had an incredible amount of experience chasing hurricanes. So to hear that from Brad, it means a lot. Like that's, that's not just somebody saying, Ooh, this is, this is bad. Brad Arnold knows what a bad hurricane is almost more than anybody else. Um, so, you know, his interpretation of the eye wall here is uh, something that you don't want to hear once again if you have interests along the coast in uh, Florida but we've we knew this was coming we knew that this was a possibility the uh, catastrophic uh, storm that's about to hit Florida I believe has been incredibly well forecast 
Um, and we've had a lot of time to prepare and just, I'm hoping that the vast majority of people have heeded the warnings here as we're about to see the full force of mother nature unleash itself, uh, here in the big bend of Florida. Let's go back, um, to the national hurricane center website. Uh, hurricane Franklin is still a hurricane. Uh, that's going to skedaddle out of here, uh, over the next little bit. Adalia is about to make landfall key messages here are uh, catastrophic impacts from storm surge inundation of 12 to 16 feet above ground level and destructive waves are expected somewhere between the Wakula Jefferson County line and Yankee Town, Florida. Uh, Life-threatening storm surge inundation is likely elsewhere along portions of the Florida Gulf Coast where a storm surge warning is in effect. Residents in these areas should follow any advice given by local officials. Uh, and then destructive, life-threatening winds will occur where the core of Idalia moves on shore in the Big Bend region of Florida, with hurricane conditions expected elsewhere in portions of the hurricane warning area along the Florida Gulf Coast. So this is, let me show you the uh, peak storm surge graphic. Yeah, there we go. Um, this is one of the hardest images to fathom I, I guess uh, yeah, this is it's hard to explain this once again because we don't know what 12 to 16 feet of storm surge looks like in this area uh, but just know that 12 to 16 feet of storm surge in any area is very bad okay it's it could potentially catastrophic in this area specifically because we haven't seen it before uh, ever uh, and because the infrastructure hasn't had to deal with it before and because it's such a low-lying area um, it's probably going to be especially bad. Uh, and it, it's also important to mention that the 12 to 16 foot forecast here from the National Hurricane Center, it does include the, uh, the high tide and the, uh, you know, the whatever impact the super moon uh, is having on the tidal forces today. Um, that is, we're seeing that included in the forecast here. So we've heard a lot of things about how that could make the, the situation worse and it absolutely could but we are uh, factoring that in in the forecast that you're seeing it's still possible though that we see water inundation even greater uh, than 16 feet in some areas especially wherever the most water compiles um, but you know the 12 to 16 feet over such a large area is going to be uh, catastrophic uh, to say the least yeah, it's, uh, Hurricane uh, Adalia is currently a Category 4 with winds at 130 miles per hour. And this is the latest cone uh, update from the National Hurricane Center. I want to show you this as well. Uh, let's see here. It's, it's, once again, it's still expected to be a hurricane way up here in Georgia. In fact, we have hurricane warnings now for Savannah, Georgia, up towards Charleston, South Carolina. So officially hurricane warnings out for the East Coast here. Tropical storm by the time it gets to Myrtle Beach. And then we do expect it to kind of meander out into the Atlantic. And uh, some of the models today are taking this out to sea. Yesterday, we had a lot of them really suggesting that we might get a loop-de-loop -loop here. Um, I don't think that that's out of the question, but it's looking less likely now. It's something that we'll have to watch. The good news is, I don't think that even if it does come back around for round two, I don't think it'll ever be as strong as it is right now again. Um, so uh, let's hope it just gets out of here and doesn't bother anybody. Maybe it skirts by Bermuda as a tropical storm. That would be a best case scenario. So yeah, we've got uh, people in the background monitoring uh, the news. Um, as soon as we start hearing more about these power outages and, and things that are uh, getting ready to happen, we will relay that to you. Uh, for now, it's just kind of, uh, it's an unfortunate situation where we're just sitting and waiting. Uh, what's going to happen next? Um, and we're going to try to relay some of these precautionary warnings as much as possible until we have to get into the whole nonstop uh, coverage aspect of this. I'm also going to try to pull up some uh, scanner feeds on my end just so we can kind of hear what's going on as, as best as possible. Don't want it to be too awfully distracting, so just let me know 
if this is annoying, but I would like to hear it. Second, while I get this set up. Yeah, we've got the Sarnet, uh, Florida's statewide a repeater system. And then what else do we need here? Um, uh, we do have an update from Y'all Force One. Uh, so whenever you guys are ready, go ahead. Hey, Ryan. So just a quick update. Um, we're hearing some reports from the Horseshoe Bay Fire Department, which is about 20 miles north of uh, Cedar Key, uh, which is where we were last night. Um, that there's still multiple residents that are in like campers and mobile homes right on the coast that haven't chose to evacuate. And this is kind of one of those final warnings again that we're urging you, if you're watching the stream, to make sure you're getting out of the area because, like we've talked about for the last hour and last night, the storm surge there is literally going to be life threatening. And if you don't take this warning right now, um, definitely could not end in a way that any of us want to see so we're just kind of warning people on that caution that fire department is reporting that people have chosen not to leave the area so um, it's definitely something to keep in mind okay uh thank you very much caleb um and, and caleb and chandra and kyle and austin are out, all out there in y'all force one uh, they're not going to go to the landfall area they're not going to go to the hardest hit areas while the storm is happening uh, they're there to assess the damage and be there in, in case the y'all squad needs to show up. Um, we've got a trailer uh, that we're, we've got a lot of supplies in them and we can fill it up with even more. We've got all kinds of resources and connections with the local officials there through our nonprofit. And they are just, they, that's what they're there for right now. But they're also going to be relaying news updates to us throughout the day from y'all force one, which <laughs> what we call our, our vehicle that we use to, to get around in. Um, so we're going to be hearing from them uh, quite a bit today. Uh, and to touch on what Caleb uh, has been saying over the, the course of the morning so far, we have we have to make the decision now to leave uh, because emergency crews are not going to be able to um, uh, respond in the way that they would on a sunny day, right? So it, when there's a mandatory evacuation, police officers, EMS, uh, whoever it is uh, that is dealing with the, the situation out here, they have families, they have their own lives. They don't want to die in, in, in this uh, storm, right? So uh, there are going to be restrictions in place as to what they can and cannot uh, respond to. Uh, once the winds get over 35 miles per hour in a lot of places, the vehicles won't run. So if you've made the decision to not evacuate and then you call for help, it might take longer for somebody to come rescue you. Okay. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you, you might not be able to get the help that you need if you choose to stay. Um, so hopefully everybody's out of there. I, we've got a, a lot of good reports uh, from Cedar Key and places like that, that most of the residents that live right along the coast uh, have gotten out. Obviously, there are some that have decided to stay back. You can't make anybody leave their home. But um, a lot of people are getting the heck out of there, uh, which is good uh, because that's what we need to protect uh, life. It's, you know, it's not just about yourself at that point. You got to think about other people. Yeah, somebody's going to have to risk their life to save you potentially if you don't uh so currently we've got y'all force one out there we've got chris hall we've got brad arnold i don't know when we're going to have some of our other people um uh, i don't know if we've heard from them or not but i know that we've got freddie mckinney out there um i know that we've got hunter and nick uh, there and there's a couple other chasers that we'll be working with at some point here uh, but in the meantime we are continuing to watch our storm surge cameras that we have in cedar key uh horseshoe beach and um keaton beach as the storm continues to come in it's official that it's a category four yeah it's officially a category four and it's still intensifying yeah, I don't think we have Riley um, awake yet. <laughs> so I think the Storm Chasers are, I, I don't know if they have what they need to connect with us. Hopefully, hopefully somebody can wake him up soon. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
We'll get him. Don't worry. We'll get him. There is a chance that this will uh, make a run towards a cat five. I don't think it'll make it there. There's a chance that the storm will continue to intensify though. So it's currently a category four. So any sort of intensification whatsoever would technically be a run towards a category five. But I, we are really, um, there's really no point, I, I think, in, in discussing the potential of a, a category five at this point. This is gonna be a catastrophic storm no matter what that number is, okay? Uh, and a, a lot of people's lives are getting ready to change forever uh, across the Florida coast. Um, and it doesn't really matter to them right now what the number associated with the storm is. Uh, we are already getting a lot of reports of flooding and fires due to water damage in the coastal areas. Um, uh, if we can get some more, you know, details on that that's the kind of stuff that i would like to get relayed to us through chandra and caleb um, but i know the details are probably pretty blurry right now um, as we're just listening to this come in through the emergency services uh, bands but yeah i'm i'm seeing a lot of um, uh, flooding uh, even as far south as treasure island uh, near saint pete lots of coastal flooding already happening down there uh, if you guys see anything interesting, if you or if you have any sort of um, uh, you know images that you would want to share with me, the best place to do that is X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Um, my name's Ryan Hall, y'all on there at Ryan Hall, y'all. Um, feel free to share with me anything that you have um, that might be newsworthy. A lot of this stuff, uh, I'm retweeting it as well. I can't show everything. There's a lot of copyrighted stuff and all that kind of jazz. So. Um, I'm retweeting it. If you guys want to see some of this flooding uh, imagery, uh, go check it out on Twitter. This is the Pinellas County um, uh, Sheriff's Office. This was three hours ago, so I'm sure that the water has risen um, in this area, um, potentially, uh, as the storm has gotten closer to land. But you can see that uh, there's already some water inundation there, uh, three to four feet on Sunset Way, and that was three hours ago there. So we're going to see if there's anything new coming in. Yeah, the Florida, do not mess with Adalia. You, this is not like a hurricane you've been through before. That, that's what we always hear. Ah, uh, we've been through hurricanes. Ah, uh, nope, not this one. This one's a little different. Uh, we do have uh, customers without power in Florida. We've got about 57,000 people without power now in Florida. That number is going to rise significantly um, as the day goes on. going to rise quite a bit. Category four, yep. Category four and you, the uh, Perry, Florida, that's where Brad Arnold is. And you can see that the winds are already picking up there pretty significantly. And, uh, you know, he's nowhere near the strongest winds. Nowhere near it. Uh, the strong winds are the strongest winds are still significantly displaced from where Brad Arnold is right now. We won't see the really strong, extreme, destructive winds uh, for uh, probably a little while on uh, Brad's camera or anybody else's. So here's the radar loop of our monster hurricane continuing to approach uh, Florida. You can see the very impressive eye wall. You can see there's some uh, moments where the eye looks almost square, or you see the little um, indentions like this. Uh, this is very indicative of a very strong uh, hurricane. Uh, there's probably multiple uh, meso vortices inside of the eye that are all kind of compiling and then uh, helping to clear the eye out. We saw this in Hurricane Michael in 2018, uh, and we're seeing something uh, very similar here. So the non-perfect circular shape isn't always a sign of uh, disorganization. Sometimes it's just a sign of uh, some very interesting things happening inside of the eye due to um, the, the intensification of the storm. 
Western side has the biggest uh, reflectivity uh, signature right now. That's going to be a lot of wind, uh, but the strongest winds are still going to be on the northern side, and we're still going to be uh, seeing very strong winds as well on the eastern side, like a traditional hurricane too. But all around the uh, the storm center, it looks like it's very intense right now with the winds. I wouldn't be surprised to see 130, 150 mile per hour gusts on any corner of the eyewall as it makes its approach to uh, landfall. Let's look at some of the towns. Let's get, go in closer to some of the towns that might be impacted directly here by some of the strongest winds. Um, uh, Deckel Beach, I hope I'm saying that right. Deckel Beach definitely looks like it's in the line of fire to receive uh, some of the strongest winds from this storm. Uh, additionally, uh, I would uh, be watching out in Fish Creek. Hopefully, these places are some of the places that everybody has evacuated from because these places, I promise y'all, are not going to fare well here. Uh, there, there's a possibility. Not all of them, obviously. Uh, you know, I don't know the exact geography of these places and how they're left or and how they're laid out. But some of these places may be obliterated uh, by this, and and I, I'm not saying that to, uh, you know dramatize it or anything i'm just trying to really drive the point home that this is not just another storm um, this is going to be a pretty big deal um, but uh, beyond the coastal areas we're going to see extreme uh, potentially destructive winds as far north as uh, pinland athena uh, carver clara uh, cook's hammock uh, Townsend, uh, Perry, obviously, and then eventually that's going to make it up there to Madison, Lee, Live Oak, Jasper, and Jennings. And outside of that, uh, we are going to see very strong damaging winds, even as far outside as Lake City, uh, Cross City, Chiefland, Newberry, uh, maybe even up there towards Tallahassee and Monticello as well. And then we'll kind of gauge how strong those winds are as the storm makes it up towards Valdosta, Georgia. Uh, and even over there towards Fargo and Waycrosses, we expect this to potentially be still a Category 2 hurricane in southeast Georgia. 2 p.m. today, we, we are still going to have a 100-mile-per-hour hurricane in Georgia. That is insane. That is insane. New tornado watch. This is another problem that we're going to have today. Tornadoes possible today from Savannah, Georgia, down to Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa. Everybody in the yellow there, that's uh, 12 million people under a tornado watch. And that's on top of the flooding and, and hurricane concerns. It's very common that several uh, tornadoes um, happen in um, tropical systems. So we're going to have a uh, catastrophic Category 4 storm making landfall, uh, causing big-time problems in the Big Bend area, while also having potentially several tornadoes simultaneously uh, moving up through the peninsula of Florida and into Georgia. Just heard that the barrier islands are underwater and the water levels are still rising. Lights are orange. Go ahead. Caleb, was that what hey, you were getting ready to tell me? You got to be quick. I was just about to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> literally just at the very happens we're starting to flood uh but we're also hearing flooding reports coming in from all over the place uh rivers are starting to overflow in lee county uh we're also starting to talk about that to get some storm surge reports coming in crystal uh crystal river so uh, it's continuing to happen the scanners are going absolutely nuts right now um police and fire and dispatch are overwhelmed with information that's coming in so we're trying to do our best to decipher it as it is coming into us but uh, just bear with us. It might take us a little bit longer to get some of that information. Through. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Uh, and we'll be checking in with them uh, as much as possible. Um, we're really starting to see that uh, storm surge come in on the storm surge camera uh, in Cedar Key. Um, and this is coming from Radar Omega. Um, yeah, that's, that's even a lot worse than what we saw just moments ago. So we're seeing the waves and we're seeing the incredible water inundation in Cedar Key. So I think officially some of the, the stronger, uh, you know, winds that are coming out of the direction that's necessary to really cause the, the, the flooding here 
I think that's starting to happen in places like Cedar Key, um, and it's only going to get worse from here. So you can see the water pouring in. Uh, once again, th yesterday this was dry. Everything that we were looking at here for the most part was dry, um, and the water is going to continue to rise. I think we're going to see uh, you know, something similar happen in all of these other cameras as well, and we'll check them one by one here actually in the radar Omega app. So this is Cedar Key. This is the one that we were just looking at. Uh, pressure 995 millibars right now at that particular station. Horseshoe Beach, uh, this is what that one looks like. And it looks like we've lost power here. We did have a really nice light uh, that was uh, illuminating this area, but that's either been turned off or we've lost power. Wouldn't be surprised at all if the power's already out there. Um, but we've got another uh, camera up here towards Jenna. Looks like the water's still below the rocks at this point. Um, we've got several more. Here's one near Fish Creek. Um, still, I, I think we're going to see the water come over the road here at some point. We still don't have any sign of it right now. Uh, Keaton Beach. Uh, the water's definitely risen here. Uh, but at some point, I think that we see the water completely go over the beach here. All right, so we still got this big light. I don't know what this is gonna look like if the power goes out and we lose this light, but you can see the water level right here. You can see the white caps on the, the waves as they crash in. That water's got a long, still got a long way to go. It's gonna continue to rise as the storm gets closer. Deckel Beach, um, same thing here. Uh, we've got um, the big pier that we're gonna be watching and potentially lots of uh, water coming onto land. Uh, as soon as those winds are oriented correctly. If you notice here, the winds at this point are not necessarily bringing the water onto shore. You can see the, how things are still not oriented in a way that would promote significant storm surge in some of these areas. That's going to change. That's going to change very quickly. And when it does, potentially a wall of water will ensue. And uh, we're going to see, uh, you know, maybe 14, 15, 16 feet of storm surge come through these areas. Okay, and for some reason, our audio alerts for tornado warnings are not working still. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, we can work on that at some point today. I don't know if we have anybody available for that, but um, we did just get a tornado warning. Uh, so I want to check that out uh, really quickly. Uh, that's going to be up there in Georgia, it looks like. We're going to fly to it in the Radar Omega app and give you some updates on that. So this is going to be for... Uh, Charlton County in Georgia, near Folkestone and Homeland. I want to check out the velocity, and yeah, that's a pretty, uh, for a tropical tornado, a lot of these uh, rotations happen very close to the ground, so it's hard to see the rotation a lot of times in uh, through a radar image, but you can see this very clearly. That's your rotation. We've got a potential tornado here near Homeland, Georgia. Uh, that's going to move up to the north and west, actually, uh, or due north between Cypress Siding and Newell. So if you live up here and you know where Homeland and Folkestone is and you know Highway 301, if there's a tornado down, which there very well could be, that's going to ride the 301 corridor up towards Newell. Uh, so everybody in Homeland, Folkestone, Newell, and Cypress Siding needs to be taking shelter now as a tornado is potentially on the ground. This is going to be something that we have to cover throughout the day. Another dangerous part of this storm is not just the destructive hurricane that's about to hit the Big Bend, but everybody in the peninsula of Florida up into southeast Georgia is going to potentially receive strong winds and tornadoes today. So we're going to be covering that as much as possible. Yeah, we're still seeing new... It's crazy. The, the, the center of the storm is... Getting pretty close to land now, and we're still seeing new convective bursts, um, which is nuts. The storm is still getting stronger, technically. Let's see here. Got. I'm trying to absorb as much um, data as possible so I can relay it to you. This is Cedar Key. Okay, so this is... Um, this is from Cedar Key. We've got a gauge that's measuring the the the, the flooding uh, and the water. 
And you can see here, this is the average height of the water due to high and low tide. The red line is what we're actually seeing. We've surpassed minor flooding now, and we are getting into moderate flooding stage, okay? We're already seeing about five feet of storm surge here in the Cedar Key area. That is going to continue to rise over time, okay? Going to continue to rise. Um, and it looks like the camera that we had in Cedar Key is getting ready to pull it up. It looks like we're having problems out of it. So we'll try to refresh that and get it back up. Also, we've got uh, Y'all Force One, their feeds down. So we, we should probably put Brad in the number one spot. Um, so that's what the current situation is. You see the exponential rise in water. It's going to continue to happen here as the storm approaches. Let's dive in and take a look at the eye wall on radar again. And look at all this, by the way. Another thing that promotes the idea that this is likely still intensifying is the fact that we're seeing so much lightning uh, in the eye wall here. So we've got a lot of electric activity in the eye wall of the hurricane. We've got new big towers going up. Um, uh, this is not a good sign as we see the storm approach the coast here. That much electric activity in the storm, it's just a sign of intensification right up until the moment it makes landfall. Category four, yep, category four. Um, we probably should have some sort of graphic that stays on the screen that says that. Um, instead of the Warren count up there, we'll try to, that, that's something that we are definitely going to do from here on out. But yes, this is a category four hurricane right now. Category four. Yeah, Cedar Key's back online. Daylight, as soon as the sun starts rising here, we're, uh, I think we're going to understand the story much more because I believe that we, you can see some structures and some buildings back in this area. So we'll be able to gauge exactly how uh, deep that water is uh, once we get a little bit of daylight. Horseshoe Beach is probably going to be the next area that sees a huge water uh, increase. So we're going to see the water likely come over the rocks here at some point really soon. But just look at how strong the winds are. Uh, we're, this is another place that's eventually going to experience extreme life-threatening um, destructive winds. Uh, and th those are not even close right now. We're, we're still pretty far away from that actually happening. And the winds are already getting absolutely crazy out there. Fish Creek. Fish Creek, the winds are definitely increasing there. Pressure's dropping fast. I don't even know what that is. That there's some okay. That's like a piece of a palm tree or something. Um, so yeah, the winds are increasing here, but we're also expecting to see the water overflow uh, that little uh, boundary that's in front of us there. I think it's a little road. The water is going to more than likely be over top of that at some point as the storm gets closer. Uh, winds have to be higher than 157 uh, to be a Cat 5. Currently, we're at 130. Water is now crashing over the Franklin Bridge. Uh, northbound. This is the northbound side of I-275 into Tampa. So the water is still coming up in the Tampa area. Uh, and that's, you know, really far south of, you know, the, the landfall area. So to me, it seems like what's happening here is the axis of the, the wall of water, I guess is what we're going to continue to call it is pretty much aligned with the coast. So all at once, uh, a lot of people across the uh, western side of uh, Florida are going to experience a rapid water rise. We're seeing it happen right now in Cedar Key because of the specific way that the coastline is oriented with the winds. But I think that, you know, right around the time the storm makes landfall, that's when a lot of places are going to see a big time increase in the uh, storm surge. Yep, as of uh, 5 a.m., uh, Major Hurricane Adalia has rapidly uh, intensified into a Category 4 storm. 
catastrophic storm surge and um, destructive winds are nearing the Big Bend re region of Florida. Uh, potential impacts from the main surge events are now unfolding across the Appalachian Bay. Um, it's important that everybody understands that you need to remain well away from the life-threatening surge. Uh, it's and, and seriously, there's going to be catastrophic impacts out here. Uh, if realized, these impacts include widespread deep inundation with storm surge flooding greatly uh, accentuated by powerful battering waves. So it's not only the 12 to 16 foot storm surge, you're going to have giant waves on top of that, and they're going to be powerful, and they're going to potentially, you know, damage structures. Um, we're going to have structural damage to buildings with many of them just completely being washed away, uh, and damage uh, greatly compounded from considerable flooding will exist as well. So at the, you know, at the same time as the water's coming in from the ocean, we're going to have it coming in from the rivers, meeting somewhere in the middle. And there's just going to be a lot of debris floating around. That's going to cause even more damage. Um, near shore escape routes and secondary roads will be completely underwater and more than likely washed away. So once the roads are gone, they will be gone for a long time. Um, flood control systems and barriers are going to become stressed and some of them may even fail. Um, there's going to be extreme beach erosion. Uh, new shoreline cuts are possible. The geography of Florida may change forever as a result of this storm. Um, massive uh, damage to marinas, docks, boardwalks, and piers. And numerous small craft are going to be broken away from moorings uh, with um, uh, many lifted on shore and stranded. So boats, whatever else, uh, could be taken very far inland and stranded there. Um, now, elsewhere uh, across uh, eastern Florida, uh, there is um, going to be uh, impacts in the form of wind. Um, we're going to see structural damage to sturdy buildings with some complete roof and wall uh, failures. So this is going to be in the uh, eastern panhandle of Florida, not eastern Florida. Uh, we're going to see numerous large trees snapped or uprooted along with fences and roadway signs blown over. Um, many uh, roads will become impassable from large debris and more within urban or heavily wooded places. Many bridges, causeways, and accesses will be impassable. Widespread power and communication outages are expected. Some people will not have power three to four weeks from now after they lose it this morning. Um, flooding rain, potential impacts uh, from the flooding rain are still unfolding across the portions of Florida in the Big Bend, in the Big Bend and the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, we're going to see major rainfall and uh, fl the flooding might actually prompt evacuations and rescues farther inland. So we obviously have seen several um, uh, evacuation orders along the coast, but even further inland, we might have to deal with something like that, especially if some of the dams and, and you know, flooding control systems start to fail. Uh, floodwaters can uh, enter many structures within multiple communities. Some structures will become uninhabitable or washed away. Uh, many places where floodwaters may cover escape routes uh, will be completely uh, impassable for an uh, undisclosed amount of time. And driving conditions are going to be extremely dangerous. Uh, and then, of course, across all of Florida, not just around the landfall area, but across all of Florida up until uh, into southeastern Georgia, uh, we do expect uh, the occurrence of scattered tornadoes. Um, and this could actually hinder the execution of emergency plans during tropical events. Several places may experience tornado damage with a few spots uh, getting considerable damage, power loss, and communication failures. Locations could realize roofs torn off, frame houses, uh, mobile homes demolished, boxcars overturned, large trees snapped or unrooted, vehicles tumbled, and small boats tossed about. Dangerous projectiles can add to the toll. That's the, if the I just read, that was from the National Weather Service. Uh, that is um, some of the scariest wording I've ever heard from an official uh, forecast office. Uh, go ahead, Caleb. 
Hey Ryan, just a quick update. Um, I wanted to report that we're starting now to get reports of flooding in both the St. Petersburg area as well as in Tampa. So we are starting to see some storm surge and uh, just rainfall flooding that is happening in more populated areas. Uh, the biggest concern there isn't necessarily that it's going to be an extreme life-threatening storm surge. However, um, there is the possibility that a low-lying area could see up to several feet of water. So if you come across a water, a road cover covered with water anywhere, just turn around. It's not worth attempting to drive through it. Even if it looks like it's just six inches deep, better just to turn around and find a better route. Uh, we're also getting reports that the power is out in Perry, as well as uh, multiple different power outages across the state already. So uh, we're going to start to see significantly more as the day progresses. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Caleb, out there in Y'all Force One, uh, giving us an update on the situation. Uh, the conditions are rapidly deteriorating across all of our uh, storm surge uh, cameras. Um, and things are just going to continue to get worse here as, once again, we're expecting catastrophic impacts over the next couple of hours. Um, yeah, we're up to 60,000 people without power. That number is going to go up. We're going to have hundreds of thousands of people without power at some point tonight. Dean Hatchie is, um, yeah, we're seeing some of the storm surge come up into that region as well. Uh, Cedar Key definitely uh, is experiencing some flooding. Uh, Reed Timmer, he, he's got some video uh, of that. I'm retweeting that on Twitter. Um, Tampa Bay is, uh, honestly, Tampa Bay is coming out um, pretty significantly right now as well. I retweeted some imagery on that. Or reposted. Sorry, I know it's not called. I guess it's not called Twitter anymore. Uh, Handy Hicks Corp. Uh, huge shout out to you. Says uh, a Florida profit benefit corporation located in uh, Home Homosassa, Florida, recognizes your devote volunteer. Uh, devoted volunteerism to the United States of America and the potential victims caught in the path of the devastation. Citrus County shares our appreciation for you in uh, your service, Joshua Hicks. Thank you so much, Joshua. Guys, I know there's a lot of uh, questions uh, coming into the uh, chat here. I'm going to try to filter through some of those, but of course, we've got to make sure that we're focusing mostly on the radar and the news that's coming out here. Uh, how significant our damage is expected to be uh, when looking at the back half of the path like a Savannah uh, Hilton Head. So damage up there won't be nearly as bad as what we're seeing up towards the, uh, the, the Gulf Coast. But, you know, Savannah definitely could see some pretty significant impacts from uh, around a Category 1 hurricane as it moves by there. So we'll definitely see 70, maybe 80 mile an hour gusts, um, and that can cause power outages and, and and stuff like that, but nothing catastrophic. That the the really destructive winds are going to stop before the storm gets um, into extreme southeastern Georgia, right around the Florida Georgia line. Uh, that's where the winds will start to go down enough to where it's still going to be bad. Don't get me wrong; it's still going to be really bad, uh, but it's not going to be quite as bad as what we're seeing a little bit farther to the south and west. Let's see. Uh, Bionic Life is sh shared something interesting with me. They said, uh, during Katrina, this house was nine miles away from the coast, six miles away from the bay, and it had seven foot of water inside of the house. If you're near a river, creek, or waterway, you need to watch the water as well. It's not just the coastal areas. That is very true. Um, when we say the coastal areas, if you're near an inlet... Uh, that's near the coast, um, the storm surge impacts could imp affect you just as much as the places right along the coast. So that's important to keep in mind.
storm surge is coming in very quickly uh, at Cedar Key, and you can see that on the storm surge camera there. It's coming in very quickly, uh, and we are expecting it to continue to rise uh, as the Category 4 uh, Hurricane Adalia produces catastrophic impacts in the area. I'm seeing a lot of imagery from Tampa. Uh, Tampa Bay is flooding pretty bad right now. It's not at the catastrophic level, but it's definitely on the um, upper end, I believe, of what was forecast. If you're just now tuning in, uh, Hurricane Adalia is a Category 4 storm with 130 mile per hour winds, 150 to 160 mile per hour gusts. Uh, we have never in recorded history seen a storm this strong hit this part of Florida. We do not know what it's going to look like after it's done, uh, but it's going to look different. Here's, this is what I was looking for. Thank you so much, Renee. Thank you for sending this to me. This is the Cedar Key camera yesterday. And this is, you know, what it looks like right now. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. This is what it was yesterday. And then, let me see here. I'll try to pull it up for you, fool. This is a live, this is what it looked like yesterday. And this is the current, oh, crap, wrong one, sorry. This is the current uh, state of that. So the water is obviously much higher um, than what it was yesterday. I, I believe that this is even a PTZ camera. So the angle has been changed a bit. So instead of pointing straight out, it's actually pointing a little bit down now. So the water's uh, even farther in uh, than what it would seem like just by looking at this image. So uh, definitely up at least five or six feet there. We expect that that could come up another 10 uh, before it all is said and done. Uh, Andy's got an update for us. Go ahead, Andy. Uh, hey, Ryan. If you look west of Sebring <clears throat> in the Arcadia region, you see a couple couple of storms that are rotating. One has picked up in particular uh, recently to the east of Zolfo Springs in Hardy County. I'm also watching another one just outside of Arcadia in DeSoto County. This is an area that uh, actually had a couple of tornado warnings in these counties overnight that I covered. Uh, so once again, we're seeing another round of storms move through that is tornadic uh, in the active tornado watch. So if these get tornado warnings out of Ahead of time, they're moving generally north northeast towards uh, frostproof Highway 27 uh, and off and away from Arcadia in particular. So, just wanted to bring your attention to those. Thank you very much, Andy. You can see the rotation here. Uh, that's going to move on up to the north and east. You can also see the rotation here. This is specifically the one that uh, uh, Andy was talking about. We've got a couple areas of rotation all the way down towards Punta Gorda as well. This one right here, very surprised we don't have a, a warning on that yet. That's more than likely going to be producing a, a tornado pretty soon. Moving up towards Avon Park. So great call out from meteorologist Andy Hill there. And this is, guys, this is way down in the south central part of Florida. And we're going to be dealing with this all day. Okay, we're going to have tornado warnings. We're going to go back. We're going to have crazy storm surge. We're going to go back. We're going to have more tornadoes and maybe in Georgia at some point. We're going to go back and, and there it is. We've got a tornado warning now. Uh, that includes Avon Park, Berea, Frostproof, Hillcrest Heights, and Lake Wales. Um, that's Polk County Highlands and Hardy County in Florida officially under a tornado warning. As you can see here uh, in the Radar Omega app with the flashing uh, polygon there. Um, I do want to kind of go over a couple more of these communities more specifically. Wow, that's actually a really tight couplet. That's almost certainly got a tornado down with it. Radar indicated warning, but I would not be surprised at all if that doesn't have a big nasty tornado down right now. It'll probably cross between Charlie Creek and Avon Park along Highway 64 at some point. So just keep that in mind, guys. We got another uh, tornado warning that's coming out for the area of rotation just south and west of that. So this is they're just now issuing this. East of Brownsville, uh, we've got an area of rotation not quite as... Uh, you know, concerning looking as this one, but this could change very quickly and it's going to come up towards Sweetwater and Cruzville, Florida. Take shelter now. 
Everybody in either of these polygons here in central Florida should be taking shelter as a tornado's down. You're not going to be able to see it. It'll be wrapped in rain. It's dark out anyways. You want to get into the most interior room of your home. You want to barricade yourself with as many walls between you and the outside world as possible. Get underground if possible. Um, and uh, just stay with me. The, as soon as the warning is allowed to expire, we will let you know either verbally or you'll not see your county anymore on the ticker below. And I'm telling you, we're going to see a lot of tornado warnings today, guys. We're going to go back and forth between tornadoes and the eye wall multiple times today. Uh, Wildfire, thank you so much for the very generous super chat. Uh, Natural Diva, thank you. How close will the eye be to Thomasville, Georgia? We will look at that right after we talk to Y'all Force One. Go ahead, Caleb. What's going on? Um, give you an update. I think we're gonna we kind of switched our target towards Madison. Um, it seems like there's some more sturdy structures there, and just for a spot for us to hunker down and be able to ride out part of those outer bands and part of that circulation that we're gonna experience. Um, just to kind of be in a safer position, but currently where we are just north of uh, the Live Oak area, we've started to experience an uptick in rain within the last probably five or ten minutes. And we've probably been experiencing wind gusts around 30 to 40 mile an hour uh, with probably sustained winds around 20. So it is definitely picking up here, and we're going to obviously see that gradually pick up throughout the day. Okay, thank you very much. Keep us updated. Uh, we are going to be... Uh, up with the all force one and just to kind of show you their exact location because we didn't get it uh we didn't get their location on radar omega for this one um i've got it here for you you can see they're on i-75 uh coming up towards uh M madison now um so y'all force one is here going by live oak um uh, on i-75 that's their live location we've also got um, all of our, most of our storm chasers are in a group over here near Perry. So Zach Hall's coming down, uh, 271, Nick and Steven are in Perry, uh, Chris Hall, Hunter, Brad Arnold. They're all in this same general area right in here. Uh, and then Ryan Scholl, Freddie McKinney are a little bit farther South near highway 27. Um, and then I think, do we have anybody? I don't think we have anybody down here in the Cedar Key area, but there are other storm chasers even closer uh, to the coast as well. And we're going to be talking to them as the day goes on. Landfall is uh, probably still a couple hours away. It's currently 6 a.m. on the East Coast. We were expecting it around 8 a.m. That looks like it's still on track. Hey, Ryan, uh, just giving you an update. We're actually at the bank now. That way we can go ahead and get our spot and get set up for the eye wall. Um, the power is starting to go off here at my location. However, uh, half the street has power, but the other half does not. So... We're starting to see some of those power outages here in Perry. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. Power outages already in Perry, and the strongest winds are nowhere close. They are nowhere close to being there. Uh, so it's going to get a lot worse, and it's going to get a lot worse very fast um, in Perry over the next little bit. Uh, um, how's it going chat? Uh, Becklin sample says, Ryan, uh, is it better for us to donate on your site? How much of a cut YouTube takes? Thank you for all your continued hard work. That's a great question. Uh, first of all, nobody has to donate at all. It's not expected. We're not asking you to do it. We appreciate it obviously, but I, I personally don't care about the cut that YouTube takes. You got to think like you guys would never even know that I existed. Or like we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing right now without a platform like YouTube. So go ahead. I don't. I don't know. I think they take like a three, not three, but like twenty, thirty percent or something like that. Let them have it. Um, that's what I say. Uh, but uh, if the best way to support our nonprofit specifically, the Y'all Squad, uh, with our disaster relief efforts and all that stuff, is going to be the YallSquad.org. Um, and you guys are already, uh, you've already come together and uh, raised 
uh, close to five thousand dollars for that today um, i think the goal for that uh, if if we do start hearing about really significant damage and unfortunately that's potentially the case uh, the goal for that today should be uh, over a hundred thousand so um uh, let's if you if you want to if you want to help us um, go to the y'all squad.org and make a tax deductible uh, donation to our nonprofit there. Okay. Uh, the lights are purple. So let's hear from Riley. What do you got Riley? Hey Ryan, we have the 6 AM uh, Eastern time update from the national hurricane center. Uh, winds uh, continue to be at 130 miles per hour. That is a category four. And the uh, hurricane hunters did just note that this is still strengthening, even though it's still coming closer to land. Uh, as long as the size over that warm water, it's still going to be strengthening. So this could be up to 140, 145 miles an hour by the time it makes landfall. Wow. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Riley. Um, glad to have uh, Riley, uh, Andy, uh, the Y'all Squad crew, uh, everybody. It's all hands on deck now here at uh, uh, Y'all headquarters. Uh, as we've got this uh, 6 a.m. update from the National Hurricane Center. Category, catastrophic storm surge and destructive winds are expected uh, to begin this morning. Data from an Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter aircraft indicate that Adalia has a maximum sustained winds of 130 miles per hour. The estimated minimum pressure is 942 millibars. Within the past hour, uh, Cedar Key measured sustained winds of 41 miles per hour and a gust of 47. And a weather flow station at Appalachian Bay measured a sustained wind of 41 miles per hour and a gust of 51. So uh, still strengthening storm uh, as it approaches, and uh, we could see even higher winds than 130 mile per hour sustained as this comes onto shore here uh, near Horseshoe Beach, okay? Uh, and also uh, Keaton Beach and Fish Creek. That's pretty much the area it's making a beeline for right now. Uh, let's see, um, uh, uh, Jess, uh, thanks to Ryan and all the storm chasers. Uh, thank you, Elijah. Thank you, Ryan, uh, FaZe. Thank you guys. Uh, I appreciate all the support. Really. I'm trying to see, uh, if, if we have any questions, um, and, uh, I'm going to try to answer those as much as possible because as soon as we get into like the actual landfall, I'm not even going to have a moment to look at chat. I think. I really do appreciate all the support. How long till landfall? Uh, I'm assuming uh, probably uh, two hours, maybe a little bit less than that. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. I'm watching a supercell to the north of Tampa in Pasco County near Shady Hills and east of Bayonet Point. <clears throat> in that area of uh, Pasco County, this has come together with some rotation. It's a little bit unconventional to see from the Tampa radar, but those reds and tans next to each other definitely indicate some tight rotation. Also, another area that saw a tornado warning earlier. Hey, Ryan, it's Chris. I don't know if you saw so this or not. They just issued an excessive wind warning result, for more Horseshoe Beach just to the south of Perry. They issued it about three minutes ago. Uh, for that area, if it continues to ramp up. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Andy. Uh, this is the storm that he's talking about. Uh, it could come up towards Shady Hills, Dade City, Trilby. This is north of Tampa. All of these storms have the capability today of producing tornadoes. We still have that tornado warning a little bit farther to the south and east as well for Avon Park. So you guys need to be taking shelter and you need to be paying attention to uh, the warnings as they come through. Um, and we just had uh, Chris chime in uh, with an update as well. I'm going to replay that. Hey, Ryan, it's Chris. I don't know if you saw this or not. They just issued an excessive wind warning for Horseshoe Beach just to the south of Perry. They issued it about three minutes ago. Okay. So we're starting to see the extreme wind warnings be issued now. This is um, honestly one of the worst kind of warnings you could ever find yourself in. Uh, National Weather Service only issues this uh, when extreme life-threatening winds are imminent. Uh, so extremely dangerous hurricane winds uh, are coming into Deco Beach, Athena, Salem, uh, Ten Nile, Steinachi, and Horseshoe Beach over the next little bit. Um, move to an interior room now. I hope that you know the population of this area is 7,000 
people. I hope that every single one of those uh, is not even in the area and they don't need to necessarily take shelter. Uh, however, I'm sure there are still people in this area and you got to treat this as if it's a tornado. Okay. Um, and, and it's unfortunate because there's two things you have to think about. You got to think about the water rising, uh, which would typically need, you would need to get to higher ground for that. And then you've got to think about the catastrophic winds, which normally you would want to get technically underground or as low as possible for that. So you, this is why it, it's the best thing to do um, is evacuate. But if you have to take shelter in this, pay, be mindful of the water. Um, and then the most important thing is to stay away from windows. The roofs in, in this kind of wind that we're about to see out here, roofs can literally get ripped off of houses. Uh, windows are gone. Um, you know, there could be structural damage to walls, even, uh, in, in, in well-built homes. Uh, so treat it as if a big, uh, tornado is going to come through all of these areas and take shelter promptly. Uh, any chance of an eyewall replacement cycle? There's always a chance. Uh, but at this point it's not going to make a huge difference, I believe. I think the the writings on the wall uh, and the it's going to be an extremely uh, strong storm regardless of what happens with that eye wall uh, as it comes ashore over the next hour or so. At 6.08 a.m., uh, the National Weather Service uh, Doppler radar indicated extreme winds associated with the eye wall of Hurricane Adalia. This is an extremely dangerous, life-threatening situation. Uh, Horseshoe Point, Horseshoe Beach, Ten Isle, Fish Creek, Jug Island, Howell Place, Clara, Caber, Carber, Jenna, Adams Beach, Deckel Beach, Jonesboro, Jack Lee Island, Keaton Beach, Bird Island, Salem, Blue Springs, Athena, and Cedar Island are all places under this extreme wind warning. Take cover now. Just treat these extreme warnings or these extreme winds as if it's a tornado. The safest place to be during a major landfalling hurricane is in a reinforced interior room away from windows. Get under a table or other piece of sturdy furniture. Use a mattress, blankets, or pillows to cover your head and body. Remain in place through the passage of these life-threatening conditions. Uh, go ahead, uh, Riley. Hey, Ryan. Uh, at this point, we have just hit eight feet of water that's not supposed to be there in Cedar Key. Eight feet. Wow. Okay, thank you, Riley. Um, eight feet already. Um, not a good sign as uh, the water is still rising. Uh, I'm going to show you the graphic on that real quick. Um, so uh, this is one of the last updates I think we got from... I don't know if we have a more updated version of this or not, but we looked at this earlier in Cedar key. We were at five feet, not too long ago. Now uh, we're all the way up past the major flooding stage. It seems. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I see the live feed now. Yeah, with the extreme wind warnings, um, the surface winds of 115 miles an hour or more are expected uh, for pretty much everybody in that whole warning area, regardless of exactly where the eye lines up. It'll be higher in some spots, don't get me wrong. My goodness. Our cyclone ports are getting a beating. All right, I'm just absorbing some data here as uh, we continue to wait for some information to come in. My goodness, look at Cedar Key. 
The water is coming in much higher than it was before. Um, also, we're going to start to see the water come over the road there in Deckel Beach. And I believe we'll see it even in Keaton Beach as well. Okay, we've got an update from Y'all Force One, I believe. Uh, Chandra, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, very, very loud. Let me turn you down just a little bit and go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so I was just going to give you an update. It's pretty dark in the front of the cab, so I haven't got to yet. Um, the wind is kind of picking up just a little bit. There is pretty heavy rain, I mean, considering the situations here right now. Um, and we just got back, or we just went through, okay, well, that was a good little wind guess. <laughs> Um, we just went through Ocala, and I think that we are heading towards Madison right now. Um, we're going to try to find some good coverage, and um, we're going to try to keep you updated for as long as we can. But okay. we are also experiencing some um, some internet shortages, so also be aware of that. And this gas station, if anybody's aware, uh, or sorry. <laughs> This gas station does have gas at Busy B, and there are just quite a few people around, so I guess everybody is getting prepared, so that's good. Um, but just so everyone knows that this gas station at Busy B Marathon does have gas, so, oh, and I'm going to go on inside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, sounds good. And specifically, uh, they're talking about the gas station up there near uh, Live Oak. I, I, it's called Busy B. Uh, so uh, thank you to Chandra for uh, that r report there. We're going to hear from them multiple times throughout the day. They're not going to be right where the storm makes landfall, but they will experience more than likely uh, hurricane force winds as the storm goes a little bit farther to the north uh, as the, the day goes on. Uh, the, Chandra is the secretary of the Y'all Squad, our nonprofit organization. Uh, she's out there to, uh, you know, kind of be our li liaison between the local officials and uh, the response teams and our nonprofit. And it just so happens uh, that she's a great field reporter as well. This is her first time ever doing anything like this. I think she's doing a great, a great job as we await to see what the Y'all Squad needs to do. Okay, so um, we're going to continue to hear from them, and then we're also going to get an update from uh, Chris and Brad and Zach uh, right here in a second. I'm just going to hit them all up all at once. Chris, we're live on YouTube. Um, I know we heard from you not too long ago, but just looking for an update whenever you get a chance. Brad, just checking in on you, man. Uh, give us an update whenever you get a chance. Hey buddy, yeah, we're still sitting in the exact same spot. Uh, winds are gradually picking up the closer that this eye wall gets. Uh, rains, it's not a heavy, heavy rain, uh, but we are getting wind gusts, I'd say pushing 40, possibly even 45 at times. Okay, so winds already getting up there in the 40 to 45 mile per hour range. Hey Ryan, um, we're still down here in Perry. Um, we were gonna go to, I was gonna go to Keaton Beach. Uh, for just a few minutes just to check it out. I'm glad I didn't. Um, we, As far as where we're at in Perry, we have not had any hurricane force winds yet. Um, everything has been below hurricane force, uh, but we have had uh, consistent tropical storm force winds now. So um, I did want to mention that uh, there are some chasers that are in Keaton Beach. Uh, there's a, there are multiple trees down. Um, it's not a good situation there. Uh, blocking their route to get back. That place is going to be under 10 feet of water. Um, so we may may have to go down there to help people out. Um, but it's not a good situation um, down there. They're running out of time. Uh, I need to get out. Okay. Thank you, Brad. Um, meteorologist Andy Hill has an update for us. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, I'm watching uh, that same area. We did just get another tornado warning for uh, the same area near Avon Park again, and, and almost exactly the same spot. If you play back the loop, it's just another storm, another storm that ramps up right in the same spot. Um, so look at that one real quick, and then come over uh, back towards uh, Brooksville, north of Tampa, and those storms that we were looking at. There's another one that's just come on shore near Pine Island that's exhibiting quite a stronger rotation. 
would not be surprised if this got tornado warned given it's actually got a, a pretty tight rotation on uh, both sides of it and um, the rotation is hard to spot because it's red and tan but that's just because the storm itself is moving um, so quickly away from the radar uh, on each side of it the rotation actually shows up as winds moving away <laughs> so i do think that there is a, a still a, a high possibility of seeing a tornado warning in hernando and citrus counties here in um uh in florida okay uh thank you very much andy for drawing our attention back to these dangerous storms north of tampa um as some of these will likely get tornado warnings we do have uh rotation um near spring hill and up here north of bayport uh both of these potentially could produce uh, tornadoes as they approach brooksville uh, up towards catalba uh, and the I-75 corridor eventually all the way up towards uh, the villages. So we're going to be watching those very closely. Um, also the one right here near Spring Hill. And then we had that uh, tornado warning that was issued while we were talking to Chandra, uh, north and east of Sweetwater, uh, moving up towards Charlie Creek, Avon Park, and Pittsburgh, and uh, frostproof. So everybody needs to be taking shelter in those areas. And as soon as the warnings are issued for these storms, which I, I do believe that it's coming soon, uh, we want everybody to get to shelter uh, in those areas as well. And we'll come back to that as soon as those warnings are issued. Storm is getting close to making landfall. It's still not quite there yet. Uh, it's taking its sweet time. Unfortunately, uh, the longer it spins over water, the, the stronger it may be or the more strength it may be able to maintain uh, as it comes ashore. Uh, and once again, Horseshoe Beach, uh, this area is already experiencing um, a really hard time. Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah, you can see there. Um, I don't know if you guys remember earlier or not, but we saw no water on this camera just an hour ago. We couldn't see the water at all. We couldn't even see the waves. Uh, and now it looks like the water is a, at least a couple feet onto this building. So this is like a 10 foot tall shed uh, on the sides, probably a 12 or 13 foot apex on the roof there. And wow, we can see that the water is already starting to uh, cover this area. I don't know if, if somebody can send me a screenshot of what I, I should have remembered to take a screenshot of this so we could look at the before and after. But the water has risen significantly um, in Horseshoe Beach, Florida. That's crazy. That happened fast, too. Cedar uh, Key, Florida, also water still coming up there as well. Uh, it looks like the situation is much worse, though, right now in the Horseshoe Beach area. So we're going to be watching that uh, very closely. Um, we should probably, Carly, make sure that the Horseshoe Beach camera is one of our cameras that we're monitoring. Uh, maybe we'll take down Deckel Beach for now. Um, we'll come up here to towards Jenna. Uh, Steinachi, look at this. Water's not really that bad here. So things are about to change significantly in this area as well. Um, and basically what you're seeing here in Horseshoe Beach is about to happen in Jenna at some point, maybe even up here towards Fish Creek. Okay, so we can't see, remember this image, okay? We cannot see any water here. Uh, when we come back to this, it might just be all water. Uh, that's how quickly the, the water's gonna rise. Uh, Horseshoe Beach though, that is definitely... Um, Definitely a, oh my goodness, it's a bad situation there. That It's coming up even higher now. I think that just from the last time that we looked at it, the, the water has risen a foot or two. So this is, you know, this is why we wanted people to evacuate. A literal wall of water is overcoming these communities over here near Horseshoe Beach and Horseshoe. All of these inlets are overflowing. I'm sure this this road here is completely impassable. So if there are people in Horseshoe Beach, they no longer can get out, all right? And I promise you, there's no emergency crew that's gonna be able to make it in for several hours, okay? Um, same thing is about to happen up here nor near Dallas Creek Landing and Jenna uh, as the storm gets closer. But you can see here, the eye of the storm and the orientation of those winds brings the water directly into Horseshoe Beach, and that's why we're starting to see the very uh, rapid increase in the storm surge there. I'm honestly shocked by how quickly that water has come up. I thought we would see it start splashing over. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Thank you so much to Lucky on Twitter. 
so this is what that camera looked like just moments ago. Um, I'll, I'll do this back and forth. So this is what it looked like um, literally an hour ago, and this is what it looks like now. The water was nowhere near. You couldn't even see the water. We didn't even see the white caps back here. So that's what we're dealing with. Still category four storm, yes. That's how storm surge works, y'all. It comes in fast, takes everything out, uh, and then goes away. Uh, it, unfortunately, this one's going to be in place for quite some time, it seems. Uh, let's see here. Treasure Island, Florida. Flooding conditions continue on tre Treasure Island. High tide is at 11.30 a.m., which cr could create even more flooding around the island. Oh, thank you so much. You guys are so helpful. This is why I love Twitter. This is why I love Twitter. <laughs> um, so Falcom has screenshots of all of the different Mesovort uh, cameras from their dry period. So we're going to watch. I mean, we may see the water level all the way up to here later today. And we have something to reference it on. Because, you know, when you just show a bunch of crashing waves and you don't know what it looked like beforehand... Um, it's kind of, it just doesn't resonate, I guess. But now that we know, uh, we, we've got something to look at here. I just saw what I believe was a power flash on Brad Arnold's camera there. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but definitely some big flash there. And that could be a sign of the increasing winds that are getting ready to come in. This band, let me show you this. I'll show you on uh, Radar Omega. So here's where Brad Arnold is. You can see his face in the Radar Omega app. Uh, how many of you guys are watching him in there? So right now in the Radar Omega app, you can pull up Brad's camera full. There's already debris on the road and everything. Uh, there's 55 of you watching with me right now. And, um, you know, you, you can keep up with him. You can see his exact location. He's in Perry. This band right here is probably when the winds are really going to start picking up. So when this area gets over him, that's when I expect to see uh, some potentially uh, destructive winds start. Uh, now, it's not going to be the strongest winds of the day. Those are going to be coming down in here as this area of the storm comes ashore. Uh, but it's going to get bad. And that, those are almost certainly power flashes. So there's some very strong winds in this band that's approaching Perry right now. Eight and a half feet of water in Cedar Key. Winds already at 55 miles per hour. Holy smokes, y'all. If you're just now tuning in, this is live coverage of Hurricane Adalia as um, an unprecedented storm surge and catastrophic wind event is about to unfold along the bend, big bend of Florida. Um, unfortunately, there's no turning back from here. It's going to happen, um, and we're, uh, we're going to watch it unfold here. As we've got professional storm chasers on the ground, we've got uh, battery backup, solar-powered, you know, uh, inter satellite internet controlled uh, cameras strapped to trees and poles to try to show you exactly what's happening so that everybody that evacuated doesn't have to just imagine what's happening. Uh, and we've also got expert analysis coming from meteorologist Andy Hill and our uh, crews on the ground. And, and we're still not even at landfall yet where it's currently 633 a.m. on the East Coast. Uh, we're still uh, over an hour away from landfall, 
Um, and then we're probably well over an hour or two away from the greatest impacts uh, in places like uh, Perry. Uh, and then beyond that, it's not going to be done there. This thing's going to be a hurricane all the way through Florida. It's going to hit Mayo, Live Oak. It's going to go up towards Jennings, Jasper, all the way up towards Homerville and Waycross, where there is a tornado warning right now. Um, let's go over here and check that out real quick. Tornado warning for, um, let's see, what is this? Brantley County and Pierce County in Georgia. You're going to want to take shelter now if you live between uh, Nahunta and Blackshear in Georgia. That is a pretty strong storm there. We've got a lot of rotation here. Uh, that's going to move up uh, towards uh, Raven Road West. Uh, on its approach to Otter Creek and Blackshear in Georgia. Another thing that we have to worry about today are a bunch of tornadoes all up and down Florida and Georgia as the storm makes landfall. Oh my goodness, guys. Look at the power of the water. You can see there's debris, large pieces of debris uh, being pushed around by the water there. And this is Horseshoe Beach. Uh, this is Horseshoe Beach, the exact location of this camera is uh, near uh, Southwest Highway 351, the intersection of 8th Street and Highway uh, 351, house address 716 uh, Highway 351 in um, Horseshoe Beach. That's precisely where this is. And just to uh, remind you once again... Oh, I've already lost it. Okay. Yeah, this is what that looked like. The, the camera that you're looking at right now, this is what it looked like just moments ago. Storm surge has already come in, and it's about halfway up that building now. Uh, it's possible that at some point we won't even be able to see the building, or maybe we'll just see the roof, or maybe even the structure will be completely washed away. But there's lots of debris floating around out there. And that's coming from Project Mesovore in the Radar Omega app. Hey, Ron, I don't know if you have my stream pulled up then, but we did have uh, about three or four power flashes that lit up the night sky. Um, so uh, wind is obviously picking up, anticipating power to go out here shortly. Yeah, we've been noticing that, and uh, it looks like it's associated with that band of increased reflectivity that's getting ready to overtake uh, where, you at, where you're at right now. So things are probably going to ramp up pretty quickly. Be careful and keep us updated. Hey, Ron, it's Chris. Just giving you an update. We're sitting here at the bank. I believe uh, communication systems have went down, uh, Wi-Fi, uh, things like that here. All ATMs are now out of service. So if you're expecting you to get cash out of an ATM in Perry, that is not going to happen. Your time is out. You shouldn't be out anyway, but I'm just telling you ahead of time, the ATMs are no longer working in this area. Uh, the winds are picking up. I think I noticed a power flash or two just a moment ago. Uh, but, yeah, it is continuing uh, to deteriorate here. Um, only going to get worse over the next hour or so. Morning. You got it. Storm Chasers, uh, Brad and Chris there. And now we've got an update from, uh, I believe we've got an update from Y'all Force One. Can you guys hear me? We can. Can you hear us? Yes. All righty. So we just got an update from the Pine Isle County Sheriff's Office. Um, and I imagine this is going to continue down or up the coast, I should say. Uh, but they've just shut off us to the Barrier Islands. So if at any point today you leave the Barrier Islands or have recently left the Barrier Islands, islands in evacuation for this hurricane, um, it's looking like there's probably going to be probably at least 24 hours before they're going to start letting people back on the islands. They've just closed the bridges. So as soon as even residents leave, they're not letting anyone on the islands, including first responders as well. So I imagine we're going to start to see more counties put that in place as high winds uh, progress throughout the day. Okay. All right. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Caleb, uh, in uh, Gulf Force One there. Um, a little bit outside of uh, Live Oak and Madison. 
Uh, the winds are not really uh, bad in that area just yet, uh, but they are going to be uh, as the storm uh, moves in the general direction of making landfall near Perry, moving up past Mayo, and then right towards I-10 and 75 between Live Oak and Jasper. So, um, once again, let's check in on these Mesovort uh, locations. Uh, this one, it's going to be pretty incredible uh, if we see... Uh, in the Radar Omega app, if we see the water up in here, because this was all just a big grassland uh, in the beginning. Uh, we obviously are dealing with incredibly strong uh, or high uh, sea uh, surge uh, happening here in Horseshoe Beach. Uh, we're going to see something similar up here near Jenna, so the conditions are deteriorating uh, here as well. Um, Cedar Key, we are getting close to nine feet of water inundation at this point. Uh, and then I believe Jekyll uh, Beach that we haven't really seen a lot of wave activity here yet, but we're probably not going to for a little while. Remember, watch the rotation of the storm. Storm surge is being thrown in like this. OK, so right now the winds are still blowing away from a lot of these uh, locations, the little green dots. Those are where the cameras are. Uh, when the winds start blowing up towards them, that's when all the water is going to come in at once. That's why right now in Horseshoe Beach, literally uh, everything's underwater. So we're going to continue to see that uh, as time goes on. We're, we should be getting some daylight at some point here too, which will make things a little bit easier to see. But man, Horseshoe Beach, I am uh, seriously, seriously concerned about what we're seeing on the camera there. This is, the water just keeps going up. My goodness. It's, is it, it's up to the roof of that shed now, isn't it? Lots of debris. We're seeing pieces of people's homes float by. We're seeing pieces of businesses. You might see a car float by at some point. The power of this water is unimaginable, um, and it's at least six feet high right there. And, you know, this is actually a little bit elevated, uh, so it's possibly even higher than that in some of the lower-lying areas uh, near a river down the road or something. I know it's hard to see. The, the rain makes it really hard to see, but the water is incredibly high right now. Hey Ryan, getting very, very close to hurricane uh, sustained winds right now. We're getting gusts right now over hurricane, um, but we're very, very close to sustained. Okay, this is a live feed from uh, Storm Chaser Brad Arnold, who you just heard from. This is in Perry, uh, and this is that band that I was talking about, that little uh, area of increased reflectivity, the yellow that you see coming up Highway uh, 19, 98, that's what's uh, producing the uh, now hurricane force winds in the general vicinity of Perry, Roach, and Finn Holloway. Uh, this is going to continue uh, to move up towards Greenville and uh, Lamont and Covington and Sermons and Hopewell and all these places in Florida. Get ready. You're about to lose power. It's getting ready to happen, and uh, it probably won't come back on for a significant period of time. Um, okay, uh, real quick. Got to check on these uh, two tornado warnings. We still got the one for Avon Park in Florida, but we got a new one in Georgia. I want to take you to very quickly. Uh, just want to cover the town names here so we can make sure we get everybody in shelter. Brown Town uh, and Manning Town. Take shelter immediately. If there's a tornado potentially coming right for you, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. Um, just another update from Cedar Key. If you want to pull up that link that we sent in stream text a while back, I'm going to resend that. Um, you can start to see a very concerning um, uptick in the amount of storm surge as well as the wind speeds. They just keep trending up and there's no sign of them stopping anytime soon. Uh, I am monitoring this live in the back, so I will be updating you every time I think we hit. You want a foot or every half foot of water? How often do you want updates? Um, let's do every half foot. All right. I'll update you every half foot and then I'll let you know big wind wild landmarks like Cat one, cat two, cat three. Okay, thank you very much, Riley, for the help. This is the um, uh, the station here, currently 8.66 feet going up. Winds continue to go up, and uh, Riley's going to continue to update this. Update hey, Ryan, it's as, Chris. As uh, we are losing service here as the eyewall moves closer. I, I don't know if the stream's still up or not. 
it may come and go, but uh, service is trying to go down here uh, where we're at. Uh, definitely picking up uh, intensity of the winds, possibly even pushing hurricane force. Uh, but yeah, just letting you know, we're starting to try and lose service here. So don't know how much longer it'll last. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, very much, um, Chris. And we've also got an update from our field reporters from Y'all Force One, I believe. Go ahead, guys. Hey, Ryan, can you hear? Yes. Awesome. So uh, just a couple more updates relating to the flooding. Uh, we're starting to get more reports across uh, uh, the west coast of Florida, now including Sarasota, the Sarasota Police Department has uh, just advised that they're starting to block off roads because significant portions of the downtown metro area is starting to flood. So I uh, do expect that if you're in the Sarasota area trying to travel at all this morning, um, we're starting to see water levels rise even there. So just imagine what that is going to be like up in even Tampa and north of there towards where we're at. Okay. Thank you so much. Lots of... Uh water uh, inundation problems uh, ongoing here. Uh, the, uh, unbelievable uh, what we're seeing in Horseshoe Beach, uh, specifically through the live uh, cyclone port camera here. Um, the waves are incredibly powerful. We've seen a lot of debris float by here. Once again, a uh, whole community likely underwater at this point as the water levels are still rising um, uh, as the storm gets closer and closer to land. Uh, the strongest winds and the biggest bout of storm surge uh, and everything like that is still a little bit a ways from where we are right now, okay? The the, the biggest uh, water push, I think, is going to happen over the next 30 minutes to an hour, especially between Horseshoe Beach and Fish Creek. This is going to be huge. And then we're going to see life-threatening storm surge all the way down towards Cedar Key and down towards Tampa for an extended period of time, as long as the winds are blowing the water this way uh, and compiling it up against the coast. We're going to continue to see uh, that be a problem. But the, the biggest problem is likely going to be right in here on the southern side of the eye wall as it comes ashore. And then on top of that, we're going to see big time problems with winds. Okay. We've got hurricane force winds, extreme winds on the northern side of the storm, getting ready to push up uh, into De Deckel Beach, into, um, you know, Athena, uh, uh, Finn Holloway, and then Perry. Perry's already seeing some really in intense winds, but um, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. Highway uh, 98 here that connects Perry and hey, Ron, Cross got City is going to become a nightmare. Big time power flashes right now here in Perry. Okay, we got big time power flashes in Perry. That's coming from uh, Storm Chaser Chris Hall, which we do have a feed from now. Um, he's in Taylor County, Florida, and so is Brad Arnold. So Brad's giving us a live view at street level there of uh, what's going on as this, the winds uh, pick up. So remember, this is just... Um, the very outside of the core of the storm, we're going to see things pick up dramatically as time goes on. Uh, and unfortunately, we're going to see uh, probably a lot of damage in this area because of the strong winds. Brantley and Wayne counties are still under a tornado warning in the uh, Georgia area. And we're continuing to see that water rise in uh, the Horseshoe Beach area as well. It's about to make landfall, yep. It's about to. Not quite there yet, but it's it's gonna happen. Um, and as we continue to relay these watches and, and warnings and all this you know information, um, it's important that we continue to try to spread the word. People are just now waking up in a lot of places. Uh, so if you haven't yet, please consider sharing this on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, anything like that to help us spread the word so we can get this vital information to as many people as possible. And uh, consider just liking the video so that YouTube puts it in front of people who need the information. I think it's important that people understand that, uh, you know, obviously right around where landfall is happening, that's a big deal. Uh, but it's more than just that. We're going to be here all day talking about the tornado outbreak that could happen from the whole peninsula of Florida up into Georgia. We're going to be talking about the flash flooding in Georgia. We're going to be talking about the continued hurricane effects all the way up until into Georgia. There are tens of millions of people who are going to be impacted by the storm. And we're going to do everything we can all day completely for free with no commercial breaks. Just constantly relaying that information. 
So uh, no, I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm just sitting here talking about the weather. Nobody's going to know that I'm doing this unless you guys help me get the word out. So please consider doing that. Um, uh, and then we'll get right back into the wall-to-wall -wall coverage here. Making landfall soon. Yep. It is. Trying to look at uh, chat as much as possible. Obviously, it's going to be harder and harder to do so. Uh, yes, it is category four. I, it's incredible how many, every time I look at chat, people are asking about like whether or not it's a cat four. Yes, it is a category four, uh, 130 mile per hour winds, and it's going to make landfall as such. Uh, and it's, uh, it could even be a little bit stronger than 130 mile per hour winds whenever it makes landfall. So keep that in mind. We've got uh, the mods in the chat with a command now uh, stating the uh, the Cat 4 situation. Next time we do hurricane coverage, we're going to have to have uh, some sort of graphic that constantly stays on screen that shows the, the category. Sorry, we don't have that now. Category 4, 130 mile per hour. Yeah, lots of flooding happening in Tampa, but the worst of the storm is going to miss Tampa significantly. Uh, the worst of the storm is getting ready to uh, show itself up here uh, between Perry and Cross City in Florida. This is in the Big Bend area. So Tampa's way down here. Tornado threat still exists in Tampa as well as the storm surge threat, but the... Uh, the destructive uh, catastrophic tornado or um, hurricane is happening in the Big Bend area specifically. Looks like we're getting a little bit of daylight in Cedar Key. I'm going to check that out real quick. Water is still really high there. And it looks like the um, whatever our camera is attached to is floating or moving around due to the force of the waves. That movement it, it was definitely not there before. Um, and just for reference, well, I keep losing these before and after pictures that you guys are seeing. But all of this was dry. What you're looking at here is normally just a, a sandy beach. Um, but the water is now really high up onto whatever. I think that this is probably attached to some sort of like power pole or something. And you can see how it's literally moving as the waves uh, roll up onto it. Yeah, Horseshoe Beach is still nuts. The water's still rising there. We've got several feet of water inundation uh, in the Horseshoe Beach area and the waves are, are just bringing even more water in, and it's a, uh, still a very powerful uh, storm, very powerful waves moving the debris out. Like, it's, I can't even tell what's happening there. Like you see something fly by, you're not sure if it's a piece of flying debris or floating debris. That's how fast the water is moving. Absolutely crazy. And uh, you just, you, you, you can't help but imagine what is this debris? What are we looking at here? Pieces of houses? Pieces of the local pier, you know, probably a little bit of everything. The town is flooded in Cedar Key as the water levels approach nine feet. Most of the uh, intense effects from Hurricane Adalia will be uh, happening right as the sun comes up here. Major landfall, if you're just now tuning in, once again, major landfall is imminent from Category 4 Hurricane Adalia in the Big Bend of Florida with maximum sustained winds of 130 miles per hour and 160 mile per hour gusts. This is an unprecedented event for Florida, for this part of Florida, and the first major hurricane to move through the Appalachian Bay region since records began in 18, 
50. So um, going on 200 years of keeping track of hurricanes, we've never seen one like this in this area. Um, so that's why we really don't know what's going to happen with potentially 15 feet of storm surge. Uh, how can we tell uh, l where landfall is happening with no well distinct eye? Well, um, we still know where the central area of low pressure is. So whenever that low pressure center gets over land, um, this is that's when we'll have official landfall here. Okay, so um, once again, I'm going to show you the... Uh, I'm going to try to leave this up this time. I'm going to show you the, the camera here near Cedar Key. Um, and then this is what it looked like earlier. Oh, <laughs> quite the difference. Quite the difference. I believe we've got ourselves a new tornado warning for Marion County, Florida. And this actually includes Ocala or Ocala. Um, radar indicated tornado. We do have uh, some rotation here. All right, let me try to get my my bearings straight on this. Oops. Not sure what's going on with it. It's just kind of in a radar hole, isn't it? Okay, but yeah, um, Ocala, you are under... A tornado warning in Huntington, a Camp Roosevelt, and Montauk. Take shelter now. We also have an update from uh, Riley. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. Just an update from Cedar Key. Uh, nine feet of storm surge officially now. Um, and this is, it's only going to get worse once the eye makes uh, its way into the land, which it is look like, it does look like it's doing now. If you look on radar, the eyewall did just make the first contact with the um, shoreline, that's via KVAX. Um, and after this gets pushed up further inland, uh, that's when we're gonna see a large wall of water where we could possibly see uh, a foot of water every few minutes make its way on the shore. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Riley. As the storm makes landfall here, which is happening now, uh, we're gonna see even more water uh, get pushed into the Cedar Key area of Florida and also Horseshoe Beach, uh, which is uh, really unfortunate to see just how much water we're seeing here already. And I don't think that we're even close to seeing the, the highest uh, amount just yet. So um, as daylight approaches, we're getting a little bit of a better view of exactly what's going on here. And uh, we're going to see even more uh, impacts and, and more waves and, and more uh, water coming in in places like Keaton Beach as well uh, but right now the wind's still blowing uh, in the wrong direction uh, when it, whenever the eye gets closer uh, we're going to see the water rise very very quickly here as the winds start coming ashore the landfall is getting ready to happen very soon very soon call me Josh thanks for the 50 gifted very generous everybody say thank you to call me Josh that's huge um, yeah, it's almost underwater there, the, the shed that hey, we're Ryan, uh, at. Hey, Ryan, power just went out to the west side of uh, Perry, and we have debris flying across the street. Numerous power flashes now to the north as well. Okay, so that's coming from Brad Arnold. Uh, numerous power flashes happening up there near Perry. As the, the strongest part of the storm is getting closer to where um, Brad is. Uh, the outer eye wall is getting ready to move into that area now. Got another tornado warning for Wayne County, Georgia. Wayne County, Georgia. Power's going out all over the place. I don't know uh, what the latest number is, but the last time I heard 
Uh, we had uh, 60,000 people without power in Florida. That number is going to go up significantly, especially as this part of the storm right here comes on to land. And that looks like it's going to make a beeline for Perry. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, if you want to go ahead and open up the Radar Omega app, take a look at the Fish Creek, Florida um, surge cam. You, there's two little bushes in the lower right, and the winds on there right now are insane. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and Carly, if you can keep, well, actually, we should probably keep Keaton Beach up as well. We'll keep looking at Fish Creek through the app. Um, only got six slots on the main thing there, so we're trying to, Keep as much useful information as possible in there. But you can see that the winds are really picking up here in the uh, Fish Creek area. And we also expect uh, for uh, some water inundation out in this field as well. This is a little bit inland, um, so it'll be interesting to see how quickly the water overtakes the field. Um, but right now, just the, the little bush is a good indication of how quickly uh, the winds are, uh, are increasing here uh, near Fish Creek, which is, this is probably right around where Landfall is going to happen or where some of the strongest winds are going to occur as the eye wall approaches. And then if we go down here in the Radar Omega app uh, to Horseshoe Beach and we click this little green thing, this is the, the one that we've been watching all day. Uh, lots of debris coming in now uh, through our storm surge sensor. And this... Guys are not going to believe it. I've lost the before picture again. Okay. I found it and I'm saving it now. This is what it looked like uh, just moments ago, really, um, when we started the stream. So quite the difference there. And the water is still coming up. And also, if you look at the... Um, uh, if you look at the trees in the distance back here, you can also see uh, some really intense winds there like th those are strong trees like that those are the kind of trees that are built for hurricanes you know and i see them bending almost completely over there um as some of these uh, hurricane force winds come ashore near horseshoe beach and look at the look at the waves i'm going to be very surprised if this um if that structure whatever that is that little shed i'm going to be very surprised if that's still there uh by the end of this thing Uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. Um, an update from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, we are back to a Cat 3, as it looks like right as it was about to make landfall, it underwent an eyewall replacement cycle. Uh, obviously, this is still bad, but this was the best case scenario for the storm that we were given. Uh, what this cycle means, it is, it's going to be slightly weaker at the time it makes landfall than what we've seen in the open ocean. Okay, thank you very much, Riley. Update from the National Hurricane Center, officially a Category 3 uh, as it makes landfall. Slight difference, <laughs> very slight difference. We had maximum sustained winds at 130 miles per hour when it was a Category 4, and now it's 125. Uh, the people or anybody that's going to be hit by this storm are not going to notice a difference between the 5 mile per hour a difference there um, but this is this is good news instead of rapidly intensifying all the way up to the moment of landfall which was a real possibility it looks like we're going to see uh, you know right at the the border of a category four storm make landfall instead of a mid to upper level category four or category five which is great news for the residents of the big bend of florida uh, still going to be a catastrophic and destructive and uh, life-changing and, you know, uh, uh, coastline-changing uh, storm for the people here in um, and around Perry, Florida, Athena, Florida, and Finn Holloway, Florida, as the storm continues to um, make its way up towards the Highway 98 corridor. Some of the strongest winds are getting ready to move into that area now. Yeah, uh, important note from the National Weather Service, this change in wind speeds does not diminish the threat of catastrophic storm surge and damaging winds. Any ivory, that I'll let you know. Let me know 
if you have any questions or comments, this is AA4 Gate. Yep, nine feet of water where it shouldn't be in Cedar Key. Still seeing reports of a lot of flooding in Tampa. Um, I don't know how much bigger the, the, the surge is going to get in places like Clearwater and Tampa. I know you guys are dealing with it right now. Uh, but as the storm makes landfall, things should start to get a little bit better, um, I'd say, within a couple of hours. Uh, things are going to get a whole lot worse, though, um, in some of the more directly affected areas uh, between Horseshoe Beach and uh, Keaton Beach over the next little bit as landfall is about to happen with our major hurricane. What you're seeing uh, as far as our cameras go, um, Carly, if you could, just to make it easier on the eyes, I think it would be cool to have um, all of our cyclone ports as maybe three, four, and five on the bottom, and then all of our actual live storm chasers as one, two, and three on the top, just so there's a better uh, separation there. Uh, but what you're seeing, all the black and white imagery is um, our cyclone ports through Radar Omega, then the colored ones are actual live storm chasers on the ground. We're going to be changing that around a little bit as we go forward. Um, we're going to have different storm chasers we're working with during different times as the, the storms in different areas. Uh, but we're going to be watching these cyclone ports uh, pretty rigorously um, as the storm makes landfall to show you the uh, impact of the storm surge. Uh, what's your suggestion about the Savannah area? I'm currently at work. This is still going to be a very strong storm in Savannah. Potentially uh, cat still a hurricane force winds and some storm surge. Nothing like what we're seeing in Florida, but it's going to be a strong storm regardless. Uh, also, Chris Hall has an update on Twitter for us. Uh, we've got, you know, uh, the power is still on in Perry, which is uh, surprising, but you can tell it's getting ready to go out soon uh, as things are flashing, going on and off um, as some of the stronger winds approach now. Uh, and the lights are purple, so we have an update from uh, Mr. Dibble. Go ahead, Riley. Uh, hey, Ryan. So looking at the project support cams on Radar Omega, it looks like the water level in Deckel Beach is down. Now, this is not a good thing. What it means is that water is getting cold and it's going to get thrown up somewhere else. So eventually there is going to be a large wall of water come on shore here. But this is what all the water there right now is going into Cedar Key. So this is a really bad situation that we're seeing a storm strong enough to actually pull water visibly away from land. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, uh, Riley. This is what he's talking about. Um, Deckel and Keaton Beach uh, are still in an area where most of the winds are actually racing uh, offshore. So this is actually taking all the water and pushing it this way. Uh, and, you know, some of that is going to wrap around and it's going to come over in to towards Horseshoe Beach. That's why we're seeing all of the massive storm surge over here. But another thing that's going to happen is once the storm makes landfall, all of the water that got pushed back that doesn't have the ability to get cycled around is just going to come right back this way. OK, so uh, even without some of the stronger winds on the southern side driving the water towards the coast, just Big the time power flash at my location run power. Well, this is Chris. As soon as I say that, the power comes back on, but big, big time power flash just in front of me. When he says power flash. He's seeing sparks or some sort of flash from a transformer, or um, you know, power line in the in the distance, and that's causing uh, intermittent power outages there. Uh, but the the water that's getting pushed hey Ryan, back Brad, here will uh, come back. A transformer just blew right next to my car. I might, I may need to change your pants. Transformer blew right next to Brad's car. So huge water inundation getting ready to happen up here. Do not be fooled by the fact that it's going down for a moment right now. Uh, this is something similar that happens in tsunamis. I'm sure you've heard about the, you know, right before a huge tsunami comes, the water level recedes at first. Um, so <laughs> don't go taking pictures of the water as it goes back. Hopefully we don't have anybody in that area to even worry about. Uh, hopefully everybody got out of there, but... Um, 
that's what we're dealing with now. Uh, back to um, Horseshoe Beach. I do want to show you this. Um, as the water continues to rise, it's still rising here, and look at all the debris in the water. Holy smokes. Yeah, the storm's a Category 3 storm now with 125 mile per hour winds. It was just moments ago, it was a Category 4 with a whopping 130 mile per hour winds. There's really no big difference in uh, what's happening with this storm. It doesn't really matter if it's Category 3 or 4 whenever the, the wind difference is that minimal. As you can see above me, um, it's definitely nothing to play around with. Everybody that lives in the, the there's a neighborhood in this area, by the way, like right behind this camera, there's a house, there's a whole street full of businesses and houses and stuff behind this. They're all uh, submerged in water right now. And they would be uh, if it was category four or category three. Yep, this will be coming up towards, um, so some of the places that are getting ready to get the strongest winds right now are Perry, Florida, uh, Athena, Florida, uh, Cook's Hammock, Townsend. Uh, this is where we can see some destructive winds in excess of 100 miles per hour in the next little bit. Uh, and then we're going to see that really come up towards the I-10 corridor, towards Madison and Lee, uh, Live Oak and Jasper. Uh, and then we're going to see that go all the way up towards Jennings. And then by the time this gets up towards Georgia, it's still going to be a hurricane. Uh, and we're going to see some very strong winds near Valdosta, Homerville, up towards Waycross as well. And then the whole time all this is happening, we've got tornadic problems to worry about as well. Southeast Georgia right now, we have a tornado warning for McKinnon and Sun Hill. Uh, you've got to take shelter because these tropical systems put down tornadoes. It's not uncommon. And a lot of times they're very hard to see in person and on radar. Are some of those cameras on floating docks? I, I'm not sure. I think a couple of them are, but uh, most of them are strapped to like posts or like really sturdy concrete posts on piers uh, or uh, power poles and stuff like that. This is a live look at Horseshoe Beach, Florida, where once again, the, the water continues to rise. It looks like we're, some of the waves um, are coming up really close to the roof line uh, on that little shed there, which once again, probably about eight or nine feet uh, above the ground. And then you got to think that this whole area is four or five feet uh, above the normal sea level. So the, you know, the waves usually don't crash anywhere near this. Uh, there's rocks and stuff down next to the shed that goes down to where the water normally is. So we're, we're seeing a lot of water inundation here. And we're probably going to see something similar in Keaton Beach here soon. And probably Fish Creek as well. Yeah, we haven't even seen like close to the strongest winds yet through Brad's uh, camera. That's going to happen whenever this this little part of the storm comes up over Perry. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. We have a uh, rotation in the same two spots that I keep talking about for the fifth time now. There's really something in the atmosphere that is trying to whip something up right here near Zulfo Springs, northeast of Arcadia, uh, west of Sebring. Uh, two spots there this time that have uh, existed for the past couple of minutes that may be tornado warned. And in addition to that, also, once again, south of Brooksville to the north of Tampa, there's another cell with rotation there. 
that could be enough to uh, warrant another tornado warning in that area as well. So I, I do want to reiterate that if you receive a tornado warning in these outer bands, the spiral bands of uh, Idalia, then and and you've gotten a tornado warning already in these counties, it is not a mistake. It is not a, a uh, an accidental repeat. These are new rotation, new areas of rotation every time. So I, I, uh, it sounds silly, but for the fourth or fifth time in Avon Park, um, you probably are going to want to take shelter. Y'all watch out out ahead of this uh, circulation approaching your area. Hopefully it'll do exactly the same thing the last ones did and they die out pretty quickly uh, before they reach the, the towns, but it is possible that once again, you will be in a tornado warning. Okay. Thank you very much, Andy. We're going to be keeping an eye on the tornado situation as we continue to watch uh, landfall here. Uh, also, this is what it looks like uh, up close. When when you hear our guys talk about um, uh, power flash, this is a video from Hunter Hurley uh, on uh, Twitter. Uh, that's what's happening nine times out of ten. The, the big bright flash that you see in the distance is sort of power line uh, doing that number. Um, and this is also one of the reasons why we have, um, you know, so many uh, power outages starting to come in, getting close to 100,000 people without power now in and around the uh, big band of Florida. That number is going to go up significantly as time goes on. Going to go up a lot. Yeah, what is that? Yeah, there's some very large piece of debris that you can see there. Oh, that's the pier. Or that's like the boat dock or something. It's broken off and it's just floating there. Do you guys see that on the left side of your screen? Hey, Ron, it's that Chris. Is... Uh, probably irrelevant to anything, but my ears are now popping uh, here in Perry, uh, as well as Hannah's. Uh, so the eye is going to come very close to the town of Perry. Uh, ears are popping, uh, likely as a result of a rapid drop in uh, pressure as the low pressure center approaches Perry, Florida. That was the voice of Chris Hall there. Uh, but yeah, we can. So the pier was on the right side of your screen uh, when, when the before the massive flooding, uh, but now it's just kind of floating there uh, as it approaches. Uh, it's probably going to get washed uh, onto the street somewhere in uh, Cedar Key. So this is in Cedar Key, Florida. Massive flooding uh, ongoing there. Uh, this is Horseshoe Beach, where also we have very uh, intense flooding uh, happening right now. The water is uh, several, several feet above uh, where it um, it's supposed to be. Um, I'm going to try to pull up those uh, before pictures again to show you. Uh, but you can see all the debris. Uh, there, There's seriously houses probably mostly submerged in water right behind this camera. Businesses. Uh, things that are all getting uh, destroyed right now. This is exactly why we hooted and hollered for days, begging people to evacuate, because if there's somebody that decided to stay behind in Horseshoe Beach right now, they are their only option is to just go get on the roof, I guess. And then now, you know, you've got to worry about the 100 mile per hour winds knocking you off the roof. And then what do you do? Um, that this is the situation that we're in, in in Horseshoe Beach, and we're about to experience something similar Deckel Beach, Keaton Beach, and Fish Creek uh, as the storm continues to make landfall. Uh, Pinellas County closes uh, access to barrier islands, including to all residents. So things are still getting worse in Tampa Bay as well. The Tampa Bay area is flooding significantly as a result of storm surge. So that just shows, shows you the wide scale impact uh, that this storm is having. And uh, yeah, huge shout out to Radar Omega and the Cyclone port system here. This is, I don't think, um, I, it's, it's hard to fathom how hard this was. These guys correctly picked the, the right locations to put these cyclone ports a day or two ahead of time. These things are still working. The fact that this camera is still transmitting a signal to us right now in these conditions is incredible. Um, and uh, basically, we've got three different uh, cameras that are going to directly intercept the exact area 
of landfall. This is um, un- incredible. I don't think anybody else on uh, Earth is is doing this uh, at this level with this sort of accuracy uh, and with this sort of dependability. So, uh, seriously, huge shout out to Radar Omega, um, and super proud to be uh, partnered with them and and using them to help tell the story here today. This is Horseshoe Beach, Florida. The water continues to rise. That wave literally just went over the roof. That's the first time I've seen that. So that shows that the water is still very much on the upswing. And um, my goodness, uh, things just keep getting more intense there. The same thing is happening in Cedar Key as well. Go ahead, Riley. Yeah, Ryan, speaking of Cedar Key, we did just hit nine and a half feet of water that's not supposed to be there. Nine and a half feet of water that's not supposed to be there. Uh, and this is what uh, Cedar Key looks like right now. It's, it, it's a lot of water. You know, if you're just now tuning in and you're like, oh, well, yeah, like water to me. Well, this is, there's usually not water here. Okay, This usually doesn't look like you're out in the middle of the ocean. Um, this is uh, right behind where this camera is. There's houses, there's businesses. Um, and the water it has came a long way to get where it is right now. More major, major power flashes here in Perry, Ryan. Okay, so now we're hearing from uh, Chris in, in uh, Perry. So let's go check on him real quick. Uh, I think his feed's frozen, if we can get a refresh on it. Who's not frozen, though, is Brad Arnold. Brad's also in Perry. And uh, you can see that the winds are really picking up here. In Perry, as one of the the stronger bands of wind is just now starting to come through, we are officially up to 107,000 people without power. 107,000 people without power now in Florida. That number is going to continue to rise exponentially, I believe. And yeah, let me show you the radar again, real quick. Um, landfall. This is the eye. Landfall is going to happen. Literally, I I can't express <laughs> how impressive this is enough. These three cyclone port stations, uh, some of the cameras that we've been looking at, are going to take a direct hit from the hurricane as it makes landfall. And these were placed early yesterday. So uh, almost exact uh, accuracy uh, with the extreme wind warning now in where Perry, the landfall Ryan, is going to happen. Just come through on our phones. Okay. So things are getting a lot worse in Perry right now, and you can see why. Uh, this is one of the more extreme bands that we will see in, in terms of wind. is starting to move through Perry now. Um, the winds over here uh, closer to the coast are probably in the 120-mile-per-hour range. Uh, we'll probably see gusts, several gusts, over 100 miles per hour in this part of the storm, which is where our storm chasers are. And actually, you know, now that I see this, this is probably actually where the most intense winds will be, and this will move towards Perry over the next 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And we're going to see these bands, this whole part of the storm here, continue to move in this general direction and eventually affect Madison with uh, very strong destructive winds as well. I think some of our some of our cameras out here are having trouble staying connected. Rightfully so. It's it's pretty impressive that it's lasted this long. Um, uh, Carly, if we need a spot to fill while we wait on one of the ones closer to Keaton Beach to come back online, I think a good one to do would be Steinachy or Steinachy, um, uh, Florida. I think we'll see the water levels rise there pretty significantly over the next little bit, and that one's online. We have lost um, Brad Arnold's feed. We'll wait for him to come back on. Uh, Here's a tweet from Treasure Island, Florida. See that we have high surf and storm surge continuing to batter Treasure Island. This is on the Sunset Beach Pavilion, Sunset Beach on the island. And the water continues to rise in Horseshoe Beach.
Uh, we just got a new tornado warning, by the way, for Camden County and Glenn County in Georgia. Uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, just an update on the tides. Right now, we are experiencing low tides. So what that means is at this point, the moon will also be throwing an extra three feet of water at any place that's already seeing surge. Okay, thank you very much, Riley. A very in, important uh, information uh, coming in through Riley and, and our team members about what's going on out there. I'm sure we'll get a news break in soon, as I'm sure there's plenty of uh, you know, reports coming in. And um, I think we're very close to having an official uh, landfall here. We're just going to wait for this uh, central area of low pressure to uh, meander on the shore here. Probably right at Keaton Beach is where the official landfall will happen. Uh, Idalia is about to make landfall as a technically Category 4 hurricane, officially a Category 3, just a couple mile per hour uh, off and um, it's going to happen in Taylor County, north of Steinhatchee. Catastrophic storm surge is underway, and uh, the Perry, Florida area, with a population of 7,000, may be in the brunt of the wind. Uh, slightly higher uh, storm surge and tides are forecast for Charleston, South Carolina. Well, oh boy. Um, uh, Jim Cantori uh, has an incredible video of some of the flooding going on in Italia. Um, and I just retweeted that on Twitter. I can't share it or the Weather Channel will come, come take, uh, take us down. So it's on Twitter, though. Yeah, I'm just reading through some of these latest updates. Lots of information to share. Landfall uh, is approaching. Uh, remember, all most of our storm chasers, people who are going to be sending us most of the reports, are a little bit farther inland. So, like uh, places uh, like Salem and um perry that's where a lot of the storm chasers are it's because even like your seasoned storm chasers like reed timmer they don't want to be in horseshoe beach like reed timmer he wants to be like in the worst storms on the earth you know even him and most other humans cannot you know handle this even if you've got a boat like you, you good luck in this okay all right go ahead caleb what you got Hey Ryan, so uh, just a quick update on kind of everything that's going on. It looks like pretty much every single county along the coast north of Tampa is currently reporting um, significant flooding, if not significant storm surge like we're seeing on the Radar Omega cyclone port systems that you guys are watching on the stream right now. Um, on top of that, here in Madison, we're starting to see an uptick in the wind. We've probably had 50 to 60 mile an hour wind gusts with about a sustained wind of 40. Uh, pretty much continually. Rain's picked up a lot here. Um, Perry County, see, or Perry, Florida's seeing a lot of power flashes lately, so I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see power outages affect more of the coastal cities as well as more inland as well. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Y'all Force One, keep us updated. Obviously, we're probably going to start hearing about damage uh, soon. Um, so as soon as we start hearing some of that, we'll we'll start to assess and see what we're gonna do next. Remember guys, the Y'all Squad is in Florida right now, not necessarily to storm chase. Obviously we appreciate them giving us a view of what's happening up in the Madison and Live Oak area, uh, but they're there to quickly respond and you know deploy resources if necessary. And it looks like it's probably gonna be necessary. So uh, once again, if you guys wanna help the Y'all Squad out, a nonprofit organization, go to the yallsquad.org and uh, make a contribution. I believe we are at I don't know if this is updated or not, but yeah, we're about at seven thousand dollars raised uh, today. So um, let's let, let's try to get that as high as possible. So if people need help, we can go down there and do whatever it's is needed uh, when uh, when the time comes. Okay, so here's uh, landfalls happening here. Uh, this is Perry, right? So we've got Brad Arnold's feed. 
Uh, we've got Chris Hall's feed, both from Perry. We've seen a lot of really strong winds here, but we haven't seen anything like what's coming with this part of the storm, okay? Uh, when that gets up there too, then that's when we're gonna see some of the really strong destructive winds. Uh, this is uh, Horseshoe Beach, okay? So the crazy flooding that we're seeing um, and flooding beach through, or Horseshoe Beach through the Radar Omega app, this is happening way down here. So the winds and, the, and all that, this is pretty displaced from our actual center of circulation. So the winds are gonna be even stronger up here. The flooding will likely be even worse uh, over here whenever it starts. Uh, but Horseshoe Beach, this is uh, what's happening. You can see how those winds are aligning perfectly uh, with the shoreline. And that's why whenever you click on the little icon there to look at the camera, this is what you see. My goodness, and every time you look at it, it's a lot worse. Uh, pressure sensor there around 985 millibars. Um, whoever built this shed, good job. I don't know if you're watching or not, but this is a, <laughs> this is a well-built shed. I've seen like large pieces of tin sla slap up against it. We've seen power poles slap up against it, you know, 10 foot waves, and it's just standing there unfazed. So um, <laughs> good work. Uh, I will still be surprised if that's still there uh, by the end of this stream though, as uh, we continue to see the incredible flooding uh, continue. All right, what do we got here? This is showing up as another uh, cyclone port, but there's a storm chaser here. Not exactly sure who it is. Um, that's got a video feed of the eye wall or the, the clearing in the middle of the storm coming ashore here. Um, so that's available. You can see that in the Radar Omega app. Some of the stronger winds, though, are a little bit farther to the north where we've got Brett Adair. Um, he's out here. Looks like we're not getting a feed from him right now, but we've also, of course, got um, Brad Arnold, um, who somehow, even in the middle of a hurricane, still has a beautiful 1080p picture coming through. Um, and we're going to see as soon as this area of red and purple here, as soon as that makes it up towards them, this is when it'll look like a hurricane through their feeds. Like right now, obviously, it, it looks pretty bad, uh, but it's going to look a lot worse once that gets into their general vicinity. Really, really strong winds right in this vicinity here. This is where most of the damaging winds will come from as well. at the 3D view here. Uh, extreme wind warning has been extended, by the way, a little bit farther inland. Uh, Perry is now included in it. Boyd, Day, Mayo, uh, Cook's Hammock, Hines, and Cross City all included in the extreme wind warning where we expect winds over 115 mile, miles per hour to take place for an extended period of time. This is gonna be uh, extremely damaging and life-threatening. Uh, take shelter as if this is a tornado. Once again, if you're in Mayo, Day, Boyd, Perry, Pen uh, Penland, or any of these places, there's 23,000 people under this warning. Um, you have to treat this as if there's a massive tornado coming right for you, or you may not survive it. You've got to get away from windows. You've got to get shelter. You've got to put uh, a mattress over your head. You've got to protect yourself. Wear a helmet if you can. You've got to hunker down for potentially hours as this thing goes over you. The, if you haven't taken shelter yet, you need to do it now. You need to brace for impact as uh, this catastrophic hurricane continues to work into Florida. Our Cedar Key camera is moving a lot. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't remember exactly what we attached this to. I don't know if it's on a floating boat dock or if whatever this is attached to is just swaying. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, all three of our um, live cameras around Keaton Beach are down right now. Well, it'll be interesting to see if they're able to come back up, but the fact that they lasted as long as they did is quite impressive. And uh, Carly, if, if you can refresh the Steinachi one, it's working now on, I don't know, you might have to pull up a new window or something. 
Uh, super impressed uh, as well by the horseshoe. Oops, sorry. By the horseshoe beach camera. Um, it's the fact that it's still working is uh, a miracle. As the water is still rising here, I believe. I think that we're still seeing wave heights at new levels every time we get a new peak. Yeah, like that. Yeah, seriously, whoever built that shed. A plus. Yeah, we are very close to seeing the official landfall here of um, Hurricane Adalia. Actually, quite a bit farther north and uh, west of the, what we're looking at here. Horseshoe Beach is several miles away from the center of circulation, and it's still this bad. Yeah, this is live right now in Horseshoe Beach, Florida. Oh. I think that one kind of jump scared me a little bit there. Okay, yeah, Reed Simmer's got an update. I'm retweeting that on Twitter right now. Um, looks like he's in kind of like a high-rise sort of condo building on the beach, and the water's starting to get into the first floor, and he's up on the second floor. Honestly, just kind of speechless at what we're seeing here on the Horseshoe Beach camera. More and more debris. Uh, I, I thought, I think that we're probably getting pretty close to the peak of the water level. I could be wrong, though. I've been wrong multiple times looking at this, con consistently surprised by what we're seeing. Once again, just... All we can do is hope that the majority of people who live here, not a huge town, but there's tons of houses and stuff right behind this camera. Uh, hopefully all of those people left the area because if not, I, I don't even want to imagine what they're going through right now. Certainly there's not anybody nearby to, to help. It looks to me like um, Hurricane Idalia has made landfall. If, if I'm just looking at this correctly, uh, Hurricane Idalia has almost certainly made landfall now as a, a major Category 3 hurricane. Um, we'll, I'm sure we'll get the official update from the National Hurricane Center here. We're going to get it right here in a second. Yeah, we're still getting major um, storm surge uh, reports out of Tampa as well. What in the world is that? We've got huge pieces of debris floating by our Horseshoe Beach uh, camera now. That looked like a, maybe like a set of stairs that went to like the second floor of an apartment building or something. You, you know what I'm talking about? Maybe like a multi-story condo with the outdoor stairs. That, that's what it looked like to me. Um, go ahead, uh, Riley, what do you got? Hey, Ryan, I was just going to say that, yes, those were stairs, and a while ago you actually saw a large chunk of a roof float past. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, Riley, for the update. I, I would love to keep this the camera up <laughs> the whole time, but we do need to check into the radar periodically and, and check in on some of the other areas. Once again, if you're one of the premium uh, subscribers in Radar Omega, you can look at this on your phone. I'm going to try to keep it up here for you for free as much as possible. Uh, but I am going to have to switch around. Looks like we've lost Brad Arnold's feet again. And we keep losing our, our Keaton Beach one. Um, Carly's in there working like crazy, <laughs> trying to keep an active camera up for us at all times. Uh, Steinachi, I think, is even down. Um, we could... Okay, yeah. Every, was, honestly, it's crazy because right now the conditions are really good. In, like where, where the storm is making landfall. The eye of the storm is currently um, over 
these three cameras that are not working. The ones that are working <laughs> are taking the hardest beating right now, which, which is crazy. So yeah, um, you know, really concerned about our, our friends in Perry as this band uh, approaches them. I really do think we're going to see uh, the textbook hurricane imagery come out of this. There's going to be widespread damage, uh, lots of flying debris and stuff in Perry as that band approaches over the next little bit. Riley, did you have something else or did I forget to change the lights? Uh, the light forgot to get switched. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, streets are flooded knee deep in the Gulfport area, Florida. And we're about to see those extreme winds move into Perry. Hopefully we can get, um, hopefully we can get Chris and Brad's feed feeds back before that happens because, um, they're going to be right there in the middle of it. Right there. It's smack dab in the middle of it. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, this is uh, major uh, Category 3 Hurricane Adalia making landfall uh, in Florida near Keaton Beach. Uh, what you're looking at is a video feed of Horseshoe Beach, which is south and east of where the storm is making landfall, but some of the biggest storm surges happening here. We've seen roofs float by. We've seen staircases float by. Uh, unfortunately, the whole community here is likely completely demolished, um, except for the shed. Uh, whatever it is that we're looking at right here, this is literally um, handling the, uh, the storm extremely well. Hopefully, there's a lot of other structures here that are also still standing, but we've seen a lot of things float by that probably shouldn't be. I'm looking through, remember guys, if you want to tag me in something, if you have a report, if you have something you want to send in, um, uh, Hey Ryan, it's Chris. You got Ryan a copy? Y'all on Twitter is the best way to do that. Go ahead, uh, Chris. Oh, sorry. I gotta, I gotta push the button. Go ahead, Chris. Hey Ryan, uh, I messed up, stepped outside of the car, uh, but we, we are definitely getting over hurricane force winds here in Perry. Uh, still getting power flashes uh, out in the distance from here. Uh, tree limbs are falling left and right. However, uh, as of now, I don't see any major, major damage, and I want to knock on wood on that because we're not in the thick of it yet. Uh, but as of right now, uh, we're probably gusting to around 80, possibly even 90. Wow. Okay, so that's an update from Chris, and we do have Brad Arnold's feedback. Um, also in the Perry, Florida area. And I want to zoom in once again on the radar here and show you uh, where uh, we think the strongest winds are. So Brad and Chris are right here. Uh, this band is where the strongest winds are, and that's moving up towards them. So once they're in that, they are officially in what we will f know as Hurricane Adalia, and it'll probably look a whole lot more like uh, your traditional hurricane. And until the storm makes complete landfall here, I think we're going to continue to see um, just this incredible uh, storm surge uh, inundate the Horseshoe Beach and Cedar Key area. We just saw a wave go completely over the, the shed there. And we're going to keep an eye on that. And we're also going to keep an eye on our storm chasers. We're also going to keep uh, staying updated with Y'all Force One, who is currently... Um, Y'all Force One, if you can hear me... <coughs> Push the button on your radio because I've lost your location, but they're currently uh, up here a little bit farther inland along I-10. So we're, we're going to have a firsthand view of the landfall of the hurricane here. Uh, we're going to have the firsthand view of the strongest winds in, in and around Perry and down towards Salem and Carver. Um, and we're going to have a firsthand view of the second round as it moves a little bit farther inland towards Madison and Live Oak. Uh, we're up to 130,000 130, people without power in Florida. The number is going to go up. It's going to continue to go up, folks. Uh, this is from the uh, Florida Division of Emergency Shelter in Place. Uh, stay indoors, keep away from windows, monitor all weather alerts and heat all warnings. Uh, state assistance information line is going to be 1 800 342 3557. 
Uh, 1-800-342-3557. That's the state uh, assistance information line. Remember, if you're in some of the hardest um, hit areas right now, it might be a bit before anybody can get to you if you need help. Um, this is one of the reasons why we begged people to uh, take shelter or, I'm sorry, evacuate. Um, so hopefully most people have done that. Oh, and we've got the Keaton Beach, Florida camera back up if we want to try to get that one on there. Carly, I don't know how long we'll have it, but it is currently in the eye. Uh, we would like to show that. Um, uh, lights are orange. Uh, I think we've got an update from our reporters uh, and our Y'all Squad crew. Go ahead. What do you got? Hi. Um, I heard, hey, I didn't hear, can you hear me? <laughs> okay, I hear, I hear you now. <laughs> Um, I just tweeted you a little video of uh, my experience trying to get into the gas station. My guardian and the big one gas came behind me, like blew all the chips all over the place. So that was exciting. Um, we're sitting here in the parking lot. We have a view of just about any kind of surrounding um, that you can imagine. We've got a whole herd of cows up here. We're keeping an eye on. Um, and there's a screen to the right of me right now um it is like the wind is picking up very very quickly and that stream from the gutter is like going vertical so um i believe we're here and um this is this is something do you know your <laughs> uh, exact here. location and also i don't know if we have the ability to turn her mic up but it's, it's a little low okay. Um, I'll have to do that in a minute. It's okay. right there somewhere. Um, our exact location, I believe, is Lee. Lee, okay. All right. Uh, sounds good. So the the majority of the really strong winds are still well off to your south and your west, um, but they will be making uh, their way up towards you, and we'll be talking to you a lot once that uh, eye wall gets closer to you. So you all be safe, and uh, we'll be talking to you throughout the day, okay? Okay. All right. Um, so uh, right now, the f the first people on our team in line to get the brunt of the uh, the action here are, are going to be Chris and Brad, uh, and Brett Dare's out here too. Um, so we're going to be talking to to them as the the eye wall makes contact with them, uh, and then of course we've got uh, Y'all Force One back towards Lee, who will be dealing with it in a couple of hours. And, and once again, uh, Chandra, Caleb, all these guys, they're out there on behalf of the Y'all Squad to help us respond if needed. They are not news reporters, but they are killing it, man. They are doing it awesome. Jim Cantori, who? All right, thank you so much, Chandra, uh, for that. And if you guys want to follow uh, Chandra on Twitter, she's going to have, I'm sure, updates like that throughout the the day. Um, Y'all at Chan, I believe, is her um, call sign or her handle on Twitter. Uh, go ahead, Riley. Uh, hey, Ryan, update from the National Hurricane Center. We do have official landfall at 7.45 a.m. Eastern. Um, the wind speeds were 125 miles an hour, and according to recon data, the low pressure was 949 millibar, and this was actually backed up by a radar Omega cyclone port. I believe it was the Keaton Beach one, uh, recorded a pressure drop down to 950 millibars. Wow. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Riley. We have an official landfall now. Um... Uh, where we have, uh, you know, the hurricane is officially on land. It made landfall in Keaton Beach. Now the eye is getting ready to go over the Highway 98 corridor near Athena, and that's going to push some of the strongest winds of the storm up into Perry. Um, and 
the the view that we had of um, Keaton Beach was old, by the way. That I thought that it was back online, but that was just a still picture. All of the 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 cameras that got hit by the eye of the storm are dead, unfortunately. Um, but uh, we're starting to see uh, some damage uh, from uh, our storm chaser in Perry. Uh, this is Brad Arnold in Perry, Florida. Remember, the strongest part of the storm hasn't even hit yet, and we're already seeing some pretty significant tree damage here and there. Um, so I expect this to look a lot worse in about an hour uh, after this very strong band or, uh, you know, uh, band of wind goes through, which is about to approach right now. Um, extremely dangerous uh, category three uh, hurricane Idalia is making landfall in Florida. It made landfall in the Florida with maximum sustained winds around 125 miles per hour. Catastrophic storm surge and damaging winds are ongoing. Um, water levels along the coast of Florida are rising. The gauge at Cedar Key recently reported a water level of uh, around nine feet, which is um, uh, you know, a, a record, uh, obviously, from that specific station. Oh boy. Okay, so we we've got an update from Steinhatchy. So last time we looked at this camera, um, you guys, remember what it looked like, right? It didn't look like anything like this. Once again, Radar Mega needs to implement like a, a feature where you can just hit a button and look at what like, what. What did the camera look like an hour ago versus now? Uh, we have debris getting pushed up against the camera here. The water, it was inside of a reservoir here. It's completely overflowed, and the storm surge is uh, uh, completely inundating the area now. This happened fast, um, and the fact that it's happening here means that it's probably also happening in Fish Creek, uh, which is another place where we've lost our camera. Uh, but that's it's going to happen fast, and the water is going to come up significantly uh, over time it's already really high but it's going to keep getting worse we saw we've seen this happen already in uh, horseshoe beach and it's more than likely going to be much worse here near uh, uh stein stein steen hatchy stein hatchy and dallas creek landing that's going to be some major water inundation that might go all the way back into the river there near jenna and broskin and jonesboro so keep that in mind as this storm uh, continues to push in uh go ahead riley Hey, Ryan, they actually just fixed the um, Keaton Beach cam, and I think pretty soon we're going to be able to see the eye wall make its way across the um, ocean and slam into Oh, yep, you can see it right there approaching the camera. Yep. So we can see the eye wall uh, in the, the distance there. Um, so what we're looking at, so the eye of the storm went over Keaton Beach. The weather's pretty nice right now in Keaton Beach, but the rear, the backside is getting ready to come over Keaton Beach, and we'll be able to see that happen here. Uh, but look at this. This is where the water was earlier, right? The water has receded. Okay. Uh, whenever that rear, uh, you know, eye wall comes onto shore, we're probably going to see the water kind of flood in very quickly. We'll see a lot of water inundation here. It might not be as bad as what we see in Horseshoe Beach uh, or Steinhatchy, um, but uh, it's definitely going to be bad. Whenever you see the water go back this much, it's going to come back with, you know, probably three or four times uh, the the momentum. Also, uh, we're probably going to start seeing some really significant winds through Brad and um, Chris's feeds here very soon as well. Uh, and Carly, just keep an eye on that. We'll keep st um, the Steinhatchy uh, uh, camera up. Uh, until it's completely gone and just keep an eye on the one in um, uh, Keaton uh, Beach and if the water starts coming up there just go ahead and throw it up in place of uh, another one that um, that we're using uh, here's an update from the Clearwater Police Department a reminder that all access to Clearwater Beach is shut down even if you have Barrier Island Pass. 
uh, considerable flooding is occurring in that area. So still, all the way down towards Tampa, this, I mean, that's pretty far away from where the storm made landfall. Uh, we're having uh, storm surge problems. So uh, once again, you can look at the general direction of the winds here. Everything's flowing in this way underneath the storm. All that water is coming up against the, the shoreline here. Flooding places like Tampa. I'm sure we're having some problems near uh, Homosassa Springs uh, and uh, Cedar Key. So we'll keep that in mind while we talk to our field reporters, Chandra and Caleb. Go ahead, guys. <laughs> I think the I think the microphone is shot. <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> uh, we we have no audio whatsoever. Look at these guys. They are literally putting themselves out in the daggone hurricane. <laughs> okay, I hear audio from inside the cab now. I hear Kyle, but I don't hear anything from uh, Caleb. Hey, I'm just going to... Try it again. I'm just going to keep it unmuted. Just keep trying, and we'll go back to radar while... Are you on again, good enough? Hey Ryan, complete whiteout conditions, uh, gusting well over 100 miles an hour right now. Uh, we have found the eye wall. Uh, it is going down um, in a split second. Okay, um, so uh, y'all squad crew, if you can mute until you figure out the audio issues, uh, we're going to go to uh, Brad here as um, we continue to watch this unfold. Uh, I might have to mute them for them. Okay, no, they got it. Uh, so here we go, guys. Uh, it's official. The the big nasty band. This is the hurricane. Uh, the hurricane force winds are moving into Perry now, and we've got a live view of it uh, from Brad Arnold. Okay, so this is near Perry, Florida and Taylor County, uh, where the winds are really starting to pick up. We've also got um, uh, Chris Hall out there as well, giving us a view of this. This is the front end of the hurricane force winds as they come in they're going to get more intense than this um, and we're going to watch that as it continues to come through also the flooding in horseshoe beach florida continues to get worse look at all that debris uh, pieces of homes uh, and businesses just floating out to sea now as the water should start receding at some point um, not sure exactly when uh, but now the the focus is going to be the the damaging winds here we're probably going to start to see debris flying around and everything uh, in perry as the the center of the strongest winds are moving right into town as we speak. This is the eye wall. Yeah, uh, lots of reports of damage uh, in Keaton Beach. There's a roof with uh, a home with a roof completely removed in he Keaton Beach. Uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, on the Keaton Beach live cam right now, you can see the water surging in. Okay, thank you. Live uh, view from uh, Brad is pretty intense. Once again, Brad's a professional storm chaser. He's been in some of the strongest hurricanes ever. I definitely would not recommend driving around a Category 3 major landfall. Uh, but we get a first-hand view of some of the da the damage that's going to be happening here, uh, thanks to him. Uh, also, the water is surging in uh, into uh, Keaton Beach, Florida. We can see the water levels rise on the Radar Omega app. Carly, whenever you get the chance, we should probably uh, replace probably Steinachi with uh, Keaton Beach because we're having connection issues with it. So this is a live view from Brad Arnold in Taylor County, Florida, near uh, Perry of the hurricane uh, force winds uh, and the over 100 mile per hour gusts that are coming into the area right now. Daggone. Oh, did we lose our shed? Oh, no. Okay, Horseshoe Beach. The shed is gone. It's officially gone. Is that the, that, There's the roof right there in front of us. Holy crap. The fact that this camera is still working is unbelievable. Oh my God.
This is a live view of the um, uh, Horseshoe Beach area as um, the shed that we've been watching all day is literally gone now and the water's still rising. Okay, uh, our field crew out in Lee, Florida is trying to talk to us. Go ahead, let's see. All right, Ryan, can you hear us now? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Perfect. All right, so just within the last few minutes, we've had a significant uptick in the wind here. We'll probably see it around 50 to 80. Um, the trees around us are literally shredded leaves. Um, and Okay, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> thank you for withstanding the elements for us and giving us uh, this report. I think the, the, the microphone is a little wet, but we heard you. We got the message. Uh, and just know that some of those stronger winds are coming for you, so y'all get into a safe spot, okay? We'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, go ahead and mute, Kyle. Go ahead. Okay, all right. Uh, so that that was um, our y'all squad crew out there in Lee, Florida. They're they're still not in on the the strongest winds yet. They're going to be next in line. We'll be talking to them multiple times throughout the day. They're probably going to have to use a different microphone though because that one's definitely shot. Uh, if you're just now tuning in though, uh, what we are looking at is a live view of uh, a catastrophic hurricane that's taken place. Horseshoe Beach, uh, this camera is unrecognizable at this point. Um, I, 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 if that's still Horseshoe Beach, have we lost Horseshoe Beach or is that literally? It, okay, we have officially. Okay, officially the Horseshoe Beach camera, the one where we were watching the shed is gone. It's been washed out to sea. Everybody pay your respects to that camera because that literally handled some of the craziest conditions I think you'll ever see uh, in documentation of a hurricane. Um, but that one is officially gone. Now we've changed over that view to the Steinhatchee, Florida uh, camera, which is probably going to suffer a similar fate um, as we see the uh, very intense uh, waves start coming into that area. Uh, and honestly, it's probably going to be even worse than what we saw a little bit farther to the south. Now let's pull up... Um uh, full screen here, Brad Arnold, who's in Perry, Florida, who's experiencing some of the stronger winds right now. I'm going to talk to Brad and Chris both. Brad, uh, we're watching you. This is incredible stuff. Um, just give us an update whenever you get a chance of well, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, and all that good stuff. Um, Chris, we're watching. Just let us know what's going on as soon as you get a chance to update me. Also, the water is very quickly approaching the shore. Hey, uh, <clears throat> sorry, my voice Keep. is kind of going out of me a little bit. Um, as far as what we're seeing right now, definitely hurricane force winds, as you can see. Um, we're seeing gusts well over 100 miles an hour right now. Um, as far as what we are hearing, um, I have had the window down a little bit. We have heard some cracks and booms, typical things that you would hear with hurricanes. <clears throat> but um, we're still waiting on the worst of it to get here. Uh, it's 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 only going to get worse from here. This is just the beginning. It went from about 45 mile per hour storm to over 100, and the matter of about I mean as fast as you can snap your fingers, it it it, it went uh, kaboom and and it started. So um, as long as we can stay out in it driving, uh, we will. Uh, I do have places to fall back to if I need to. Um, all power is out in the area. Obviously, I've not seen any trees down, thankfully. Uh, that is going to change, though. So i um, going to hang out as long as I can, and I will let you know just as soon as I see something else. Okay. Hey, Ryan. It's so this wet is Chris. and windy. <laughs> there we go. Now, that is an update from Chris. Straight, simple, and to the point, it is wet and windy there in Taylor County, Florida, once again. Uh, Chris and uh, Brad Arnold both are in the uh, Perry, Florida area, and this is a live view of the hurricane force winds that are coming through. Also, uh, I want to update you on Keaton, Florida. This is where the storm made landfall. Now the water is rushing in fast. Look at this, guys. You see how the, the wind is blowing parallel to the beach. As soon as you see the wind start blowing more inland, you're going to see this wall of water rush over the beach. And then, unfortunately, it's going to go flood uh, all these communities over near Keaton, uh, Florida, like we saw in so many of our other live cameras today. Um, once again, the shed that we were watching Ryan, earlier we in Horseshoe Beach has been washed away. I'm going to set it up for the camera for you. Okay, uh, so that was Brad. Guys, oh my goodness.
Uh, you can see how quickly the storm surge is coming up here, and the winds are ripping right now in Keaton, Florida. This is a Radar Omega Cyclone port. Um, unbelievable network of cameras these guys have put together for, for documentation of this storm. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully everybody in these areas evacuated because some of the stuff that we've seen today is beyond deadly. Um, and uh, we're getting ready to see that same fate here in the Keaton area as the storm surge comes in. Um, also, uh, Perry. Perry is an area that we're concerned about, and that's where Brad and Chris are right now. And we're going to continue to see the conditions worsen there as well. And we have an update from Riley. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, we have the um, 8 a.m. National Hurricane Center outlook. There's a lot to pick apart here. Um, if you look in stream text, I dropped the latest predictions for surge. We should probably have those up on screen so people can find out where they are. Um, as well as that, they are indicating that the um, hurricane force winds extend up to 25 miles out from the eye of the hurricane. And the tropical storm force winds extend up to 175 miles out from the center. Okay. Uh, and also, they did uh, note that a few tornadoes are possible from west central and northern Florida into southeast Georgia. And they upped the um, maximum expected rainfall to 12 inches or one foot of rain. Wow. Okay. So yeah, once we're done with the catastrophic uh, storm surge and the destructive winds here, uh, the threat doesn't end there. The farther inland this goes, the more we're going to hey, be Ron, focusing on flooding pushing, and tornadoes. We're pushing over 100. We've got uh, sheet metal flying down the street, uh, trees falling all around us. So. Okay, that was uh, Storm Chaser Chris Hall, who has given us a live view from Perry. Obviously, Chris and Brad both are having a hard time staying completely connected. They're in the middle of a catastrophic hurricane, uh, but the frames that we are seeing do look intense. Um, and uh, here's another update for you of Keaton, where once again, the flooding is taking place. And notice how the winds are still going parallel to the coast. At some point, they're going to start blowing more inland. And that's when all of this water is very quickly going to rush over into the communities and uh, flood these areas similar to what we've seen in Cedar Key and Steinachy, Florida, which by the way, right, uh, roof the water continues right to rise. Right in front of us right there on that, uh, looks like a, a, maybe an old apartment complex. Okay, Carly, you got to refresh um, uh, Brad's feed. He's up on the Radar Omega app. We, we probably just need to get a quick uh, reboot on it. But we've got uh, roofs flying off of houses uh, in front of Brad Arnold here. Um, and he is, his exact location, if you look, if you zoom in here, uh, you can see this is where he is, right in the middle of Perry. And um, it actually, it looks like his feed might be down. Uh, but we're hearing of significant damage uh, and the, the last couple of frames that we did see, uh, you can see the tree damage there and apparently a roof flew off right in front of him. Chris Hall is very close by um, and they're both reporting significant damage now as the strongest part of the storm is moving into Perry. Like Brad said, it's going to continue to get worse uh, and to, before it gets better. Uh, and then the next places that are going to see some of these really destructive winds are going to be Boyd. Shady Grove, uh, Dowling Park, and Hopewell. Uh, eventually, this is even going to make it up towards the I-10 corridor near Lee and Madison. So uh, prepare for uh, the worst if you're in those areas. Treat it as if it's a, a tornado and take shelter. All right. Yeah, another graphic uh, from the National Weather Service that's in, important to show here. This was put out a couple of days ago, um, and it's just, uh, you know, everything that was forecast is coming to true, coming true right in front of us here. Unprecedented event unfolding. Uh, we are seeing um, uh, flooding and a storm like we have never seen before here in the Big Bend of Florida um, in recorded history. Uh, we've never seen anything like this, and that's why we – encouraged so strongly for everybody in the area to evacuate because we didn't know how the areas would handle uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of hurricane that's coming up here because we just haven't seen it before. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like a very significant flooding has taken out a lot of structures in uh, places like Horseshoe Beach and Cedar Key. 
Um, uh, Fish Creek and Keaton Beach are next in line. I, I'm unfortunately expecting a very significant flooding situation there as well. And now we're getting significant damage to homes and businesses in Perry uh, as the storm is really kind of just ramping up there right now. And we do have a new Trees uh, falling tornado all around warning. The sheet metal is flying, and yeah, it's the sheet metal's flying 60, probably even 70 miles an hour down this street right now. Whoa, lightning! Okay, so that was um, Chris Hall. We still don't have his feed. Uh, we're still not seeing uh, exactly what's going on there. Hopefully, that'll come back soon. In the meantime, if my team can monitor Brad and Chris's Twitter feed, if they're posting videos or something, uh, throw that to me and I'll throw it up to try to illustrate what they're talking about. Uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, just an update uh, on the water level at Cedar Key. We are now up to 10.3 feet of water that's not supposed to be there. Okay. All right. The water is still rising out there. Um, so here is a tweet from Radar Omega uh, showing the uh, the destruction of that shed as it happened. Um, and this is from the Horseshoe Beach area earlier. Um, and uh, we've since lost this camera completely. Um, but uh, the, the shed lasted a, a quite some time before we lost it. I think we were trying to get Brad back. It, it, he's trying to load back up. Obviously, in the middle of a catastrophic hurricane, you, it, you can't keep sail signal. <laughs> Even Starlink satellite, you know, all that stuff is uh, uh, hard to come by uh, in, in situations like this. Uh, so we're waiting to get him back. Um, and, you know, there's the, the destruction of the shed. Um, and, you know, once again, this camera is no longer with us. But we have an update from our field crew up there in Lee, Florida. That Go ahead, Caleb. Hey, Ryan, if you actually take a look at the uh, Y'all Squad stream that we have coming in and look at our side camera that we have up, you can actually see there was actually a power flash that just happened on the line behind us. And we're seeing now a complete power outage, it appears, here in uh, just south of Madison. Um, but on top of that, I'm going to throw you up to Chandra because she has an update about the winds here. Go ahead, Chandra. Um, also, our welder is in the building with no flashlight and no phone. <laughs> so there's that. Um, but we just got an emergency alert over our phones for high winds, extreme wind warning in effect until um, or until 11:15. So we're going to move around um to avoid the winds wait for austin to come out here make sure he's coming out he's good <laughs> okay and he's got towels great news we need some towels listen i wasn't planning on taking a shower with the pressure washer today Ron. right so <laughs> yeah things are deteriorating up there and i'm glad you guys are, are are safe stay safe as the strongest part of the storm is still coming towards you and we'll talk to you again here soon First, let's go back to Brad very quickly here because I think we've got his feedback or we've we've got a little bit of his feedback. We got a frame in, I think. Uh, we can take down Chandra's uh, camera now um, as we wait for uh, more updates from Brad. Um, obviously, it's hard to keep service, but we're going to keep trying for that. Let, let me relay some of this other information to you while we wait to see more of this uh, situation unfold. Um, let's see. Uh, we have, yeah, we officially, I'm, I'm trying to look at chat here. There are a lot of questions being asked. We do officially have landfall as an extremely significant and deadly storm surge is happening from Cedar key all the way up to Steinhatchee. And it's going to continue to get worse uh, as the winds continue to come on shore. Um, Reed Tamer has got some incredible video on Twitter. I'm sharing right now of the flooding in uh, Cedar key. Uh, but I do think that uh, Horseshoe Beach is probably one of the areas that um, got the worst of the, the, the storm surge, at least from what I can tell right now. Obviously, we're still, uh, once we get done with the, uh, the extreme wind warnings and, you know, the majority of that stuff is done, um, we will start assessing the damage. Right now, it's still happening, so there's not a lot I can tell you about the extent of the damage. We've got a new extreme wind warning, and that's the one that's going to include our field crew up there, Chandra, Caleb, 
And all these guys are now officially under uh, an extreme wind warning. This includes Shady Grove, Lee, Madison, Hanson, and Pineta, or Pineta the com those communities. 15,000 people are in the path of what is essentially a tornado. You want to treat it as such and uh, take shelter immediately and um, just brace for impact as a uh, destructive storm. One like this area has, uh, has not seen. Uh, is coming right for you. And this is going to go right up to the Georgia border, which is really, really impressive. Um, you Not something that you see every day. Uh, the hurricane maintaining its cat status as a hurricane, a cat two or three, all the way into Georgia. We also do have a tornado warning right now in Georgia, and I want to take you to that really quickly to just make sure we're covering all of our bases. A tornado warning for Kinston Park and Windward Acres and Marshes and New Hope. Um, so this is what that looks like. The purple polygon there. Take shelter if you're in it. And that might even be issued for areas north of that near Darien in the near future. Keep that in mind. A uh, quick update from uh, Keaton, Florida, where the winds are just now starting to orient more inland. They're still pretty parallel to the coastline, but the waters are rising fast here. And uh, we're going to see a massive storm surge uh, flooding situation happen very soon. Uh, Carly, hopefully, is uh, working on getting us connected back with some storm chasers. Uh, for now, we're going to go back to the, um, uh, the radar view here as we can see exactly why we're having such a hard time uh, staying connected with Chris and Brad. And it's because the strongest part of the storm is over them right now. Um, and it is, uh, it is a, an extremely strong storm. Category three storm right on the verge of a four. Uh, probably arguably still a category four at the time of landfall. And here is a video of, um, uh, from Chris. Listen to that. Listen to the, uh, the sound. That was at 7.59 a.m. So that was still quite a... <laughs> that was a while ago. It's obviously gotten uh, more intense uh, since then. So thank you, Chris, for that. I'm retweeting that. Super huge shout out to Chris and Brad for giving us such an incredible view of the storm today as it makes landfall. Once again, the the purpose here is to relay hopefully life-saving information, but also just to kind of let people understand what's going on. Hopefully a lot of people left these areas and we don't want you to be in the dark, right? We don't want you to think, oh, what's happening? Um, we're, we're trying to show you exactly what's happening uh, so you don't have to be down there yourselves. Um, and this is uh, what we're trying to do here as Category 3 Idalia continues to come farther inland. Um, we're, we're getting a little bit more of an update from Brad now as the storm is probably starting to wind down a little bit in his specific location. Uh, but uh, that just means that now uh, some of the stronger winds are going to be moving towards Boyd, Shady Grove, and Hopewell in the very near future. So keep that in mind. Dean Hatchy. Sorry, guys. I, I know I'm mispronouncing a lot of these town names. Hopefully, you just get in the point um, because we're we're doing what we can here to just try to relay as much information as quickly as possible. Wow. Yeah, some of the storm surge flooding uh, imagery that we're seeing come in is just absolutely incredible. Yeah, and this is what the uh, the shed, what it looked like in its final moments right before the uh, the camera went out. Completely went to zero. Uh, the bank that we're at, I don't know. We're, uh, Chris is trying to send us an update, oh. but even just to send a voice memo over the internet, even that is what proving is hard that? in the, the storm. I think maybe the part of 
roof just collapsed. I don't know for sure. Um, the traffic lights are completely turned sideways. Um, yeah, so we're we're holding out here, but uh, things are very rapidly going down here. There goes more sheet metal. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but more of the roof coming off the bank now. I don't know what we're pushing. This is well over 100 miles an hour currently here. I think the sign says Jefferson Street here in Perry, uh, but yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. Um, obviously, things are continuing to go downhill uh, in Perry with uh, more than a 100 mile per hour winds. That same sort of, uh, you know, those conditions are moving through Boyd, Shady Grove, and Hopewell right now. And brace for impact up there in Madison and Lee as uh, the really strong winds are also going to be moving into that area very soon. <laughs> We're up to 161,000 people without power now. 161,000 people without power. And for updates here, this is from the Sarasota uh, Police Department. Roads along the Bayfront and downtown area are flooding now. Uh, we shut down the following areas, but are actively putting up more barricades uh, in areas that need it. So still lots of flooding going on across the more south central um, west Gulf Coast area of Florida. So uh, it's not just the, uh, you know, the Big Bend area that's seeing the major flooding right now. Uh, we're also seeing some pretty significant impacts all the way down towards Sarasota. Clearwater, Tampa, um, uh, Homosassa Springs is probably going to be getting in on some incredible uh, storm surge as well if they haven't already. And we have an update for from Riley. Um, Riley, if you could, uh, could you talk for just a couple of maybe like one minute while I go grab myself something to drink? I haven't had water in a second. Yeah, I can just talk about the effects of storm surge. So basically right now, um, I know we have our camera in Cedar Key. Uh, we saw the wind spike a few minutes ago there, and it looks like we're starting to see a downwards trend on the storm surge. So this is a good thing. Um, at the peak, we had exactly 10.48 feet of water that's not supposed to be there. Um, so hopefully what this means is other areas further north of that, like we can see in Keaton and Steinhatchee, uh, it means you're not out of the woods yet, but there is hopefully relief on the way as we are starting to see some of the surge go down. Unfortunately, uh, you can see on the Keaton camera, it's still coming in. There's not going to be any immediately immediate relief to storm surge there, and same goes for Steinhatchee. But as this storm does move more inland, uh, we're definitely going to start to see the storm surge drop. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Riley. Uh, for the update, um, some of these areas, the, the water is starting to go down, uh, which is very good news. Um, I would say, uh, just from looking at radar and trying to judge the orientation of the the strongest winds and, and how they're coming ashore, we're probably going to see the levels drop a little bit in this area and uh, maybe this area. But I do think that a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the areas in between, and especially right here where the eye went across, we still have a little bit of time for the waters to increase as those uh, winds orient themselves parallel or perpendicular uh, with the, um, uh, the the shoreline there. Eventually, and, it, and we're not too far away from everybody starting to see the, the waters recede, uh, but you know, we're still going to see some rise in some of these areas, especially like uh, Keaton, Florida there, which you can see now. And we've got, oh, we've got our Fish Creek camera back up. And I don't remember what this one looked like. Uh, I, hopefully we've got a screenshot of it somewhere, but I know it didn't have that much water in it. Uh, but so Fish Creek is definitely um, seeing significant storm surge right now as well.
Yeah, here's another uh, look at that before and after of the Horseshoe Beach camera. Oh yeah, which one? Which one of these was Fish Creek? I don't even remember. I think it was this one. I think so. This, this is now this. Oh, sorry. This is. Yeah, so quite the difference there. Unfortunately, guys, uh, we are in the middle of uh, what is going to be remembered as one of the uh, most uh, catastrophic and impactful hurricanes that this area has ever seen and hopefully will ever see uh, for quite some time. Um, uh, Whole communities are completely changed forever. Uh, we've probably lost countless houses and businesses and, you know, bridges and roads, and it's going to take years to recover uh, from this. Uh, unfortunately, we are in a situation where it's safe to say that, um, especially in the Keaton Beach, Fish Creek, uh, Jenna, Horseshoe Beach, down to Cedar Key area. That whole Pretty much the, the middle part of the Big Bend of Florida is uh, experiencing significant damage right now uh, due to storm surge. And it's hard to tell exactly what's, you know, what's the extent of the damage uh, from the winds up here near Perry. We, we will find that out sooner than later um, as our storm chasers get back online and uh, things start coming online. But I'm sure that that's going to be pretty uh, bad as well, as we can see that the uh, the strongest winds are kind of sitting over Perry right now for an extended period of time. Yeah, that raced on shore. No doubt about it. The the all of the cameras that you see with waves, it was mostly grass at, at one point. Okay, I'm I'm actually getting a call from Chris Hall. Hey Chris, how's it going? I guess the calls still go through. Service has completely went out here in Perry. Uh the bank that we're at, part of the roof has collapsed. Um, we're having gusts well over a hundred miles an hour. Uh, we're actually pushed way back further under the, uh, banks awning, uh, sheet metal after sheet metal flying down. I think this is Jefferson street, uh, every bit of 60, 70 plus miles an hour. Uh, this is, yeah, it's really rough out here right now, Ryan, but we have lost all service, uh, for streaming, but somehow I can still call. Okay. All right. Thank you for the update. And don't hesitate to call again. If you can't reach me on Zello, I've got my phone right, right next to me. So just call anytime yep, you have an Zello update. Zello is out too. So if you have anything, just call me. Uh, calls are working, but uh, nothing else is. So. Okay. Sounds good. Be careful. Thank you, Chris. All right. All right. So that's Chris Hall, unable to reach me through our traditional means. So he's calling. Um, and he's saying that the bank that they were uh, staying at, the roof has collapsed. Uh, widespread uh, damage in front of them. And once again, they are in uh, Perry, Florida. I haven't heard from Brad in a while. He's not, he's, he doesn't have enough service to stream, but I wonder if he can reach me on Zillow. Uh, Brad, just whenever you get a chance, I know it's rough out there. Uh, give us an update. What you got going on? Unbelievable. Uh, what's happening in Florida today? Uh, how long until it hits um, Georgia? Uh, the strongest part of the storm will start hitting southern Georgia probably in about an hour and a half or so. Yeah, I'd say that we're not going to hear from Brad for a bit. There's something uh, if you notice on Radar Omega if you're trying if you're tracking the storm chasers, the guys that are out here have service and they're able to stream, but everybody under this band, uh Brandon, Brett and Brad are all without service and Chris is in that same area. So, 
uh, the even like the Starlink uh, satellite dishes aren't able to capture a signal underneath that intense of a, a storm there. Um, Gover this morning, Governor Ron DeSantis and Keith uh, provided a briefing on Hurricane Adalia um, and uh, Florida SERT is standing by and ready to respond and provide recovery resources to those impacted uh, counties in the immediate aftermath of the storm. So the government agencies are obviously um, ready to go. Um, and then you're going to have a ton of like uh, volunteer uh, people in the area as well. Usually after something like this, so a lot of people like to show up and, and we'll try to do our best to relay to you guys, any, anybody that's watching or nearby that would ever want to help out in a situation like this, we're, we'll try to make it to where you, uh, you know, you know what you can do um, in a situation like this, because the last thing that a lot of these communities are going to need is just for like a bunch of people to show up without any sort of direction. So we're going to try to keep you updated on what to expect uh, as far as what's needed on a volunteer side. Oh, wow. Uh, Derek Smith there driving through Perry. So Derek Smith, uh, our storm chaser camera here, um, is in Perry, but he, it looks like he's inside of the eye wall now. So he's not in the part where the extreme winds are. And we've seen several trees down in the road in front of him. Um, and it looks like pretty significant tree damage, but I haven't really gotten a good handle on any structural damage. He's in a pretty remote area. My goodness. Oh, what? Oh, my goodness. Did he just hit that power line? <laughs> it looked like he just slammed right into it. Um, so, yeah, Derek is out there uh, assessing the damage now in parts of Perry, Florida. I'm not sure exactly what his location is, uh, but we will check in with him uh, periodically as the storm continues to move on. Yep, and once again, we are going to be monitoring this storm all the way through Georgia. We currently have 161,000 people without power in Florida. We're going to start seeing those kinds of numbers in Georgia as well. Um, you know, this storm is going to continue to be a hurricane all the way up towards Valdosta and Homerville and Waycross. So we're going to be with you guys all the way through the uh, afternoon, maybe even into the early. Well, actually, I think the, the farthest we can go is 4.50 p.m. It's currently 8.38, 1 a.m. on the East Coast. And we're going to be here with you all day assessing the damage uh, and also continuing to track the storm as it moves off to the north and east. Uh, I want to remind everybody uh, another way that uh, you can help is to contribute to our nonprofit, which we've already got people there ready to assist whenever um, this is all over. Uh, you can do that on the y'all squad org. The y'all squad org. Uh, so far today, we've raised nine thousand. We're getting ready to go over the ten thousand dollar mark, which is definitely going to help. But I think you know we could probably use a whole lot more than that. We've came together before and raised uh, over a hundred thousand dollars for tornado victims. So once again, if you want to uh, see us help uh, people down here in in the affected regions uh, with um, any amount that you can, y'all squad org tax deductible donation. Um, it'll help us out a lot. Okay, back to the matter at hand. We still have significant flooding going on in Steenhatchee, Florida. Uh, the water level there is, I think, continuing to rise. Uh, that's definitely one of the areas where it, it's not going down just yet. And Cedar Key, however, uh, I believe it is going down a little bit. Uh, but still, the pier, the, the boat dock, everything that was here uh, is now gone. Um, and then we're still seeing the water rise in Keaton, Florida. Uh, so, you know, it'll be interesting to see how quickly the water goes down. I don't know if it'll be quite as fast as it came up, uh, but we'll continue to monitor these areas as the storm goes on. And if you uh, are looking at uh, the Radar Omega map, um, it looks like these little things, you have to turn it on in the sidebar if you've got the correct um, 
uh, you know, subscription level, uh, the Project Mesovort, you turn that on, and then you can see Fish Creek. Um, you can see Keaton Beach. If I can click on it. Uh, I believe that, yeah, Steen Hatch is still online. Horseshoe Beach is obviously gone. Cedar Keys online. So all these places were uh, wonderful, wonderful, uh, you know, spots to put these cameras and super surprised that they are still working. Starting to see some more uh, significant damage from Derek Smith. Wow. He just had to crawl around a, a tree there. Cedar Key is holding steady at 10.5, 10 and a half feet of water inundation. My goodness, guys. Look at this. Another before and after of Horseshoe Beach from Hurricane Adalia. Um, before and after. Massive. I mean, that's got to be 15 feet at least, right? That could be even higher than that. I don't know how tall those trees are, but those don't look like small trees. Holy smokes. Yeah, I'm retweeting that. If you guys want to see it at Ryan Hall, y'all, that's where I'm tweeting everything. Uh, and if you have anything you want to tag me in or uh, send me yourself, that's the best way to do it. Highest uh, wind locations. Yeah, so right now the highest winds happening in Perry, Roach, Boyd, and Shady Grove and Hopewell. Um, we're going to see that come uh, up towards Lee and Madison and Greenville and Sermons and uh, Hopewell and Dennett next. Uh, and we've actually got uh, Y'all Force One, our, uh, our Y'all Squad team, who's ready to... Uh, deploy those resources that we've been able to uh, gather in Lee, Florida, and we're going to see uh, the impacts and, and the severity of the storm through them as soon as that gets there. It looks like some of the strongest winds, so the, the, the stuff that went through Perry, for example, is probably going to go a little bit to the west of Lee. Um, Greenville and Madison look like they might get the brunt of the storm, but Lee, uh, all the way up to Blue Springs and Cherry Lake, are going to see very significant damage uh, from these winds as they come through. And uh, here's Derek Smith once again uh, looking at some of the damage near Perry, Florida, as the you know, Perry is kind of split down the middle. If you're in the northern side of Perry, Florida right now, you can't leave your, your house. <laughs> you, 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 it would be dangerous to walk outside even for a second. Um, you, you know, the, a huge hurricane is happening. But if you're on the southern side of Perry, it looks like this, uh, what we see through Derek's um, feed, uh, or the eastern side of Perry, I should say. Uh, and that's because uh, literally the town is split like this. That's where the... Um, the brunt of the winds are happening. So over here, it's pretty clear. Over here, it's a, a catastrophic storm. You can see uh, a lot of the damn. I don't know what he's driving, but it's going over this debris like <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> And uh, we're really starting to see the winds pick up now in Lee. This is Y'all Force One. Um, we got Chandra, uh, Austin, uh, Caleb, and all these guys in the, the vehicle here as the strong winds are starting to uh, approach the vehicle now. Uh, and I'm sure we'll, we will be hearing from them soon as the winds start to pick up. Wow. And they're, they're pretty far inland, too, that we purposefully uh, put them in the Madison and Lee location to keep them away from 
the you know the the very strongest portions of the storm but even this far inland we are going to see uh, dam very damaging winds uh, from this storm and even beyond Madison and Lee Cherry Lake Belleville all the way up to Valdosta we can expect uh, severe winds and we've got an update from y'all force one I think let me get them pulled up here and uh, can you hear me guys yep we can hear you can you hear us yeah go ahead all right, I just wanted to give you a quick update because I saw you were looking at our camera there of just what's going on within the last probably five or 10 minutes. Uh, we've had a significant uptick in the wind here. We're definitely, according to Radar Omega, sustaining winds around 70 mile an hour right now and wouldn't be surprised to see gusts upwards of 90. Um, there's been several points that we've experienced where it's completely like a whiteout condition from the rain. Um, so far, no real debris or anything has been flying around here. Uh, it seems like all the trees are pretty mature and healthy, so they're not, like, breaking apart, and the structure around us are pretty good. Um, but we will definitely keep you guys updated if we see any kind of damage, specifically in our area, or if we hear anything else from uh, surrounding areas. All right, sounds good. Um, looking at velocities on radar, it looks like the strongest winds are still probably about 10 to 15 miles to your south and west. So over the next uh, 30 to 45 minutes, you're, you're going to see that gradually uh, increase and in probably uh, 15 to 30 minutes from now as when you'll, uh, if there's going to be any damage, it's when you'll start seeing stuff fly around and stuff. So uh, keep us updated. Uh, we're interested in, in what's going on there because everybody that lives along I-10 uh, and north of that is going to want to see what they can expect next uh, so we're going to be, be checking in periodically with uh, our folks in Y'all Force One, uh, and we're going to continue to relay all the information for uh, everybody that's uh, ahead of this storm, whether you're currently experiencing damaging winds with, once again, hopefully everybody over here for the most part is evacuated. But if you're not, we're going to keep you updated on what's going on there, and then we're going to keep right with this thing all the way through Georgia, okay? I wonder if um, it shouldn't be long now before we get Brad Arnold's feed back and Chris's back. The, they should be pretty close to getting out of the worst of the storm. But, man, I don't know. <laughs> the, they actually are probably going to get hit by the backside as well as that comes through, Perry. This part of Florida right here um, is likely going to be the most damaged, uh, in my opinion. Uh, go ahead, uh, Andy. Yeah, Ryan. Amazingly enough, the the Perry Foley Airport right there has actually stayed online uh, for this entire Iowa passage, and for 40 minutes now has recorded uh, wind speeds above hurricane force in the gusts that were recorded in each 20 minute increment from that airport. So it's still going. We saw an 85 mile an hour uh, gust as the peak so far to be updated uh, from the climatological report at the end of the day. We'll see what the max wind speed was recorded there. But um, surprisingly, it's it's still going uh, even through all of those conditions. So I figured I'd update you on the observations in place. Okay, thank you very much, guys. That's meteorologist Andy Hill. We're going to be hearing from him uh, throughout the the morning as well as we continue to get updates from everybody. Also, I'm hearing that we are up to 201,000 people without power now, and uh, we've got 5,500 National Guard. Uh, activated in Florida officially. 5,500 National Guard uh, activated in Florida to um, assist with what will likely become a very complex, long, tr and troubling uh, cleanup process, especially after what we've seen so far of just of the peak of the action, like seeing the waves and seeing the debris float by. That's one thing. Uh, seeing the aftermath is probably going to be pretty shocking for the people, uh, you know, pr for anybody, but especially for the people uh, who have lived in these areas for such a long time. Uh, Tampa, Tampa Bay uh, will see the largest surge levels uh, with high tide this afternoon. Uh, and that's coming from NWS uh, Tampa Bay. So the surge is going to continue to rise uh, in and around Tampa, uh, despite the fact that the storm is going to be, you know, moving farther inland. And that's going to happen uh, because the, the winds are continuing to run parallel with the coastline and we're getting that increase in high tide. OK, um, Chris is calling me back. How's it going, Chris? 
Hey, bud, uh, it's just now starting to clear up just a little bit. Still getting pretty hefty rain. Uh, just letting you know that the store in front of us, T-Mobile and the Dollar Tree, the windows are completely blown out of them. Uh, looks like the roof may have partially collapsed on the T-Mobile as well. Uh, we're still not moving from where we're at just yet because we still have sheet metal flying. But the T-Mobile in front of us and the Dollar Tree's windows have been completely blown out by this. Okay. Wow. Um, yeah. Just keep us updated, and uh, we're continuously uh, refreshing your feed. It looks like something's happening where it's about five to ten minutes after the clearing happens, every, all the storm chasers are getting their storm uh, their feeds back and their service. So uh, just keep us updated. If you got to call me, that's fine. If uh, and I'll also keep trying to reach out on Zello as well. Okay. All right, yeah, nothing's working still. We're trying to get uh, plan B. Uh, but we have a power pole uh, that's leaning in front of us, so I don't know if we'll be able to get out of here this way or not because I believe that's about to fall. Uh, but, yeah, there's significant damage, Ryan. All right, Chris, thank you. Be careful. You're welcome. All right. All right, so that's Chris, and I don't know how well the audio is coming over the microphone from the uh, speaker on the, uh, the, the, the phone. Uh, but he's saying that there's significant damage uh, where he's stationed near a T-Mobile in Perry, where he thinks the uh, the roof has partially collapsed on that building, and uh, all the doors and windows are completely busted out, uh, and there's a power pole getting ready to fall in front of him. So uh, we're going to go to Andy now. What do you got for us, Andy? Yeah, Ryan, actually, if you haven't taken a peek at the velocities from the Tallahassee radar for a while, you can see some really interesting stuff in there, including what might be actual um, possible spin-up tornadoes in parts of the eye wall here, uh, which is pretty rare, but I have already seen video evidence of a, a couple of uh, spin-up tornadoes passing by at rapid speeds uh, from uh, several storm chasers in the area. So you can see the huge amount of extreme winds that are moving into the Madison County area. Madison's going to get hit head on by the some of the highest winds with the heaviest rainfall that are dragging those winds down to the surface. And then it is not impossible, unless this data is garbled, that we could see uh, possible spin-up tornadoes right there. That might have contributed Contributed to some of the damage seen in the uh, town of Perry. Um, it is possible that we've had a mixture of damaging wind and uh, tornadic damage. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, meteorologist Andy Hill drawing our attention to a very interesting uh, situation here on the velocities. This once again shows us the, uh, the wind speed and direction. Uh, above the ground uh, and relative to the radar site here, the blues and the green show stuff going uh, uh, towards the radar, the reds show stuff going away, so you can see that um, uh, the, the, the winds are pretty much all blowing in this direction, but we do have what looks like a little bit of rotation here, which could be associated with a spin-up tornado inside the eye wall, which, like Andy said, would be rare, uh, but not unheard of, and definitely not um, surprising in such a, a powerful situation, and especially with some of the reports that we're hearing out of Perry of the significant damage. So um, we're going to continue to see this unfold, uh, and uh, you know things are getting pretty wild out there in front of uh, Y'all Force One as well. We're going to uh, look at that feed uh, again. This is uh, near Lee, uh, Florida. So if I come back to radar real quick, I want to show you Perry just went through this part of the storm. This is where the strongest winds were. And now that's all moving up into places like Greenville and Madison. So Lee, which is where our Y'all Force One crew is, uh, they're just going to get the back end of this. So whatever this looks like as it moves through Lee, which we'll see through the, the live feed there, um, it's probably going to be even worse than that as it gets into Greenville and Madison. So just keep that in mind. That's why it's important that we show this stuff. If we've got people up here, you know a little bit of you know what you can expect by seeing what's happening downstream. Uh, looks like we got another one of our cameras back online. Uh, oh wow, yeah. So this is also showing quite a bit of a difference. Um, Deckel Beach. Ooh, I wonder if the water is going to come up any more there. So this is a unique situation where this is kind of on the northern side of the storm, but the winds are just now starting to blow towards the coast. I don't know if we'll see as much of a coastal flooding situation here, but we're going to monitor this just in case. That on the left side of your screen, um, that was a road. You know, none of this was underwater, you know, just a few hours ago, but we're seeing the water rise. 
And we're going to keep an eye on that uh, because we know that things have gotten really bad south of here um, and it could happen here as well. That is not smart. <laughs> the Amazon Prime truck there is driving perpendicular to the wind. Uh, good gusts could knock that son of a gun right over. Um, but uh, I think we're still, the winds are low enough now uh, in Lee for, for that to be okay. But I think the things are going to deteriorate pretty quickly here as the stronger bands move up into their location. Uh, once again, we got the whole y'all squad, well, most of the y'all squad crew in the vehicle there uh, waiting just in case uh, they're needed. And it looks like they're going to be at least to some extent. Looking at some more of the damage. Uh, coming in uh, in Perry, Florida. Uh, and this is all wind damage. So most of the significant damage that you're going to see when this is all said and done, uh, the, you know, communities and, you know, w things that are like really um, changed forever is going to come from that storm surge. But even just the winds up here in places like Perry uh, have caused significant damage, as you can see. And uh, this isn't even the part of Perry that took the hardest Hit. Like this isn't the hardest hit part of Perry. This guy is in southeastern Perry, a little bit closer to Finn Holloway and Athena. So the damage on the northwestern side, closer to where Brad Arnold is, whenever we get his feedback, is probably going to be even more significant than what we see here. Uh, despite low tide uh, at this lit river gauge along the Suwannee River, we're starting to see a rapid increase in water levels as life-threatening storm surge is now moving up the Suwannee River. This is coming from NWS Tallahassee. So the storm surge is coming up the river now, and even way back here, uh, we're starting to see life-threatening storm surge, um, and it's coming up fast. It's in the moderate stage, could make it all the way up to major. So be prepared for that. All of these inlets, as the storm moves in and the winds start orienting in, in different ways across different waterways, uh, you're, we're going to see several areas very quickly rise that aren't currently elevated in their water levels as much as the direct coastal areas anyway. Suwalni? Is that, is that how you say it? Suwalni? Uh, the risk for isolated and brief tornadoes continues in uh, east, northeast Florida and southeast Georgia. We just got an update from the Storm Prediction Center on that. A little bit of a mesoscale uh, discussion there. Uh, this place, this area is still under a tornado watch. Uh, currently, there are no tornado warnings, though, uh, which is a different story than what we had earlier and probably different than what we will experience uh, going forward as more of these storms come ashore. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? There have been eight. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, this is Kirk Mellish. There have been eight major category uh, three or higher land strikes on the U.S. in the past seven years, and they've all been here in the Gulf. That's crazy. The Gulf. This has been the uh, an incredible stretch of activity for the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, wow. Uh, so now um, our, our storm chaser over here near Perry, Florida, Derek Smith, is getting in on uh, some of that flooding. This is, And this is pretty far inland. He's not, once again, he's not in downtown Perry, uh, but this is probably coming over the road and into these communities from one of these waterways uh, that go down to the Gulf of Mexico because he's not right on the coast technically uh, where he is right now. Uh, but you see the water is over the road, and it's surrounding some homes, uh, what we saw earlier. Swanee? Swanee?
Yeah, we still don't have a feed from Brad. Uh, we're we're probably going to get that back soon. Uh, or Chris, we don't have Brad or Chris right now. They're still in the uh, the thick of the storm there. Let's see. Yeah, the semi the semicircle eye wall, which is the big red blob you see there uh, on the, your screen, is going to continue to go to the north, northeast, and eventually make it up towards Valdosta. I know I've got a lot of people watching from that area, so I keep just know that we're going to be sticking with you as it, uh, as it approaches. It's just not quite to you yet. Uh, and the lights are orange, so I guess we've got an update from y'all Force One. Go ahead, guys. Hey, Ryan. Right now. Um can't hear. I'm actually going to pull our webcam down, but because we don't have, have signal off of our streaming computer, but it is literally blowing. So oh, wow. Trucks around in this parking lot beside us. Okay, wow. So that truck was pointing perfectly straight earlier. It is now blown into the semi truck beside uh, and has like shoved it like 30 feet across the parking lot. Wow. Okay. So uh, obviously some of the similar uh, problems are happening up here with the the cell service, but we can see uh, through uh, the the little <laughs> frames that we're getting right now that things are definitely intensifying there uh, in Lee, Florida. So uh, what we're seeing here, and, and uh, Caleb's telling us that this is moving around some of the semi trucks that I wouldn't be surprised if by the time this is all said and done, uh, some of those get flipped over. Um, and that those kind of conditions are what's moving towards Madison and Greenville as well. All these areas along Interstate 10 uh, need to be taking shelter as if a tornado is coming. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, reach out to me if you've got another update. Um, uh, really appreciate it. Um, uh, you can mute now. I wonder if I can do it. Or mute it. There we go. Can you mute us though? Okay, I muted them. I, I'll probably have to unmute them so that they can talk to me again. But if they don't have audio next time we try to talk to them, just remind me that I muted them. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, a little bit of an, uh, a refresher for anybody that uh, is just now tuning in. We have um, official landfall. It happened about an hour ago now uh, near Keaton Beach, Florida. Uh, we have a, a strong, uh, still a very strong uh, hurricane ongoing in Florida causing damage between Perry and Madison. And we have continued uh, catastrophic storm surge happening along the Big Bend of Florida and significant storm surge happening as far south as Tampa. And now, uh, one of the things that we're going to start shifting our focus to, it's not happening yet, but eventually we are going to start focusing a little bit more on the tornado threat. Um, in fact, the, uh, the new Wednesday tornado probabilities uh, just came out, uh, and there is a 10% uh, probability um, now along the, uh, the coast, I believe. Um, I'm looking at this right. Yep, 10% probability of uh, tornadoes from southeast Georgia up through um, South Carolina and North Carolina. Um, and that's gonna come along with an enhanced risk of severe weather. So tornado threat is gonna go up exponentially uh, the farther we go into the day. I don't think we're on the verge of seeing these areas necessarily uh, have problems with tornadoes in the, in the very near future. This is something that's gonna ha happen a little bit later. But from now until this thing is back out to sea, in the front right quadrant of the storm, let me show you uh, what I'm talking about. Look at the storm, split it into four sections. Uh, over here, uh, there's going to be potentially uh, tornadic activity even farther south than that um, all the way through this storm. And this storm is going to go this way. So everybody underneath that is going to have the possibility of seeing tornadoes as the storm continues. And it could, you know, the peninsula of Florida could continue to have problems for quite some time, but we're really going to be focused at some point to the areas closer to um, uh, the actual uh, rotation there, uh, the central low, low pressure. So let me come back to the multi-view. I think we lost the suburban. No, we didn't. Let me put it back up there. And um, I'm going to go back to 
looking for updates here. I really appreciate y'all for keeping me tagged on this stuff. I, I wouldn't be able to find it if you didn't do that. Uh, here's another update from Radar Omega showing us the difference, the before and after of Keaton Beach. Uh, that was the top one's 8 p.m. Tuesday and the bottom one's 8 a.m. Wednesday. So you can see uh, just how much the water has risen there. And we've got another update from Chris. So this is still happening in his location. So this part of Perry has seen extended winds. Like the, the part of Perry that Chris and uh, Brad are in has not received a break really uh, from the winds. So I'd say the damage out there is going to be pretty bad. And as soon as they're able to, I'm sure they'll they'll take us around and show us what that looks like. And this is some of the damage over near Perry as well. Uh, will v Valdosta see hurricane force winds? It's quite possible that uh, Valdosta sees, um, you know, strong hurricane force winds, maybe close to Cat 2. Uh, Dasher, Georgia, DuPont, Blanton, Withers, Halo, uh, Homerville, uh, Sermons, all these places, even close to Lakeland. You guys all are in the path of receiving some pretty significant impacts from Hurricane Adalia as it slowly weakens, but it's not in a hurry to get back down to uh, tropical storm status. Let me tell you that much. You can see uh, some pretty significant damage there from uh, uh, Storm Chaser Derek Smith in Perry, Florida. Reed Timmer also is continuing to have incredible footage uh, through his Twitter. I'm retweeting all that stuff. And then I believe this is an update from the HCSO Sheriff. Uh, this is in the river, the Highway 41 area in Riverview. Uh, for your safety, please avoid this area. So there are people uh, trapped uh, and needing rescue in floodwaters, which is unfortunate because we knew this one was coming, guys. <laughs> All right, um, we've got an update from Y'all Force One. Go ahead, guys. Oh yeah, I've got to unmute them. I forgot. Oh, does he have us muted? I got you now. Go ahead. All right. So just within the last couple of seconds here, like maybe 30 seconds or so, we have had several semis completely roll over in the parking lot. Uh, we are getting absolutely blasted right now. Um, I'm going to throw up the full review so you guys can see what's going on all around us here if you want to pull that up. But, um, yeah, we have a semi behind us that just flipped. That Amazon Prime truck that you were actually talking about earlier is also now on its side directly in front of us. I um, mean, you can see it's blinkers on the front camera. But I would say that we're currently in the worst part of the winds that we're going to specifically experience here. Um, but, yeah, it is absolutely not a good situation for these semi-drivers. I imagine there's going to be multiple more trucks that may go over within the next couple of minutes and probably within the surrounding area. Can we see me? Okay. I'll throw you up to Chandra. Okay, I've got Chandra you, Chandra. Chandra should be up now. Come on. Can you hear me? I can, yeah. Ryan, can you hear me? Yes, I can. can I'm yeah. not having a good time, Ryan. <laughs> I'm just wanting to do it with. Okay? Well, I'm just wanting to do it with. It's almost over okay. where you are, and okay. uh, you're seeing the worst of what you'll see. Uh, Caleb, if you don't care to put okay. put it What's full uh, on the it's the view with over. the semi-trucks. Lord have mercy, I'm almost over, Ryan. <laughs> that one or probably that one? That's the one you want. 
Uh, yeah, well, it hasn't changed on my end yet. We're a little bit lagged behind. Uh, but the one okay, where you can yeah, see yeah. most of the trucks, uh, yeah, we'll keep it on there. That. That's the one that we yeah. originally saw where we saw that semi truck actually start hopping across the parking lot. And since then, we've seen several trucks around us uh, actually tip over. So, okay, all right. Um, thanks, guys. Uh, hang in there. Uh, the the strongest winds, like you said, are happening now, and you're going to get a, a little bit of a break here soon. Um, and then a lot of what you're seeing now is going to move up towards Madison and Blue Springs. So keep us updated um, and we'll keep checking back in with you periodically. Okay. All right. So guys, that's our uh, y'all squad crew out there. The, these guys, once again, not, not news reporters, not uh, you know, Caleb is a storm chaser. Caleb is a seasoned storm chaser, but Chandra and, and the rest of those guys, they're just good hearted people who love helping people. And, Mean old Ryan has sent them out into a hurricane <laughs> just so they could be in a better spot to, to, to help if needed. Um, but they're, they're all right. They're going to be fine. Um, and the, 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 they're getting ready to get a break in the winds there. Uh, but what they are experiencing right now is, um, uh, you know, exactly what you're about to experience in Madison. I know we got a lot of people watching from Madison. Uh, and that's going to move up to Cherry Lake, West Lake, Jennings, and Belleville. Um, now, also, what they're seeing, they, you know, they saw some very strong winds, obviously. Um, but what they're seeing is much less than what you're about to see in Greenville. Okay, so Greenville, I think you guys are going to see even stronger winds. And the area between Madison and Greenville, I-10 up through Dennett and Cherry Lake, may see even stronger winds than that. Um, so, Keep that in mind as we continue to watch the storm expand and, uh, you know, it's weakening slowly but surely, but it's still strong enough to cause very uh, significant problems. We also have a flash flood warning uh, for everybody in the green polygon here. This is obviously dropping a very significant amount of rain in a short period of time. And this is going to grow and expand as it goes up into Georgia as well. And I would just about bet that we're going to see some uh, flash flood warnings, maybe even some flash flood emergencies uh, from this as the storm slowly moves up towards Valdosta uh, and then the area between Tifton and Waycross. We do have a moderate risk of um, uh, flash flooding. Uh, so, and that's exactly why. Okay, we've got Brad back. Wow. Brad has been through it. We'll, we don't have him back. We, we have one frame from him here. But you can tell that uh, whatever we missed was pretty intense there for Brad. Also, Derek Smith has gotten some uh, really incredible uh, damage there as well near Perry. And then, of course, uh, our, our squad, our y'all squad crew is still experiencing uh, very strong winds. And that truck, that truck right there, the one that's tilted a little bit sideways, did just about fall tip over once again. So these guys are all in their trucks, I bet. They're, I think they all parked close to each other to try to like use each other to stop them all from toppling over, which is, I guess is pretty smart. But man, I, I don't know how you end up. I, I know we got a lot of truckers watching. How do, you, how do you end up as a trucker in a hurricane? Like this, this is well forecasted. Is like, are these companies sending you guys out on routes despite it being a hurricane or were you surprised or what? I don't know how this works, but it's pretty unfortunate. Uh, hopefully everybody's okay. <laughs> We do have a tornado warning that I want to draw your attention to. Like I said earlier, even down into the uh, peninsula of Florida, we're still going to have uh, problems with uh, tornadoes. And um, like clockwork, we, we see another tornado warning from a similar like band from what Andy was talking about earlier. Uh, down here near San Antonio and Dade City, this warning includes Zephyrus, Zephyr Hills, Lumberton, and Ellersile. Um, or else Ellers Lyle. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but it's uh, right to the north of Crystal Springs. Um, and there is a pretty significant amount of rotation here. We could have a tornado getting ready to cross Highway uh, 31 in Zephyr Hills, and then it's going to move over towards Lumberton and Vitus. You guys need to take shelter now. That's Pasco County, Florida. We're, we're going to see a lot more of those tornado warnings throughout the day. Uh, go ahead, Andy. 
Yeah, Ryan, I actually wanted to expand upon that uh, that notion. The reason why, or one of the reasons why, a significant reason why that 10% uh, and the enhanced risk or three out of five from the Storm Prediction Center was added for the tornado threat, uh, especially from the Georgia coast into South Carolina and up through North Carolina, is actually because this time, instead of all of the um, tornado-worn supercells that we've been seeing traveling just up land, straight up the Florida Peninsula, like they did this morning uh, and early in the morning. Now they're going to travel from ocean into land surface. And that means that there's going to be a change in medium that they're over and thus a change in how much friction is imparted on the storm. When it passes from the ocean to land, there's more friction. And that means that the air is going to kind of smash together a little bit more, more convergence. And that's going to lead to a higher uh, concentration of uh, tornadic instances, I think. Uh, so I think we'll see a lot more tornado warnings later today once those outer bands reach those areas because of that in particular, and also because it does look like the environment is going to destabilize a little bit more in the uh, coastal Carolina vicinity compared to what we saw overnight. Okay, uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Andy, for that. Um, and I think we're going to see at some point here pretty soon uh, some sort of press conference with the governor of, of Florida. If somebody could just remind me or throw me a link to that whenever that happens, um, we we will show that live just to see what it is they've gotten to say. Also, if there's any sort of live streams that comes out of the National Hurricane Center, I know they've been doing that. Throw that to me as well, um, uh, just so we can throw out as much uh, information as possible. Uh, so we're going to continue to watch the the tornado situation uh, where we've got Andy uh, on our side uh, watching multiple different aspects of this storm. We've got the Y'all Squad crew out there assessing uh, what's going on. We've got our storm chasers still, uh, you know, chasing the storm. Uh, and we've got Radar Omega, which is going to allow us to track the strongest part of the storm all the way up into Georgia. Uh, and then uh, eventually, uh, I don't know if we'll still be live by the time this makes it to South Carolina, but this is going to go to South Carolina. It's going to ride the coast between Savannah and um, Charleston and then go out to sea near Myrtle Beach. Um, so that's what we're dealing with here. We've got a category um, uh, two hurricane now um, at the 9 a.m. update, 110 mile per hour wind still. Uh, getting ready to the, the center of circulation is going to go right over Lee, Florida, where our y'all squad crew is. OK, um, so at some point they're going to get a break here. They're still getting some crazy winds right now. Um, and I, we haven't seen we, we've we've got one semi truck tipped over completely. You can see that in front of them. Uh, but the ones that have gathered up beside them here are are doing OK. And I think that was a oh, OK, we've got two semi trucks flipped over, actually. Um, so that's what we're looking at there um, with the 360 view around Y'all Force One. We've also got a couple of new frames uh, from Brad Arnold. Uh, as soon as he's able to talk to us, I'm sure he'll reach out. But you can see that we've got significant damage where Brad is um, and where Derek Smith is. But things are going to start calming down, I think, uh, in Perry and the coastal areas back here very soon. Um, and the cleanup will begin, I'm sure. But for now, things are still pretty wild, and they're about to get even more wild uh, if you are in Georgia. So we're officially about to see the strongest winds move into Georgia. Things are going to start getting pretty hairy in Valdosta as soon as a couple minutes from now, but it will gradually decrease. Uh, the, the, the conditions will deteriorate over the next couple of hours until you're eventually seeing uh, up to 100 mile per hour winds uh, in that area. Uh, and then beyond that, we're looking at Homerville and Waycross. So you guys are all next in line uh, and we're going to be with you here the whole time. Really concerned about flash flooding, guys. I, I think that um, that's going to be one of our big focuses too. Let me see how much rain we've got here. Um, wow. Radar estimates up to three inches per hour in the heaviest rain bands and the storm's moving pretty slow so storm total precipitation we've already seen five to six inches of rain just to the west of perry uh, just to the north here near greenville we've seen close to seven inches of rain north of madison we've seen close to seven inches of rain uh, so lots of flooding is going to be happening here because the the rain's not done uh, that we could see double those numbers especially up here to between greenville and madison 
uh, which means that we could see very, very serious life-threatening flooding all along Highway 90 here between Greenville and Madison, maybe up towards Cherry Lake as well. And I'm really concerned about Valdosta receiving that kind of rain as well. Um, we're go probably going to see some very significant flooding up that way. So make sure you're prepared for that. Yep, it's a Category 2 now, guys. It's a Category 2 still. And it's probably going to be a Category 2 all the, all the way into Georgia, which is nuts. So, yeah, the water is still hovering at around 10 and a half feet at Cedar Key. So what's probably happening at a lot of these places is, um, so the storm's calming down a lot. Uh, the storm surge traditionally would be going down a bit at this stage, but the increase in the tidal forces, you know, high tides approaching is probably maintaining those water levels. And if that happens for, uh, you know, another hour or so, that just kind of, compounds the amount of damage that's being done. It's not just the force of the water. All these homes and businesses and stuff that are currently taking on water, the amount of time that the water is in those places also matters. The longer everything is submerged, the harder it is going to be to repair the structures and any sort of property that's being damaged, uh, including roads, which are likely being washed out and stuff like that. So unfortunately, it looks like a worst case scenario right along the coast between Cedar Key and Keaton. And we got another update from uh, Riley. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. I was just going to continue off what you're saying about storm surge. Um, so obviously right now we have like upwards of 10 feet of water in these areas. Well, that water, it's not going to stay there and it's going to go out. And whenever it goes out, it's going to go out with force. So any of that debris or pieces of houses or anything that's in that, that's all going to get swept out to sea. And that's a relatively strong force. Like that's a lot of water moving. So that's going to do even more damage and it's going to sweep everything in that area out to sea. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, um, Riley, for that update. It's important to, to remember those kinds of things. It's not done uh, just yet for our coastal areas. It's, it's about to be, but, you know, it could go out with a bang here as all, all this water does. It has to go back to where it's naturally supposed to be. Um, and just to kind of update everybody, uh, we are in the middle of a catastrophic storm. Uh, the, the landfall of Hurricane Adalia happened moments ago near uh, Keaton uh, Beach in the Big Bend of Florida. We have huge wind and surge impacts expected uh, even farther uh, down the road. So near Savannah, Georgia and Charleston, we could see um, pretty significant storm surge as these um, uh, as the winds continue to move farther east. Uh, we've got another update from Y'all Force One. Go ahead, Caleb. Hey, I just wanted to give you a quick update. I know some people have been talking about uh, Valdosta, Georgia, uh, and we're actually just now starting to see some damage reports come in from there. There's actually multiple damage reports that are chaser confirmed, um, both via radar hey, Ryan, scope and radar um, and finally Twitter, service again. Uh, that uh, there's trees down on power lines, lines several trees and I guess the towers uh, towards the highway there. So there's definitely strong winds in the area. So for those of you guys that are in Valdosta, that is still coming your way. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Caleb. We are going to continue to check in with you guys, and we're currently getting uh, an update from Brad as well. So we're going to let that. He's gonna. He's currently transmitting it. I'm gonna wait until it's finished. I'm gonna replay it. So let's go ahead and do that now. After I unmute him, live producing, guys. We do have a pretty large team that helps me now, but a lot of this I'm just sitting here doing with my mouse and keyboard. Hey, Ryan, it's Brad. Um, finally have service again. Uh, lost it for quite a while. I've got AT&T and I guess the towers uh, shut off. Um, so just want to let you know I'm okay. I'm out looking for damage right now. It was a wild, wild storm. Uh, the back end could be interesting, uh, but uh, just out in the middle of the eye right now. Trying to get a little bit of... Uh, Oh, it cut off there. Interesting, uh, but issues as well. Full hurricane uh, stuff and, and a lot of structural issues. Uh, see, but see how the damage looks, but it's a lot of trees down, a lot of power lines down. Typical hurricane uh, stuff and, and a lot of structural issues as well. Okay. Thank you, Brad. Uh, very happy to hear that you're okay. And um, yeah, just keep uh, give, sending us updates as things happen, and we will uh, keep, keep you up. Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, it's uh, it's been a long morning, um, and uh, I know that you lost service, but we saw a lot, uh, probably more than what you think. It came through one frame at a time, but uh, we definitely saw how intense it was uh, at moments there. So uh, stay safe and keep us updated. All right, so uh, that is um, uh, Brad Arnold. We finally got him back. He's okay. I know a lot of people were concerned about him because we weren't hearing from him. Uh, but uh, once again, the tornado sniffer, the hurricane man, whatever you want to call him, um, you know, he's, he's going to be fine. This is what Brad Arnold does. This is what he was born to do. And, um, uh, you know, now we're going to see him at kind of uh, assess the damage. Uh, and uh, Caleb was talking about Valdosta, Valdosta here in Georgia. Uh, some of the strong winds are moving into that area now. It's important to understand that they are going to get much stronger than what they are right now, um, even though we are already seeing reports. Um, perf oh, okay. All right, so, uh, yeah. We, I forgot to turn these reports on. I can I can look at these um, here in a minute, but uh, we are already seeing uh, you know uh, wind gusts of around sixty to seventy miles per hour in this area, and things are going to get much worse as time goes on. But I really want to emphasize as well that the main threat uh, with this big blob is obviously going to be the winds, but I'm really concerned about the rain as well. It always rain is less fun, right? People are less worried about rain. It's like, oh, shut up. Yeah, we get it. It could flood. But almost always in situations like this, the number one killer ends up being flash flooding, you know, uh, because people, they turn it off. They, they tune it out. Okay, the hurricane's over. Winds are below 150. Okay, well, I'm just going to turn on the baseball game. Next thing you know, you know, people are not uh, paying attention and we have people needing water rescues and stuff. This is still going to be a huge deal uh, between Madison and Valdosta. First of all, in terms of wind damage, but also rain, okay? Uh, eight inches of rain falling really fast is not good, and it is going to cause uh, some flash flooding. So make sure you're prepared for that. Uh, and then this is going to expand into Georgia as time goes on. So lots of flooding expected all the way up into South Carolina and North Carolina eventually as well. I looked at chat and you guys never cease to amuse me. Uh, Sarasota County Government, Casey Key uh, roads are flooding. Is this where we is this where we were? That why does that sound familiar? We were just here, right? Nice little community here at Casey Key. Uh, the roads are flooding, um, and uh, obviously the storm surge and the inundation of water is uh, continuing to be a major uh, problem out here as the storm continues to push a lot of water towards uh, Tampa. Uh, wind is starting to get really bad here in Valdosta. Um, it's slowly getting worse, but the rain hasn't really stopped, but not much flooding yet. Yeah, the rain hasn't stopped, but you haven't seen rain yet. I don't think you understand how hard the rain's getting ready to get as that um, the, the eye wall approaches you. It's going to come down. It's going to come down fast. If you live in a place that's ever flooded before, it's probably going to flood again, and it might even be worse than you've ever seen it. So just keep that in mind. Valdasta? I I don't know, guys. I'm listen. You're you're. This is YouTube, okay? <laughs> I'm doing the best I can here. It's you know. I, as long as you understand where I'm talking about, that's what matters. Valdosta, Valdosta. Okay. Oh man. I don't, I don't have, uh, I'm out of right now. 
I, I don't, it doesn't make any sense when it's spelled out like D A L D A H D A W are both doll to me. Val Dasta. Val Dasta. I'm confused now. Even if I got it right during one of those, I'll never say it right again. So I'm, I'm just going to move on and focus on what's important, okay? If somebody, the best way to, to help me would be to send me an audible, like send me like a, a voice clip, somebody saying it, or somebody come over the air and say it. Yeah, here's a, an interesting take on this. Um, this is from a major hurricane that passed 125 miles west of Tampa Bay. I can't imagine what it would look like if one of this magnitude came closer. That's a very good point. Like Tampa has obviously seen pretty significant impacts from both of our most recent major hurricanes, Ian and Adalia. But Tampa honestly has gotten so lucky with both of them where it's missed. It's been significantly missed. So if something like this happened closer to Tampa, it would definitely be a, um, a bad situation. And I hope that this recent uptick in activity along the western side of Florida has the officials there thinking about how to upgrade their infrastructure to handle it if it currently can't. Oh, here we go. This is what I needed. Valdosta. 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 Is that right? Because I saw people in chat saying it was like pasta. It's not, it's not posta. Valdosta. Valdos, Valdosta. Okay. Valdosta. I'll say it right. I, that's what, that's Google. Google cannot be wrong. I'm going with that from now on. I don't want to dwell on this too much or we'll spend 80 hours just talking about how I'm saying every town name wrong. <laughs> Google was wrong. <laughs> All right. Valdosta. Valdosta, that's what I'm sticking with. Uh, we do have several uh, tornado warnings that were just issued, so I want to go through those one at a time. Um, uh, well, not just issued, that have been issued. We have the one here near Dade City. This is for um, Lumberton. Uh, this is a tornado warning that is going to be for uh, Pasco County, Florida. Um, uh, and... Once again, Zephyr Hills, Lumberton, and Port Lonesome. You guys are in the path of this. Take shelter now. A uh, more recent one, though, is going to be over here in DeSoto, Hardy, and Sarasota uh, County, Florida. This is the Arcadia region. Once again, lots of tornadoes have been trying to happen out here today. The rotation on this one doesn't look too impressive, but definitely get to shelter if you're in Pine Level or Cubitus. Um, and then if we go up towards um, Georgia, uh, we have another tornado warning or Retreat, or LeCount, South Newport, and Chimney um, Villa in Georgia. So lots of um, areas of rotation that are being warned. I don't think we have any reported ones right now, uh, but Andy has got some information for us. So go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, um, I've only seen one confirmed uh, tornado out of all of these since this morning, and it was one of those uh uh, many that have occurred into the area near Arcadia in Florida. So that was one of the, the earliest ones, the first ones we saw. Um, but uh, you just commented on how it doesn't look too impressive, and but to still take it seriously, I don't want to back that up, uh, because a lot of the tornado warnings that we look at that are a couple thousand feet up is where we're scanning into the storm. They're far away from the radar sites are still have the chance to uh, actually produce tornadoes that can do some damage and we're not going to be able to see them when we're looking that far up because all of these tropical tornadoes are going to have very shallow uh, layers of rotation in the storm very shallow mesocyclones is what we call those so quite often we're going to see what looks you know like wow why did they warn that I've, but when we're looking far away it's very possible that all of that spin is taking place in the lowest level of the atmosphere and the radar might not be catching that very well so i want to uh, re-emphasize that any warning that is issued today since we'll probably see several uh several several through the afternoon to take it seriously okay uh thank you very much andy 
Um, uh, we've got to take this seriously. This is, you know, a very interesting thing about hurricane uh, coverage. The the landfall is obviously uh, the most, usually the most destructive part, the most interesting part. This is the part that everybody cares about. Um, and, and then... Uh, it doesn't stop there. There's so many other things that happen whenever a, the, the hurricanes are the strongest and, and most powerful and the biggest storms that happen on earth. And then the strongest ones of those uh, are, are crazy systems. So we're going to have tornadoes up and down the peninsula of Florida, up through uh, Georgia, South Carolina and North Carolina. We're going to have devastating flash flooding and continued hurricane force winds all the way up into South Carolina. Uh, so just know that, uh, you know, even though the storm is over land now and it is weakening, it, it's official. This thing is very um, slowly but surely weakening. Uh, it's still going to be a huge impact event for so many people. So we're going to be covering these uh, tornado warnings uh, very closely and all the flash flood warnings because um, I think we're going to see a lot more of them as time goes on. Y'all's Force One uh, was on the move for a bit. I think they're just assessing the damage near them. Uh, we might get an update from them soon, uh, but uh, you know, I, I don't. I think that for the most part, uh, other than the two or three semis that were flipped, uh, we're doing okay there. Go ahead, guys. Hey, Ryan. I just heard you talking about it, so I figured we'd jump in. Uh, we we're actually trying to find a bathroom. I mean, it's really complicated to find one when there's no power anywhere. But when we popped across the road to the loves, there's pretty significant tree damage there. Um, and then the canopy, like above the gas station, has been completely shredded. It's on top of cars. Um, it looked like the front of the loves may have had some like debris in the windows. Yeah, we had to dodge debris. Uh, but we had to dodge debris like multiple times, just even trying to move across the road, flying pieces of sheet metal. Um, gas station. Gas station so, yeah. Okay. All so that's right. Pretty well. much going on right now. <laughs> you guys be careful and uh, good luck on your quest to, to find a bathroom. Um, I'm sure I'll utilize our team to help you find one if you need. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, obviously lots of damage, even as far inland as Lee, Florida, which is where our guys are. And they're in the center of circulation now. So things are pretty quiet or they're, they're calming down at least. Uh, and that'll last for about an hour or so. And then we'll probably see the increase of winds once again as the backside of the storm comes through. I'd say things are pretty wild right now in Madison. We don't have any storm chasers, I don't think, in Madison. In fact, Carly, if you could look uh, through some of our brokers and see if we've got anybody else that's maybe in farther inland that we can maybe uh, go away from the Cedar Key uh, camera for a minute or something like that, we can start trying to expand our coverage a little bit as we see the storm approach uh, Val Valdosta. Um, uh, but yeah, Madison right now is getting rocked by the damaging winds, uh, probably similar or slightly less than, but similar to what we saw near Perry uh, with uh, lots of, uh, you know, downed power lines and, and trees and stuff happening. Uh, that's going to continue up towards Cherry Lake and Leyland and Belleville here soon. So get ready for that. Remember, take shelter as if this was a tornado. That's the best thing to do right now. A surge is finally dropping in Cedar Key. Surge is finally dropping in Cedar Key. Oh. Thought I had a, a, a camera to show you there, but it went black. <laughs> no, I totally get it. I, I'm seeing some of the, the tweets now um, in support of... <laughs> Listen, it's okay. If, if, if I was watching news coverage or the weather and somebody said my town name wrong, I would be upset too. I, I, I get it. I'm trying my best. And, uh, you know, I cover the weather for the whole United States. And, uh, you know, uh, Val, Valdosta in a different state, that they'll, they'll, they will pronounce it Valdosta. Some of them will say Valdosta. And, you know, if I don't get it right the first time, then, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's, it, it's a big deal. But, hey. Nobody really points out whenever I do get it right, which is quite a bit of the time. All right. It's just a big deal whenever I mess up. All right. Go ahead, Riley. What's up? Uh, hey, Ryan. Uh, there's some reports out of Sarasota County that there's people swimming in the storm surge. Okay. What, what, what are people doing? Like, you should not be swimming in storm surge. That water is going to go out and... 
if you're in the water when it goes out, well, guess what? You're going to go with it. So unless you want to swim in the ocean for a very long time, I would probably not swim in storm surge. Yeah, absolutely. And um, one of the things to think about there is, you know, in a place like Tampa right now, the the storm isn't bad, right? It doesn't seem like there's a hurricane going on, uh, but here's all this water. All right. So yeah, it's probably uh, attracting uh, some people to go uh, investigate and see what's going on. But talk about a rip current. Okay. Whenever you're dealing with storm surge and especially whenever the tide starts to change and things start going backwards a little bit, if you are in the wrong part of that water at the wrong time, you will not survive it. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can't, can't tell, you can't tell people what to do. I, I mean, I can't, I certainly can't tell you what to do, but, um, uh, it's my recommendation to not swim in storm surge water. It just in case I needed to, just in case you needed to hear that from me, the YouTube weather guy here. I, <laughs> hopefully you didn't need to hear that from me. Hopefully most of you are being safe and you're staying inside or you are, um, having a nice day trip outside of the area after you've ev had to evacuate. Uh, there's a lot of structure and tree damage in Perry, Florida. We're getting those reports coming in. Um, got a couple of tweets from Brad Arnold that I'm going to retweet for you. And uh, let's see here. Um, Sarasota, really lots of um, updates coming from Sarasota. Uh, and the Tampa Bay area, which is not surprising. We did expect the storm surge to be significant down there, but I think that some people are probably going to be surprised in Tampa because the storm made landfall so far away uh, from Sarasota, Tampa, and all these places. They probably thought they had dodged a significant bullet. I don't think they realize how much of a bullet they did dodge, uh, but still very significant uh, flooding going on all across the western Florida area right now. I'm retweeting all this stuff. Okay, so actually, um, all of the tornado warnings that we were covering earlier have been allowed to expire. So that's good news. And it looks like the water in Keaton is probably is also coming down. It looks like it's still coming up in Deckel Beach. Yeah, it's definitely still coming up in uh, Deckel Beach. This is significantly higher than what we saw earlier. And that makes sense because the orientation of the winds are more perpendicular with the coastline now. Um, but that'll, that'll start going down pretty soon, too. Um, uh, Places between Cedar Key and uh, Tampa, though, will probably continue to see storm surge either rising or staying steady for a significant period of time as the winds uh, continue to come in this way and push the water in and we approach high tide. Uh, power outages are being reported in Florida now. Um, near, we are nearing 13,000 outages in Georgia. I'm sorry, yeah, in Georgia now. Yeah, a couple of videos from uh, Brad Arnold sharing now on Twitter. Got a lot of buttons to push. Um, and we do have an update from our y'all squad crew. Go ahead, Caleb. What do you got? Hey, Ryan. So we were just trying to drop south towards Perry to actually go start assessing some of the damage that's down there. And it appears that our route may be blocked. Um, there's pretty substantial tree damage in the area, obviously, from that really strong wind that just came through. But this entire line for probably 200 yards is down tree and down limbs. So it looks like we're going to have to try and find another route. So if, if people are attempting to travel, we still definitely would advise. Like, don't go out on the roads right now with these winds still being pretty significant. I wouldn't recommend yeah. just trying to bear this. If you switched our front camera around, you can see uh, the trees down in front of us. Okay, yeah, you're definitely blocked there. And just looking at uh, your potential options 
uh, if you try to take 360 uh, down towards uh, Perry, that is definitely not going to work. I think that's where some of the most significant damage is, and it looks like those are some smaller roads that it probably will even take some time for anybody to get out there to uh, really clean that up. If you wanted to go to Perry, the, the, the way that I would go is probably go back towards uh, Lee and then go south on Highway 53 or 255. Uh, it would be a longer trip, but that was definitely spared, I think, from a lot of the, the heavier damage. All right, so that was an update from our um, Y'all Squad uh, crew out there who are now officially no longer in hurricane intercept mode, uh, but rather in nonprofit disaster relief mode. As they are trying to assess the damage, um, hopefully we're going to be able to get in contact with city officials as well. I, I, I know that uh, during times like this, a lot of times uh, emergency management offices, police offices, they'll be watching us. If there's anybody uh, like that uh, involved with local government in any of these places that wants to reach out to us and if you have something that we could do for you, um, let us know. You can reach us on our website, theyallsquad.org. There's a link in the description. Once again, that's theyallsquad.org. Um, and thanks to our wonderful uh, people who are watching, we have raised $15,000 so far today uh, towards our disaster relief efforts. Uh, once again, I want to encourage everybody that's watching right now to please click the link in the description. Let's try to get that number to over thirty dollars or $40,000 uh, so we can really make a difference here uh, if we are called on uh, to go help. And, and once again, I think that we're it's going to happen. Um, you know, a lot of times it takes people seeing the damage uh, and uh, we're definitely going to see it. Uh, but everybody who can donate, please consider doing so. And, you know, there's a million different ways that you can help out. So we're also going to be dropping links and, and like uh, information on to how you can volunteer and all that kind of stuff. Um, but for now, we're just kind of focused on the trying to gather resources. The storm's not over yet, though. <laughs> it's not time to completely focus on the disaster relief or the aftermath because we are still in the middle of a devastating hurricane that is getting ready to cross the state line. It's getting ready to go uh, between um, uh, yeah, Florida and Georgia, uh, between Madison and Jennings there and Valdost, Val, Valdosta. You guys are getting ready to uh, experience some of the stronger winds now. Also, you guys are now under a flash flood warning. You are under a flash flood warning, so the strong winds are coming in at the same time as the uh, very heavy rains. So there's a little bit of a problem there. Do you, do you get to lower ground? Do you, get in, do you protect yourself from the wind or do you get to higher ground to escape the floodwaters? That's something that you have to kind of discern for yourself. The most important thing to do is to get into an interior room and, and protect yourself from the strong winds. Um, and then just monitor the water uh, and make sure that that's not going to become a problem. So it's always a, a tough situation in hurricanes uh, to try to figure out what the best thing to do there is. But uh, for the most part, the winds are not going to be as strong as what we saw in Perry. Probably not as strong as what we saw in Madison, uh, but still strong enough. The, the flooding waters and the rains, in my opinion, are going to be what's really the dangerous uh, side of the storm here. We've been, we've been going now for close to four, I think exactly four hours or five hours. Um, and we are just now getting to the point to where the storm is crossing over into Georgia. Uh, and the, the worst of it is over, I believe, for a lot of the coastal areas. So for all of our um, people uh, that are, you know, hopefully away from the, the, the areas that just got hit really hard and are itching to go back and assess the damage. I wouldn't go just yet. It's going to be hard to get there. It's going to be very hard to reach any of these places. But I would, uh, I, I would say that over the next couple of hours, things will start getting better and we'll start to see some of the extent of the damage along the coast. And we're going to show you that so you don't have to go down there and put yourself in da danger. Remember, there's 
live power lines down more than likely along the way. There's trees down. Who knows what sort of, you know, gas thing got unhooked and there could be an explosion. Who knows what kind of, you know, there's a lot of things that you, if you have evacuated this area, you don't want to go immediately back just yet. So we're going to keep you updated on what's going on there. Uh, and I also want to say a huge shout out to everybody who's been supporting. You guys are nuts. Uh, I, the support's been off the, uh, has been out of this world. And I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate it. Can't shout everybody out today. We have too much to talk about. But just know that every single one of you, uh, you're the reason why we can do what we do here. Hey, Ryan, it's Brad. Um, Completely free. I finally free have a good stream now back, back in good cell service. Um, I think what they were doing is they were pushing the data to be able to use uh, for like EMA and emergency and, and emergency response there. That's why I was able to make calls but not use any data. Uh, just wanted to let you know I have left Perry. I have found a route out. Um, I am back on the highway headed east. I am headed down to uh, Stanhatchee, uh, which is covered up in probably about 10 to 15 foot of water. Um, and I'm going to try to get down there. I'm about 15 minutes away. Uh, from, from that location, and I'm hoping I can get all the way down there. I'll report back as soon as I, uh, as soon as I see something. But okay, all right. So that's Brad Arnold. He has found a route out of Perry, which is good. Uh, a lot of times, whenever we get our storm chasers in in a place like that, and a big hurricane hits, they're stuck for a little bit. I'll, I'll report back as soon as I see something. Um, but my stream is back on, and it is it is good. So everything is on, everything straight straight away with the stream. Um, but yeah, he's found a way out and now he's going to go, uh, kind of, uh, show us what's happening close to Sten, uh, Hatchy and, um, some of these places that are still experiencing, tr uh, incredible flooding down here from the storm surge. Keaton, Keaton looks like it's getting worse too. So in some places it's going down in some places it's coming up. Hi, Cause. Thank you so much. Uh, snakes and alligators floating around too, probably. Hey, that's like a serious thing. Yeah, definitely. That's a that's a danger that you have to think about in Florida after a hurricane. Uh, yeah, if you're just now tuning in, we're continuing our coverage of Hurricane Adalia as it's still a Category 2 strong hurricane moving into Georgia. Uh, we're just waiting. I'm, I'm honestly just filtering through all this uh, news Ryan, and information. Ryan, you have a copy in. on Zello now. There we go. We got Chris back. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, WP4H. Got a copy, but I can't. Reach him. Oh, here we Oh, oh. Okay, yeah, I got you, Chris. <laughs> What's up? So service is coming and going. Um, we're sitting in front of the Dollar Tree directly across from the bank where we were at. The bank's roof is completely tore off. Uh, the whole front of the Dollar Tree here is completely demolished on the front side. Uh, which is right across from the T-Mobile that has all the windows blown out. Uh, there was another chaser here that thinks that there actually may have been a uh, spin-up tornado here. Uh, but I, I wouldn't say that because the winds were excessive at the time. Uh, we were right around the eye. Uh, but yeah, we're finally been able to get a little bit out. My stream still won't turn on. I've tried 50 blue million times. Uh, but yeah, that's that's our current situation now, and um, I'll update you as soon as I can. Is is there anywhere I need to go that you know of? Not yet. Um, most of the places that have like the worst damage are are still underwater right now, so uh, there's no place to go just yet. Um, but yeah, we've got you loud and clear now, um, and you know, we'll keep trying your feed, but just keep uh, checking in with us through, uh, Zello as much as you can. And by the way, it, it's actually supported by radar that there could have actually been a spin up tornado right around where you guys were. Uh, we, it was a really weird signature. It could have been just, you know, some sort of, uh, uh, interference or something like that, but, uh, definitely could have been a little tornado that went by there. So. 
glad you're all right. And uh, it looks like at some point here in the near future, we're going to be switching over to kind of focused on the relief side. So stay, t stay in touch. And I'm the reason why I'm kind of fumbling over uh, my words here is because there's so much happening. <laughs> I have like two or three things that I've, uh, I've been trying to relay here. Uh, one of them is yeah, that just let it's me know, official. Like I was saying, uh, that I'm going to tell you this real quick before I let standby. you go because I know all those services. As soon as I move from here, we were under the bank. Uh, I had my part. There's a huge gust right there. We're still getting gust over tropical force. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we were sitting under the awning, and I had my parking brake set. My car was in park. My foot was on the brake and my car still moved. The wind pushed the car at least 10 feet under the awning, so. Wow. Okay, so that's an update from Chris. Um, FEMA, it's official. The, we are, they're saying that they are prepared uh, to support the needs as they arise in, in, in areas impacted by Hurricane Adalia. Personnel and resources from across the federal government and voluntary and nonprofit organizations uh, are ready to assist uh, at the request of Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. So that's good to hear. Um, I, I, there's so many organizations that are going to need to be involved in the uh, the recovery process here, and it's still going to take years. It's still going to take years for this area to, to um, probably fully recover. Um, additionally, the uh, Bradenton uh, Police Department is sharing some photos uh, with the um, the flooding that's going on there. Uh, still, lots of flooding going on in and around Tampa Bay. Lots of flooding going on in and around Tampa Bay. Uh, we've got reports of trees falling on campers and trailers in the Tallahassee area. So even way back here uh, in Tallahassee, we've got strong winds. In fact, uh, some of the stronger winds of the day are probably just now moving in with this big outer band here. Uh, that's going to move into Tallahassee and likely cause some damage. It's not going to be as bad as what we're seeing coming up into Valdosta, uh, but it's not going to be a fun time in, in Tallahassee over the next couple of hours. Live Oak, you guys are getting in on some of the strong winds. The The heavy rain is really not in this area. We've got a lot of dry air, but we're still seeing really strong winds all around this circle here in Live Oak. You're getting that now. You're about to get a break, though. Uh, the stronger winds are going to move into Jasper and White Springs as uh, the day goes on. <clears throat> uh, Ryan, how bad do you think it's going to get in Brunswick, Georgia? Uh, Brunswick, Georgia. Uh, let me see here. Um, it'll so it'll get pretty bad. I, I'm not want to sugarcoat it for you. It's not going to be as bad as what we've seen down in Florida, but we could see some storm surge over here uh, in excess of four or five feet. Uh, and of course, we're going to be watching this area po potentially uh, closely for uh, tornadoes. So keep that in mind as uh, the uh, the storm gets closer. The heavy rain and the strongest winds I think will be to your north and west. The All Force One's in motion. They're on their way. They're going to try to make it towards Perry uh, just, just to assess the damage. Uh, and hopefully they don't come across too many down trees and power lines to stop them. Uh, but as you can see, even in the area that they're in right now, the uh, this is an area that really hasn't been hit by the hardest part of the storm. You still see a lot of tree damage, uh, which is impressive to say the least. We've got up to 260,000 people without power now in Florida, over a quarter million. That number is probably going to rise. Uh, we've got Shale sending us some pictures from Hudson, Florida, of some significant flooding going on. I hope you're, I hope you're all right. Uh, this looks like this is happening close to your property or on your property. I'm sorry about that. Um, but it looks like you've got some high ground to stay sheltered at, so keep us updated. Oh, and Y'all Force One um, unfortunately has been stopped again by another downed tree. It's going to be hard to find a route. This is another reason why, you know, we talked about 
Now, it might take extra long. If you decided not to evacuate from some of these places, it's, it, it could take an extra amount of time for emergency services to reach you because they're going to have to cut these trees out of the way. You know, they're going to have to move these trees. They're going to have to, and who knows how many trees there are between where the people who you need are and where they need to be. Uh, how's the uh, Cairo, Georgia area looking? Um, <laughs> I, of course, I typed that in and it took me to Egypt. Give me just a second. Um, okay, so you guys are fine. Uh, the strongest winds are moving in right now. Tropical storm force winds. The biggest problem that you guys are going to have is almost certainly uh, f flash flooding. Okay, um, The strongest part of the storm is well off to your east. Um, let's see here. Living, thank you so much for becoming a member. Um, Tracy Lee, thank you. Uh, Joan, thank you. Elsie, thank you guys. Uh, North Carolina. Leslie says North Carolina. Um, North Carolina is going to get hit by this storm. It's going to be much weaker by the time it gets there, but the main threats for you guys, once again, is going to be the, the very strong well, rain, the potential flooding, and the uh, tornado threat on the coastal side. Um, also a huge shout out, just got an alert from one of our representatives, our, our treasurer at the y'all squad, um, huge shout out to Sarah Herb for making a, uh, 1000, $1,000 donation to our y'all squad nonprofit. Thank you so much. All that's going to go to good use. And you guys are going to see exactly what's done with that. As we document it, we're going to make a video. We've got a channel on YouTube called the y'all squad where, uh, whatever we end up doing, whether we re rebuild somebody's house, we buy somebody's car, we buy multiple people cars, we bring truckloads of supplies in, we build temporary shelters, whatever it is that we end up doing, um, you guys are going to see it firsthand uh, as, you know, the reason we're able to do this stuff anyways is because of YouTube. So it just makes sense to use YouTube to promote it and then hopefully be able to do more in the future. Do I hear the Y'all Force One crew? Are you guys... Trying to come through? We are. So we have a quick little update for you. Uh, everyone was talking about the waffle house meter on how we judge storms. Um, and if anyone, anyone was questioning whether or not this was significant or not, we just passed the waffle house and it was closed. So we can confirm that this was a legitimate, serious storm. If you're still questioning that after seeing all the footage that we've gone through already. Absolutely. Uh, and just so you know, there was... Um, I think you're unmuted on Zoom and Discord there. We had a little bit of a uh, mute problem. But um, I, we heard what you said. And, and just to make sure that we heard that right, Waffle House was closed, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah Waffle, Waffle House was closed. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, once again, guys, if you weren't here yesterday during the pre-coverage, um, one of the ways that we gauge how strong a storm is uh, and how strong it's expected to be, obviously, is the is the Waffle House closed. Um, so whenever it is closed, okay, you guys are still unmuted. Okay, there you go. You got it. Um, uh, whenever it is closed or whenever they plan on closing, it's a big deal because the Waffle House invests millions of dollars into not closing. They have a, their own meteorology department, a food chain, and um, it, it, it takes a lot for them to decide to close. So whenever the Waffle House is closed, you know it's going to be bad. And the storm that closed the Waffle House near Madison is also now moving across into Georgia. Uh, Val, Valdosta and Dasher, you guys are getting in on some of the strongest winds now. They're going to continue to increase. And also the rain is going to continue to increase. It's about to get a lot worse there. Remember, if you live in a flood prone area, it is going to get nasty and it's going to get nasty fast. We have seen uh, over seven inches of rain north of Madison. We're already close to three or four inches around Valdosta. We're going to see almost double that before this is all said and done. David McDaniel, thank you so much. Uh, we've got an update from meteorologist Andy Hill, so let's hear from him. 
Thanks, Ryan. Um, I'm looking along the Georgia coastline here for any sort of rotation, and there are two areas of concern that have been consistent over the last few scans of radar, one of which is closer to Savannah along I-95 near Fleming uh, in uh, Georgia here. So that that is an area that's been consistent. Neither of these are tornado warned yet. Uh, the other one that I'm looking at is further south uh, to the east of Meridian near S Sapelo Island, Sapelo Island. Uh, headed towards Shellman Bluff, Half Moon Landing to the east of I-95. So two areas of uh, stronger and a little bit more consistent uh, rotation that I've been watching that could go tornado warned for uh, parts of McIntosh or McIntosh and Liberty counties, as well as into uh, Bryan County. So those are the areas I'm watching. Y'all watch out ahead of time. Okay. Um, thank you so much, uh, Andy. For the updates there, this is way over here in southeast Georgia, near Savannah, south of town. We've got two areas of um, rotation that we're watching closely, and probably even more than that are going to develop as the storms approach Savannah. Uh, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't surprise me at all if we start seeing some uh, tornado warnings out here. So get ready for that. Um, also up there towards Pembroke, Georgetown, uh, Uller, you guys get ready for these storms as they come in. We're even going to watch these. Uh, as they approach uh, southeastern uh, South Carolina as well. Um, let's see, what's going on on Jennifer's feed? I, I was just told to switch to it, but I'm sure that whatever it was is gone now because <laughs> the, the camera orientation has switched. Uh, a, tree, a tree went flying across the road. <laughs> okay, so Jennifer is in uh, Live Oak, Florida, okay? So this is a live view of what the drier side of the storm looks like. So still very strong winds over here. Um, but if you look at this on radar, uh, you can see that the radar, it just doesn't look that bad. Um, so they're still getting the hurricane force winds on this side of the storm. It's just not as wet. Same thing over here, but just a lot wetter. The so live oak, these strong winds that are throwing trees around, that's going to be moving into Jasper and White Springs and Hillcote here soon. So get ready for that. Uh, Carly. Okay, yeah, we still got Brad Arnold up. I thought we lost Brad. Brad is uh, getting really close to Steenhatchie. Uh, so we should see some of that flooding uh, firsthand from Brad as he gets closer to the area there. Lots of flooding in that area. I'm honestly not looking forward to seeing the aftermath of the Horseshoe Beach and all of that uh, general vicinity. Here is an update. Clearwater Beach. The Clearwater Police Department is uh, showing us uh, floodwaters. Many parts of Clearwater Beach are underwater because of Adalia. Uh, this is the view of Beach Walk and South Gulf View Boulevard. The beach is closed with no access allowed. So still seeing ongoing flooding problems from Tampa Bay down to Clearwater, down to Sarasota. Uh, Casey Key, all these places um, are continuing to be inundated by water. And it looks like we just got a, a tornado warning associated with the storms that Andy was telling us about. So we're going to go investigate that now on the Radar Omega app. There it is. Uh, this includes uh, I-16 between Eden and Bloomingdale. And it includes um, <coughs> uh, a little bit of the Richmond Hill area, but it looks like the area of concern, the, the biggest rotations right here, and the storm's actually moving to the north and west is uh, odd, but not unheard of, obviously, especially when we have a counterclockwise moving uh, storm system off to our west. Uh, this is going to go up towards Pembroke. So everybody over here in 
Bryan, Chatham, Effingham, and Liberty counties in Georgia need to be taking shelter right now. Don't play around with it. All right, doing some live producing here. Okay. <clears throat> Looks like uh, our Y'all Squad crew is able to go towards uh, Perry still. Um, uh, Derek Smith, though, closer to Keaton, Florida, is having a hard time getting around as a lot of roads are blocked. Um, Brad Arnold now has a view of that storm. I believe some of the flooding that's going on. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly where he is, but wherever he's pointing this camera at right now, there's not supposed to be water there. Okay, um, we've got an update from the Florida Health. Florida Health Collier. Uh, DOH is advising that the public not enter the water due to possible increased risk of waterborne illnesses. So if the storm surge... And the hurricane, if that's not enough to keep you out of the water, um, we are expecting that due to all of the debris and things that are you know, going into the water, uh, there's a very high risk of uh, contracting uh, waterborne illnesses out here. So we're encouraging everyone to stay out of the water uh, in and pretty much all around Western Florida. Even if you're way down south and you think, you know, it's, it ain't that bad way down here. Um, let's stay out of the water for a brief period of time, at least, especially around Collier County. Swimming is not recommended. Power is being restored at a pretty uh, awesome level, honestly, in uh, Florida. I think we would probably have closer to a half million um, uh, power outages if it wasn't for the amount that is being re restored. So we had 260,000 without power earlier. Now we're down to 240. So hopefully that number keeps going down. There is probably around 50,000 people that won't have it for quite some time, even if, you know, everything is done that needs to be done to get everybody responsible restored as quickly as possible, there's a huge area that will be um, experiencing uh, power outages for a long time. And it's probably the areas closer to the coast. Storm surge uh, near Tallahassee, just south of town there is uh, close to seven feet, but it is going down slightly. Good news. Yes, we do have an enhanced risk of severe weather along the Carolina coast down into Georgia and uh, a little bit of Florida, I believe. Uh, we're going to focus on that as soon as the rain and the wind become less of an issue. And also as soon as we get more of an idea of exactly what happened, where this hurricane made landfall. Uh, we currently only have that one tornado warning, though, which is good news, and we're kind of focusing on it right now. Uh, tornado could potentially be down near Richmond Hill and moving to the north towards Eden and Pembroke. Uh, this is from HCSO Sheriff. We are experiencing several road closures. Um, please stay home. These are the areas where we're experiencing the most flooding. Memorial Highway and Dana Shores, Sheldon and Hillsboro, Causeway and 47, 50th and Madison and Highway 41. So the water is still a problem out here. Uh, and it's going to continue to be a problem 
honestly, I expected by now a lot of these places to sig significantly be dealing with receding water, but that's just not the case yet. It'll happen. It'll all move out very quickly at some point, but we're still dealing with uh, incredible flooding right now. Uh, we've got reports of high winds in Tybee Island uh, coming in as well, all the way over here in Georgia. Which makes sense. Those winds are going to just get more intense, though, as the day goes on. And as we go into tonight. We're not expecting anything crazy, but uh, hurricane force winds are going to be possible all the way up to uh, Savannah, Georgia. Our storm looks a lot different on satellite now. Still an incredibly impressive storm. Incredibly impressive, to say the least. Uh, Deanna, uh, thank you for the support. She says that these storms are never understood until the aftermath. My heart and prayers are with all. Uh, SC Sunshine, thanks for becoming a slight risker. The worst of the storm, as far as like the intensity of it goes, is over. But we're not. Oh, it's not over. We're still dealing with the uh, incredible flooding. The surge has not gone down yet in some of the hardest hit areas. We have no idea what some of these communities even look like yet. Um, and then, of course, the tornado threat is going to continue to increase as we go through the night. Look at this on a regional level. Okay, so here's the enhanced risk of severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center. You can see it includes a little bit of Georgia, South Carolina, up until up into uh, North Carolina. Wilmington and Charleston are both included in that, and that's driven by a 10% uh, uh, probability of tornadoes. And what that means is that anywhere in that yellow area has a 10% probability of seeing uh, tornadoes tonight within 25 miles of any given point. Uh, which is uh, actually a very high risk. Like that's not something that we generally see every day. This is something that a lot of times we would just go live for just because of the tornado risk. Um, but today we're dealing with flash flooding, a hurricane, and the tornado risk altogether. The brown is a 5 to 9% probability, and that includes Jacksonville down towards Tampa, but not quite to Tampa. It looks like there's some uh, traffic out in front of y'all force one there. I don't know if they're going to, I don't know if the road's blocked or not. Um, and then Brad Arnold, he's, he can't get any farther than what he is right now due to the water, which is still way high. Uh, and, and I don't think he's even, he's still pretty far inland. Like this is interesting. Uh, let me show you real quick uh, what I'm talking about. This is Brad Arnold's indicator. He can't go any farther into Steenhatchy. And, I mean, he's pretty far away from the beach, right? Like, this is the, the coastal area. He can't get past this. It seems like, to me, most of this is underwater here. It would make sense because this is still what we're seeing from this camera. Remember, earlier today, all of this water wasn't here. There was some water, but it was like back here. We'll see how deep into the town he's able to get. I 
think he's on the main highway now, so he's, it looks like he's able to get a little bit farther into town. Just looks like some of those uh, side roads that take you into the cul-de-sacs uh, and like the communities, that, that's what's blocked off. So he might be able to go right up to the river here, the Steenhatchee River, and see where the literal stopping point is. The shed deserves a medal. You're absolutely right. Update from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, damaging winds are spreading into southern Georgia. 10 a.m. update. Uh, NOAA radar data indicates that the maximum sustained winds are now near 105 miles per hour with higher gusts. The estimated minimum pressure based on the surface observations is 964 millibars. Uh, a sustained winds of 39 miles per hour with a wind gust of 63 was recently reported at the airport in Valdosta and an unofficial automated observing site at Madison High School in Madison, Florida reported a wind gust of 67 miles per hour. So still seeing... Uh, really high um, wind gusts come through with this storm as the, the windy part of it is really dying out uh, for the most part uh, as it moves on farther into uh, the shoreline or the, the land. Sorry, I've been talking nonstop for like six hours here. I'm starting to starting to get a little tongue-tied. Hey, Ryan, it's Brad. Uh, we just made it to, um, well, we're about a mile uh, north of Stenhatchee. Uh, we can't get any further. Uh, looking at between 5 to 10 feet of surge that is still here. Um, a lot of homes, a lot of businesses have been inundated uh, with water. Uh, we're sitting right beside a sports bar right here that has water all the way in the first level of it, um, as well as the, the uh, buildings that you can see um, in front of there. We, we can't get any further. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty bad down here. The surge did, does look like it verified. Okay. Uh, unfortunately still at this point, we are seeing, um, enough surge to keep Brad from being able to make it all the way down into, uh, the, the main part of, uh, Steen, uh, Hatchie, uh, but I, and it looks like the waters even came down some. So a lot of those buildings, uh, that are, especially the ones closest to the coast are probably severely damaged. Severely damaged. Uh, Angel Dragon says, I work for Charter and have been emailing my local team on the hurricanes and the weather and telling them of you and Omega. I will be nominating the Y'all Squad for a $10,000 donation to your charity. Uh, now it's set up. I can. Awesome. Angels, thank you so much. Um, that's huge, obviously, um, and uh, I really do appreciate it. Thank you for the support, and thanks for spreading the word about what we're doing here. Couldn't do what we do without you guys. I'm just a guy sitting here relaying uh, information. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for you all, nobody would know what we're doing here. We wouldn't be able to fundraise. We wouldn't be able to have storm chasers or do the disaster relief or any of that stuff. This is literally the definition of a grassroots ground up team effort, uh, completely organized by just people who are, first of all, just big weather nerds and uh, just a lot of people who really care uh, about uh, other people. And it's a, it's an amazing sight to see. I appreciate y'all. Derek Smith. Found even more water. There's no shortage of it there near Keaton Beach, Florida. He can't get any farther either. Uh, so far, now, obviously, this is very preliminary. I don't know. Um, I don't know what the final number is going to look like or anything. 
Uh, but so far, it does seem like we have two fatalities uh, in relation to uh, Hurricane uh, Idalia. Um, two, both of them are in Florida. One of them is going to be in Pasco County. The other one's going to be in Aleutia County. Now, I don't think either of these are directly related to the storm surge. Uh, I think these are related to uh, either rain-related crashes or, or something like that. Um, so uh, it's very unfortunate. Obviously, we hate to uh, to hear that, but unfortunately, I think that that number there's a chance that it could be higher if we if one of these communities where not everybody evacuated from to, that took a direct hit wasn't able to if the structures weren't able to hold up. Unfortunately, there there might be more to that. We're going to hope for the best, obviously. Um, but that's the preliminary reports that we're hearing now. Rain-related crashes, yep, okay. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? Dangerous beach uh, conditions, this is from the National Weather Service. Uh, many eyes remain on dangerous Idalia is bringing to the southeast. There's a distant storm, Hurricane Franklin, that's continuing to stir up the western Atlantic, creating potentially deadly surf and rip currents along the U.S. East Coast. So uh, all the way up to Maine, down through Cape Cod, Long Island, down into the Delmarva area, the Outer Banks, all these places have a high surf advisory, and it's partially due to Idalia, but a lot of that's got to do with Hurricane Franklin, which flirted with Category 5 status out here. Thankfully, it's turning this way, but it's sending a lot of water directly towards the coast in its recurvature. Uh, it looks like our y'all squad vehicle has had to turn around again. Um, I'm sure we'll hear from them soon, uh, but it looks like it's hard to get into Perry right now. If, you're, if you weren't already in Perry, it's hard to get in. Uh, yeah, go ahead, uh, y'all squad. Hey, Ryan. So um, just a quick update. Um, it's not that it's hard to get into Perry specifically. It's actually just hard to get out of where we are. So far, every single direction we've tried to go has actually been completely blocked. So um, we're going to head back the way that we originally came in to where we currently are. And if we can't get out this way, we'll just work our way out. We have a chainsaw in here. So if we have to cut a path for us to get out, we'll do whatever's necessary to at least head back towards Ocala. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Keep us updated. And uh, we'll check back in with them here in a bit. Um, so our Y'all Squad headquarters, uh, for the next little bit anyways, is going to be in Ocala, Florida, because we thought initially that that would be closer to where we would have to, you know, start from. But, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of places that need uh, help and assistance all up and down uh, the western side of Florida. So I'm sure that uh, we'll hear a lot more about that here momentarily. Uh, Brad Arnold is still sending us pictures of the flooding down there in Taylor County. Uh, we're seeing uh, continued uh, signs of flooding uh, from Derek Smith in Keaton Beach. Uh, and then even Live Oak, Florida can, is continuing to see uh, significant winds on the drier side of the storm down there. All of the tornado warnings have been allowed to expire. We expect to see more, though. Sam, thank you. Brad, thanks for becoming a member. Uh, RYXIS, thanks for becoming a member. Shannon Waters says, thanks for the live exclusive coverage. My sister lives on Horseshoe Beach Road. Fortunately, she's closer to Cross City and didn't get flooded. Really appreciate you and the All Squad. Shannon, thank you so much for that update. Super happy to hear that you, they're okay. Um, obviously, that's a scary situation to be in. Um, it looks like the road between... So Horseshoe Beach, this area, definitely flooded, right? Uh, here's Cross City, so this person lives somewhere in between. I don't know how far this way they lived, but at some point, obviously, the flooding stopped, uh, probably right around that line. So hopefully everybody in Cross City's okay. Uh, a lot of the stronger winds, I think, were on the other side of the storm. So hopefully there's not too much wind damage in that area and the flooding isn't too bad in Cross City either.
any information about Savannah. Uh, Savannah, Georgia, you guys are going to take a direct hit from the center of circulation of this uh, potential hurricane by the time it gets to you. It could still have hurricane force wind gusts. The biggest problems that you're going to have are uh, some storm surge and I think a, a really good chance at seeing a, a couple of tornadoes ahead of the storm. Um, but other than that, that's, that's all I have for you right now. You're in a 10% probability of seeing um, uh, a tornado today, so you got to watch that, and you have to, of course, watch the potential flooding that's going to happen. The, the entire town of Steenhatchy, Florida, is underwater. Very high storm surge still here. This is from Brad Arnold retweeting this. Any news from Otter Creek, Florida? I haven't heard anything just yet, but I know that that's one of the, I believe that's one of the harder hit areas. Yeah, this made landfall officially as a category, category three. It was a category four right before landfall, but we lucked out with an eye wall replacement cycle. And there was a brief moment of weakening right before it hit. But unfortunately, that doesn't mean much because obviously we still had some very bad damage and we're, we still don't understand the exact extent of it. We're, we're learning slowly but surely. It's hard for our people to get to the places that are the worst damage because they're still underwater technically. Uh, here's a before and after of uh, Deckel Beach. This one is significant, but in, honestly, I think that this one's less significant than uh, Horseshoe Beach and Cedar Key, certainly. And of course, this is the live view of that right now. The water is still at uh, its high point. There is currently a tornado watch uh, in effect for parts of central and northern Florida, as well as parts of southern and eastern Georgia until 3 p.m. Eastern this afternoon. Hurricane Adalia will continue northeastward today with conditions supporting supercells capable of producing tornadoes. That's going to be the main story probably the farther we go into the day outside of flash flooding. Speaking of flash flooding... Uh, the 12Z NAM 3-kilometer model also has uh, the sharp cutoff low with the northwest to southeast gradient. Uh, so this is, this is very realistic. We could see lots of 8 to 9-inch uh, rainfall totals here through South Carolina and North Carolina. Maybe some places in extreme North Carolina, eastern North Carolina, uh, could get up there close to 10 to 12, maybe even 15 inches of rain, which would be um, potentially uh, you know, very devastating. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Hey, Ryan. I think that the um, there is an unwarned, possibly t ongoing tornado near Keller, Georgia, and that's to the south and a little bit west of the Savannah, Georgia area, closer to Richmond Hill to give you an indicator. I think that's probably one of the stronger rotations we've seen, just like the uh, tornado warning that was in Bryan County, closer uh, to Fleming. Now we're seeing one just to the east of that area with a separate cell. So I think that's the warning coming through for that. It's going to include Chatham County, uh, parts of Chatham, Chatham County, which is where Savannah is. Just know that that is headed off to the west of Savannah up towards I-95. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Andy, once again, bringing our attention to an area that didn't have a tornado warning. It's just now popping up. Um, the National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning for Richmond Hill and Georgetown and the area of, of 
uh, the I-95 corridor between Port Royal and uh, o Ogeechee Farms. So uh, keep that in mind. We have a potential tornado ongoing here. Remember, it's hard to see the velocity signatures a lot of times on these tropical tornadoes. The, the, the lower cloud base is a lot lower, so the rotation happens lower. And also, a lot of these radar sites are not very close to them, so we're seeing a little bit higher in the air. So the fact that we can see the rotation as clearly as we can here is pretty concerning, and we could have a tornado happening now moving up towards Sweet Hill, Myrtle Grove, Port Royal, Brisbane, Richmond Hill, and Georgetown. Uh, take shelter now if you are in uh, Bryan or Chatham counties in Georgia. The flooding is about to be pretty crazy in Valdosta. Man, that is a lot of rain. The winds are probably still really high as well, um, and they're going to get higher as the, the heaviest rain continues to approach from the south. Uh, cabinet maker NYC Ryan and team great coverage of the storm from Lakewood Ranch, Florida. Uh, any news on the Waffle Houses in the affected areas? That's the only disaster scale I pay attention to. Yes, so y'all force one. They're in Lee, uh, or they were in Lee, uh, um, uh, Florida. Sorry, uh, they went down towards uh, Perry to try to assess the damage. But along the way, they have passed um, a, a Waffle House that was closed, and I'm sure there's. I don't know the exact number. Uh, we'll look into it, but I'm sure there are multiple Waffle Houses that uh, have closed uh, in and around the, um, the the landfall area for sure, for certain. Major flood stage has been surpassed at the Steinachy uh, or the Steenachy River, up to eight feet. Blood stage is two feet. Nuts. Could this recurve up towards West Virginia? Absolutely not. Uh, it's not really possible. There's a big uh, trough that's going to be kind of guiding this thing out to sea. And uh, that's pretty much set in stone at this point. Maybe some rain, maybe a little bit of rain, but nothing, nothing impactful really at all. It does look like a, uh, an eye wall replacement cycle. The, the eye wall replacement cycle that we saw um, uh, right upon landfall, it probably did keep Florida from a worst case scenario in terms of wind. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of wind damage out there. Uh, we're seeing it. Uh, but definitely not a worst case scenario. Uh, however, that didn't help very much with the storm surge and uh, a pretty close to worst case scenario probably did happen uh, with that. Still don't know the extent of that damage. Uh, here's uh, an update from the National Weather Service in Raleigh. They're saying that their main concern with Adalia is a heavy rain. Storm totals of 2 to 5 inches are expected south and east of Raleigh with localized amounts in excess of 6 inches. This may result in flash flooding. River flooding is also possible. So as you can tell, most of the rain is going to happen over here in the eastern side of the state, avoiding the Piedmont for the most part and the mountains to be dry it might not even rain over here near mount airy
And uh, by the way, guys, I want to say a huge shout out to meteorologist Andy Hill, who has been an incredible help. Uh, everybody say thank you to Andy uh, for being awesome. He streamed all night last night. Um, and he's been with us for most of the day so far today. Uh, he's on close to hour 20 straight of hurricane coverage. Uh, so uh, I believe it's we're it's time to go to bed, Andy. Uh, you are uh, very much appreciated. And um, yeah, absolutely. Get some rest. And for those of you who um, don't know, I, I know a lot of you do. Andy has his own channel, Meteorologist Andy Hill, uh, here on YouTube. At the bottom of my uh, channel, if you want a direct link to that. Absorbing some more information, just getting some updates from the team here. National Hurricane Center did absolutely nail the forecast for this, uh, especially in terms of the placement. Lots of love in the chat for Andy. You love to see it. Once again, I spent a good deal. Well, I, I did sleep a wink. I slept a little bit, but I spent a good deal of last night watching Andy's coverage during the, the break that uh, I took. And uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, but just uh, realized once again how lucky we are to have Andy on our team and, and to have the ability to put him in front of, of so many people because the way that he describes things and, and how, how... I mean, he's a really... Uh, when it comes to mesoscale meteorology, especially, I think when it comes to looking at potential tornadoes and stuff, he's a genius and um, just super awesome to have him on the team. Got his meteorology degree in Appalachia, University of North Carolina in Asheville. Looks like flash flooding is starting to occur in Perry. Or it's been occurring. Saw a report come through. I, I'm really surprised I, we're not seeing or hearing more reports out of Valdosta yet. Um, I mean, this area has just seen an incredible amount of rain. Uh, the the downpour that's happening right now in Dasher is uh, it's got to be something else. Uh, Kathy says thanks for everything you do. What can we expect for White Marsh and Wilmington Islands in Savannah? Storm surge is possible, two to four feet, maybe five feet. Uh, the biggest problem that you're going to have is with potential uh, tornadoes, okay? Uh, in fact, right now, just to the south and west of uh, Savannah, we do have a tornado warning uh, still for Richmond Hill. Uh, and this area of rotation is nothing to balk at. That's definitely uh, something to um, pay extra close attention to as this could very well have a tornado on the ground moving towards Port Royal, Brisbane, and Richmond Hill. We've been talking about this one for a while. Um, hopefully, everybody is getting to safety. That's Bryan County, Georgia, and Chatham, Chatham County, Georgia. Really concerned about what might happen with these storms. 
as they move ashore. Uh, this could cause a problem for Hilton Head, Beaufort, Charleston. Remember, 10% probability of seeing a tornado uh, within 25 miles of any given point tonight, which is much higher than the usual, like 0.1%. Tallahassee did dodge a huge bullet and didn't get the worst of the winds. Uh, but still, the city of Tallahassee here is um, seeing reports of damage around town, like this huge tree on Buck Lake. Beaufort, my bad. Well, it's another one of those towns where it's different everywhere. It's different everywhere. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of images coming out now of some of the, the peak winds. Obviously, a lot of people were without service, uh, and we're starting to see that now. Oh, and also, um, there's a, a video I just retweeted of boats crashing into a bridge as the water, you know, kind of flew, is it, flowing backwards into uh, Steinachie River. Those boats are definitely destroyed. I think, I don't think I can show that on the stream, but. That's over there on X or Twitter, or whatever you want to call it. Wow. Uh, Misty, thank you. Uh, EMS, there is an EMS response in the town of Perry, Florida. Uh, Zach Hall is saying that he's noticed a large amount of law enforcement and even some military vehicles arriving. So EMS uh, law enforcement, they are able to make it to Perry, which is good. Um, Y'all force one, our, um, you know, our crew that's going down there to try to assess some of the damage is having a hard time getting out of the specific area that they're in, but they're going the general direction of Perry to also uh, see what's going on down there. Amy Smith, thank you. Crazy, uh, thank you. Lake City is getting pounded with winds right now. Yeah, so once again, it's hard to, it, it's easy to, I should say, focus on this part of the storm. This is obviously where the heaviest winds and rains are, but there's also an equally uh, dangerous uh, part of the storm over here in terms of wind. There's just less rain involved. There's some dry air involved. Uh, so, uh, Strong winds are moving from Live Oak into Lake City, uh, and this will continue up towards Fargo uh, as time goes on. But the wind field is getting much larger, uh, but it's also becoming less intense as time goes on. Okay, so hopefully it continues to die down. But Homerville, Waycross, you guys are getting ready to get in on some big time uh, winds here very soon. Uh, if you are in need of assistance locating a loved one or relative who is missing due to Hurricane Adalia, please contact the Red Cross at 1-800-RED-CROSS. 
1-800-RED-CROSS, that's 2767. Uh, please provide them with as much detail as possible to assist them potentially locating your loved one. That is a really cool thing. That is something that um, I feel like uh, uh, more organizations uh, should do. And in fact, I think that we could even try to do something like that. Um, go ahead, y'all force one. What do you got for us? All righty, Ryan. So we're st still trying to get out of here. Hey, can you guys mute that tablet? Thank you. We're still trying to get out of where we were originally in Lee City. However, we just came across like a forest that um, I was kind of surprised to see. It just looks like we see more of something that would be tornadic damage than necessarily straight line wind. We have two sides of the forest that are perfect trees still standing up. And right down the middle, every single tree is like chopped off right halfway. So it's very possible that there was a brief spin up tornado that came through here. We're actually going to try and launch the drone up here uh, within the next five minutes or so so you can get a view of this. But it was just kind of something that caught us off guard as we came through that every tree was fine. And then like the center of the forest is just wiped out. Awesome. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, for that. And um, uh, Kyle, if, if we could switch the, the camera to, to, to Caleb, just want to sh show everybody who was saying that. <laughs> this is uh, uh, Caleb, our um, uh, you know, our awesome one of our awesome reporters out there that's been helping us, and now uh, also helping us uh, assess the damage as we decide what we're going to do uh, as the y'all squad as we go forward in trying to figure out exactly how we're going to utilize the resources that we have. So far, thanks to you guys going to the y'all squad .org. Once again, that's the squad.org. There is a link in the description. We have raised $24,000 today. Um, and we're going to put that to good use immediately. Uh, we've got a big trailer. These guys are going to go fill it up full of supplies. We're going to take it to whoever needs it. Uh, if we are able to generate uh, enough, uh, you know, we, we're going to do anything we can. We're in contact with the uh, local uh, officials down there and we're uh, going to just see we're, we're going to show up and we say how can we help uh, and the if you guys want to help us do that uh, you can do so once again at the y'all squad.org you can choose any amount you want if everybody here gave like a dollar i don't even know how many people are watching but we'd probably have like fifty thousand dollars which would go a long way so um, that's what we're doing there. And then, uh, also we are continuing to watch the flooding unfold. I, I don't know when the water's going to go down in Keaton beach in these places, but, uh, it's still really high. We're, st we're still seeing uh, a, a pretty good continuous inundation of floodwaters in a lot of these places. Here's Deckel beach. Here's Keaton beach. Here's fish Creek. What in the world? Hey, Ryan, it's Brad. Um, I just posted a picture on Twitter. A video will be coming soon. Um, but I just posted a picture on Twitter of uh, what, you, what you guys missed when I lost service as a uh, whole roof of a building came flying off. Um, I wasn't sure if I caught it, but I, I did, and it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So uh, you may want to go check it out on, uh, on my Twitter page. All right, let's go look at that. Uh, that's Brad Arnold. I'm going to retweet this, by the way. If you guys want to follow Brad and all of our other storm chasers and the people that we work with on Twitter, you can do that. Or X. My goodness, man. I'll never remember to call it X. And this is while we didn't have service with them, but you can see the roof getting ripped off of this. Uh, it looks like a hotel or an apartment building here. Uh, with those 100 mile per hour plus winds that were coming through Perry, Florida just a couple hours ago. Or just, how long ago was it now? Like, just an hour ago, maybe. We still got that one tornado warning over there for Bryan County and Chatham County. Near Savannah, Georgia. And the area of rotation that we were looking at has led up a little bit, but I would stay in my safe spot if I'm in Richmond Hill. That could spin back up very quickly. Strong winds are still in the Valdosta and Dasher area, probably causing damage. They're going to move into Blanton and Howell here soon. Same thing for Lake City.
Did the shed, somebody, somebody said, did the shed survive? No, the answer is no. Unfortunately, the, uh, the shed that we were watching all morning in Horseshoe Beach, Florida was uh, completely washed away. Um, who knows where it is now? Uh, and uh, the camera, the camera itself was also washed away. We lost it completely. Actually, I don't know if the camera was washed away, but it was definitely destroyed. And this is what that looked like just a couple hours ago in Florida. You're just now tuning in. We are still covering major hurricane. Well, no longer major. It's category two, but uh, once major hurricane Idalia, as it's now in Georgia, making its way up uh, through southeastern Georgia, causing a lot of flooding and tornado concerns. And we have an update from Riley. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. Um, also no longer a major hurricane. Hurricane Franklin was just downgraded by the National Hurricane Center. It is now a Category 2 hurricane with winds of 105 miles an hour. However, this is looking like it's going to take a turn or it's going to turn and get a little closer to Bermuda than what we expected. So Bermuda can expect to start seeing tropical storm force winds pretty soon. They're already reporting wind gusts upwards of 50 miles an hour. All right. Thank you very much, Riley. And if you don't care, Riley, um, if you could just add a couple more words while I go get myself another water bottle, I'll be right back in like 30 seconds. All right. Sounds good. So um, as Ryan was just covering uh, the surge, it doesn't look like the surge is going down as quick as what we expected right now in Cedar Key. That's where Reed Timmer, I'm sure you saw some of his videos on Twitter. Um, that's where he was. Uh, our water levels at this point still stand at 9.3 feet. Um, what we're seeing here is because of the supermoon, we have the high tides and those strong tides are working to keep this water inland. And the longer this water sits inland, the, um, the more damage it's going to do. Also, it's looking at like about the same time that the storm surge starts to leave. That's going to be the same time that the tide starts to leave. So there's going to be even more forcing going out to um, the sea. So if you're in these areas, rip currents, I know that's going to be a big issue. Uh, there's a lot of force here and all of that's going to go out to sea. Um, it looks like we just got another update on Hurricane I Dahlia, uh, we are now at 90 miles per hour, so that is still a Category 2 hurricane. Um, uh, we have picked up forward speed now, moving north-northeast at 20 miles an hour. Our minimum central pressure is now 781 millibars. Um, it looks like a majority of the hurricane warnings uh, closer to the coast of Florida have been switched to tropical storm warnings. Uh, the storm surge warnings are going to remain in effect. Obviously, we can still see that there is significant surge occurring. As far as surge that has occurred, um, it looks like Keaton Beach, as of now, they have an unofficial peak of 11 feet. So that stretches from Keaton Beach all the way down to um, Cedar Key. And those are um, unofficial numbers. So what the unofficial numbers mean is we are yet to see survey teams make their way in there to confirm. So normally these numbers will go up a little higher. I would not be surprised if we saw areas of surge greater than 15 feet in some places. Um, okay, Riley. Yeah. Thank you so much. Back officially. Oh, new also tornado forgot watch, by the way. What is it? Oh, yeah. A new tornado watch uh, just got issued for portions of South Carolina and North Carolina. I also forgot I hadn't eaten. I have not eaten in a very long time, so we're ordering food. Okay. Uh, so uh, just another uh, little update <clears throat> on the tornado watch. I, I don't know if you saw that graphic pop up or not, but this is what it looks like. A few tornadoes likely. Isolated hail up to half an inch possible and isolated gusts up to 70 miles per hour possible. You got 2 million people here under the tornado watch from Wilmington, North Carolina to Myrtle Beach down to Charleston and Hilton Head. So the tornadic activity is about to ramp up, I believe, as we're seeing a bunch of supercells uh, come around in one of these uh, bands 
uh, and then slowly come across the shoreline. Still have unbelievable surge <clears throat> in Keaton Beach and in Deco Beach. Not sure when it's going to go down, but we're watching it. Also getting a look at, uh, getting a firsthand look at some of the damage from Y'all Force One, Jennifer, uh, Brad, and Brian. And my goodness, um, super, super huge shout out uh, to Mark Morrison uh, for the extremely generous $500 super chat. Look at that. Uh, thanks for all that you do to keep people safe from G2 Solutions Incorporated. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Everybody say thank you to Mark. We could not do what we do without people like Mark. And guess what? I'm getting a call from Chris Hall. How's it going, Chris? Hey, buddy. I have still little service. We're heading north. We finally got out of the town of Perry. Uh, dude, there is so many trees down, large trees blocking multiple roads. Uh, we're heading north. There's a large emergency personnel presence heading south into Perry. And a lot of airboats heading south and here down over the highway. This is we've maneuvered through so much. Um, anyway, what I was going to say is the town of Perry is now under um, a curfew, and the police is asking everybody to stay off the roads and go home. And that was from a Perry police officer just a minute ago. So we're heading north towards Tallahassee and. Try to get a little bit better of a uh, little bit better of service. All right, sounds good. Uh, thank you for the update. And um, I, once again, just keep calling if you can't reach me due to service. I understand. All right, bye. Okay, so that's Chris Hall. He, I don't know how well he's coming through there, but uh, lots of damage in Perry. He can't get out of Perry <laughs> really, and there's a curfew. Uh, so it looks like a, you know law enforcement's going to start enforcing that people stay out and go home um and uh, unless i guess you live in the uh, general vicinity there so um we've also got an update from riley go ahead riley hey ryan uh hurricane idalia is now a category one hurricane 90 mile per hour winds wind gusts to 125 um 90 mile per hour winds that's still not something you want to mess around with i know you might be thinking oh category one that doesn't sound that strong uh 90 mile per hour winds would be a destructive severe thunderstorm warning and that would also be i believe an ef1 tornado don't quote me if i'm wrong i'm very tired as we all are but just i'm pretty sure that's where that falls in terms of tornado and thunderstorms but this is still something we need to keep an eye on although it's definitely weakening Okay, uh, thank you, Riley. Good news. We are down to a Category 1 as the storm continues to move past Valdosta, up towards Homerville, and uh, Waycross. So we're, we're going to continue to see hurricane force uh, winds and gusts all the way up through southeast Georgia. But the big-time winds, the destructive winds, are dying down, and that is great news. The biggest problems we're going to have on our hands now are the flash flooding that's happening and the potential uh, tornadoes uh, a little bit farther to the north and east. Um, that's going to be the focus of this stream for, for the rest of the day, a, on top of assessing the damage back towards Florida. So we're going to stick with Y'all Force 1. We're going to stick with our chasers down there as they try to show us as much of the damage as possible. Um, and uh, we're going to continue to cover that. We're going to continue to try to fundraise and, and do everything we can to, uh, you know, help these people out. We might even get as far as figuring out our plan to, you know, try to release some of these resources in the form of supplies to whoever needs them as early as tomorrow. Uh, or, you know, even sooner than that. Like, that, that's why we have the Y'all Squad down there, and we are working on that diligently behind the scenes. Thanks to y'all. Uh, officially, uh, we have close to we're we're getting close to thirty thousand uh, dollars, and this has happened very quickly. The goal now is fifty thousand. Uh, so uh, once again, if you want to go to theyallsquad.org and help us out, even just a dollar, it goes a long way. Uh, the Lahab, thank you so much for that. Huge shout out to Susie Williams. That is, thank you and your gang for what you do. Thank you, Susie, for the very generous uh, support. Uh, you guys are awesome. Power outages in Florida are still hovering around 240,000. 
240,000 people without power, which is good news. We don't want to see that number go up. And in fact, I think we're, we're seeing it go down very slowly, but surely. Two hundred and seventy three thousand. OK, so it is going up a little bit, but it's not going up as fast as it was, which is good news. Hurricane Idalia made landfall earlier in the Big Bend of Florida with winds of 125 miles per hour. It's the strongest hurricane to make landfall in the Big Bend since um, probably the, the 1800s. If that if it happened, then um, we're we're still. It's hard to, in in my opinion, it's hard to trust the wind speed measurements from the 1800s. You know what what kind of anemometer were they using? <laughs> but hey, listen, I'm sure that you know uh, in. We've had several hurricanes come up this route. It is rare. We had one in 1966. We had one in the 1920s. We had the one in uh, 1896. I'm sure, you know, we've had them before, but I, I really do think that this one was stronger than the vast majority of any of them that have even thought about uh, coming up into this region. It's, yeah, it's now a 90 mile per hour category one hurricane. We got the tornado watch on the eastern side of South Carolina and North Carolina. Edward says the y'all squad is the best. Thank you, Edward. Uh, do you have any storm chasers in Georgia? I don't think so. Carly, um, if you could check, uh, we can switch to one if, if we do. I don't know if we, I think all the storm chasers went to Florida. <laughs> I, there might be, um, I, Chris Jackson is probably in South Carolina, but I don't know if, I don't know if he's out there right now. Y'all squad uh, vehicle is continuing to have uh, problems trying to get out of Madison, Florida. There's a lot of roads that are blocked, uh, but they're making it slowly but surely. Oh, we, I think we just had this issued uh, as a flash flood emergency for Valdosta. Yep. So uh, we talked about this earlier, how this would be possible. Uh, and here we are. Uh, a flash flood emergency is now in effect for uh, southeastern Brooks and Lowndes counties. And guys, a flash flood emergency is only issued in very life-threatening situations. Um, it's one of the more rare warnings that are ever issued, more rare than a tornado warning. Treat this as if it's a uh, confirmed PDS tornado warning. Uh, this is a flash flood emergency for a central and eastern Lowndes County, including Valdosta. This is a particularly dangerous situation. Seek higher ground now. Um, Life-threatening flash flooding of low water crossings, small creeks and streams, urban areas, highways, and streets will occur. Um, this is going to happen near Valdosta, Lake Park, uh, Exit 16, uh, uh, I-75, Moody Air Force Base, uh, Remerton, Dasher, uh, Valdosta Regional Airport, and uh, Exit 11, I-75, and Cl Clatville. All these places are getting ready to or are currently experiencing um, probably the worst flooding this area has seen in quite some time as the rain has been off the chain. I mean, that we have seen now, radar estimated, 
close to nine inches of rain between Valdosta and Dasher. It's I mean in a very short period of time. That is, that is a an unusually short period of time to see nine inches of rain. So I'm sure the flooding out there is really bad. Uh, Sierra says, what is, so we've raised $30,000. What's that for? Um, it's for the people. Uh, so everybody that I'm talking to today, um, our field reporters are, um, a lot of our storm chasers are a part of a nonprofit organization uh, that we founded earlier this year called the Y'all Squad. And uh, basically, we take uh, the funds that we're able to gather, a lot of them, uh, and donations from you guys uh, through this uh, YouTube channel and everything that we're doing, and we try to help people whenever uh, disasters strike. Uh, so we've done it for tornadoes. We've done it for hurricanes in the past. Uh, we, we've only really done Ian. But generally, the way it works is we take however much we raise and we go to these communities because we're already there. Like Chris Hall is going to help us. Uh, we're already there. And we say, hey, like, what can we do? I've got, I've got $100,000. <laughs> how, how does that help? And sometimes it's as simple as, oh, go buy every um, uh, shovel and, you know, cleaning supplies that, you know, this Lowe's has three towns down that doesn't need it and then bring it here. Sometimes it's, Hey, like we need food. Sometimes it's like, okay, let's go buy a bunch of grills and food and set up a tent and start cooking for people and the emergency responders during the cleanup efforts. We've done that. Sometimes it's, um, you know, there's one family in particular that is uh, in, in need. The insurance isn't helping them. FEMA isn't helping them. Happens all the time. And they need a new roof, uh, you know, and we help them with that. It's really just whatever we come across that we resonate with and we believe that our viewers will uh, resonate with as well. We just try to help in the cracks that aren't filled by FEMA and Red Cross and whatever else is going to be in place out there because there's always somebody who's forgotten in these kinds of situations. So that's what the Yellow Squad is. And I'm sorry if you're tired of hearing about it, but it's important uh, to, to what we do here. And anytime somebody asks, I am going to explain it. Here's the graphic for that flash flood emergency. 108,000 people under that. Still receiving a lot of reports of uh, flooding in clear water. Okay, at 1130. You have a copy, Ryan. I think I've got a little bit of service now. At 1130, we're going to get an, a live update from the National Hurricane Center. Somebody remind me. Um, and then we're going to hear from Chris, and then we'll go to... Um, We'll go to Riley, but first Chris. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Hey, we are on Highway 19 North. I don't know if my stream's coming through or not. We, we're trying it because we're getting a little better service. Uh, but I would not recommend traveling Highway 19 North towards Tallahassee. Uh, if you are driving a small vehicle, you will make it. However, anything bigger than a small SUV will not make it up Highway 19, 19 due to the amount of trees down. Okay. All right. Good information there from Storm Chaser Chris Hall, who's still on the ground back towards Perry. Uh, we got a lot of our guys down back here. Brad Arnold's down there as well, showing us the damage. Uh, Y'all Force One is not quite there, um, but on the way. Actually, don't even know exactly where their location is, but uh, we will uh, be getting an update from them soon. Uh, and then uh, we also are going to have uh, updates from Eastern South Carolina and uh, Georgia at some point. Uh, because I'm sure there's somebody out there uh, chasing that we can work with. 
Any news for Tifton, Georgia? Um, not really. Uh, you're missing a lot of the heaviest rain, which is good news, but you're still going to get probably some flash flooding. Uh, the biggest part of the storm is staying off to your east. The next in line for potentially life-threatening flooding, in my opinion, is going to be the Highway 84 corridor between Valdosta and Homerville. Lakeland, uh, Sermons, uh, Eight Mile Still, Henderson Still, all of you guys need to be preparing to run to higher ground as this is going to get nasty and it's going to get nasty fast. After the storm passes you, uh, what do you do? Uh, the best thing to do is to make sure you have a phone charged because a lot of times you're still going to have cell service. Uh, a lot of these places that were hit hardest today do have cell service right now. Um, and that way you can keep listening to me or you can keep listening to, you know, the National Weather Service, your favorite TV channel. Uh, having a NOAA weather radio helps a lot. Um, you want to wait until the area that you're in is declared safe before you re-enter it or you leave your home. So we seriously, we don't know if there's a gas leak. We don't know if there's, you know, what kind of uh, particulates uh, have been released from X factory or whatever it is. So we, like stay in your home or don't go back if you evacuated until it's been declared safe. Um, and then you want to watch for closed roads. If you come upon a barricade or a flooded road, turn around, don't drown. Stay on firm, dry, dry ground, moving water only six inches deep can sweep you off your feet. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind and never use a generator indoor indoors. Uh, now with that, we've got another update from Riley. Go ahead, Riley. Hey Ryan. So I'm um, speaking of some of the damage we're seeing from the storm. It's been reported by the fire department in Cedar key that they have multiple um, propane tanks that are venting and or on fire and they can't reach them because of the, catastrophic storm surge which at this moment in time the storm surge in um, cedar key is still nine feet so there is nine feet of water trapping people near burning propane tanks that's not a good situation not good at all and uh, you know we can see through the cyclone port uh, cameras that the the water is still incredibly high here it, it is going down but it's going down much slower than what we would like to see it go down because, you know, you know, we heard yesterday in Cedar Key alone, you know, the population is 700, but 30 people decided to stay back. Some of those people need help, um, certainly, uh, and it's going to be hard to reach them it, it, until that gets down to probably half uh, where it is right now. Unfortunate situation. family safe. Our community's done a wonderful job keeping themselves and their family safe. Now is not the time to get complacent. It's not safe out on the roads. Please be patient. We'll get you out on the roadways as quick as we can. Our community's done a wonderful job keeping them. So that's from the, uh, the Tampa, Florida uh, police department. Not safe yet to be completely driving around anywhere that you want to go. They're working on it. They're working on it. Uh, Valdosta is getting hit very hard getting hit very hard right now um, with the strong winds too, which I, I, we're starting to hear some of those reports. The Valdosta honestly might end up being one of the harder hit areas out of the whole thing because you, you've got the, the potentially catastrophic flooding uh, that, that's happening. Uh, and then on top of that, you have really strong winds as well. We're getting uh, reports of several downed trees and power lines, similar to what we were seeing in Perry. Uh, from that region. So unfortunately, that is what we're dealing with. And the winds are going to last and the rain are going to last for at least a little while longer before this is completely out of your hair. And similar conditions are moving into Lakeland and Homerville. Keep that in mind. If you live out there, if, if it don't seem too bad yet, it's going to get worse. Uh, News Project... <laughs> A huge shout out to you for your um, 
very generous contribution and your very um, insightful comment. I appreciate it. Uh, here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, we've got nothing. That's, that's normal. You're not going to see much of anything. We're, we're going to have a round of storms come by. Um, and you know, you might see some, uh, tornadic activity, the, the center of the storm with the strongest winds and stuff like that won't be over there until much later. Um, it's, I don't even think it's supposed to happen today. I think that'll be early in the morning, uh, Thursday morning before it gets over there to you. Tornado threat is really what we're looking out for right now. Brian M. Finger has given us a uh, first-hand view of some of the damage near Keaton Beach, Florida. Lots of tree damage. Haven't seen a whole lot of structures, but I think he's just on some of the back roads here trying to find his way around the roads that are blocked, and he's not having an easy time. Y'all Force 1 also having a hard time here. <laughs> Lots of trees down. They've been able to get around a lot of them, but some of them are just too big. We've get, they've got a chainsaw with them, but they're not. Um, they're, they're trying to get to Perry or, or somewhere to uh, assess the damage and talk to some uh, people as fast as they can. And it would probably take longer to clear the trees, go one way, than it would to be to turn around. Uh, Laurie, Laurie says, here's cash towards a new shed in Horseshoe. <laughs> yeah, they, they are going to need a, a new a shed, and hopefully it's built just as good as the one that they had before. I appreciate that. And I know we've had some uh, fun with the shed today. I think that's, I, I've seen it everywhere. Uh, but unfortunately, that is a testament to how strong uh, the, the storm was. And, and there's a lot of structures uh, that are probably in a similar shape right now that we just haven't seen yet because we haven't had access to the the area yet. As soon as we do get in there, though, I'm sure uh, Brad or Brian, somebody's going to put a drone in the air and take us over that. Um, as soon as we see that, we will let you know. Ooh, we got a new tornado warning in Charleston County, South Carolina. So this is associated with that new tornado watch. We've got an area of rotation right here uh, just to the south and west of uh, Hollywood. And it's coming towards Hollywood and Ravenel and Capwell's Crossroads. Right now it's getting ready to cross Highway 17 up towards Del Mar and uh, Del Mar Crossroads. So uh, if you are in Charleston County, South Carolina, take shelter now. It's not coming towards the city of Charleston, but there are other storms that we'll have to watch closely uh, in the future uh, that have the ability to do that. Um, okay, so we have an update from Riley. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. So I was looking at some historical data to see the last time we saw a um, Category 1 hurricane go through Valstosta. And um, it was 1950. Hurricane King was the last time we saw a Category 1 hurricane in Valdosta. And that's actually the only other one that ever went through there. Okay, wow. Um so that just goes to show you how not only along the, the coastal areas of Florida and around the Big Bend, but all up and down the path of this thing, this storm's going to be uh, probably a, a once-in-a-lifetime or at least a once-in-a-generation kind uh, of event, or at least we can hope. We can hope that something like this doesn't happen all the time. The, the path that this storm took was extremely unique, and that's, that's why it's unprecedented. It's not the strongest storm that's ever hit Florida or any of these areas. Uh, it's not the uh, biggest storm uh, or anything like that. It's specifically the kind of storm that it was and the path that it took. The, its approach to, to part of Florida that it uh, got to uh, was unique, and we'll talk more about that in a bit. But uh, definitely seeing some never-before-seen uh, kinds of damage uh, in a lot of these areas. I'm really worried about the Highway 84 corridor right now between Valdosta uh, and Homerville. Uh, this, the rain there is relentless. We've already got nine inches of rain. 
It's still coming down. If we end up with close to 15 inches of rain in any one of these places, there are going to be um, almost similar scenes out of that as what we see a little bit farther to the south where the hurricane made landfall. That, that's how serious this flash flooding situation may become. Uh, is it going to be bad in Myrtle Beach? It could be bad in Myrtle Beach. Um, I think the, the worst thing that could happen in, in Myrtle Beach is going to be um, a, a tornado situation. I think the, you know, the tropical storm force winds, I think you guys will handle that just fine. But there is going to be a chance of uh, isolated supercells coming up later today that we'll have to watch. And uh, that's, that's kind of what we're doing now. That's the, that's the biggest point of the stream at this point is to keep you guys updated on the tornado threat and then assessing the damage from the landfall. Um, so this storm up here, the, the storm south and west of Charleston, I, I would be surprised if it didn't have a tornado in it. Uh, once again, that's coming up towards Hollywood. Um, Hollywood and Ravenel. Take shelter. You live over here. That's going to be a very dangerous storm. Extremely dangerous. Um, a huge shout out to uh, Jacob Galloway uh, for, once again, another huge, generous $1,000 donation to our nonprofit, The Y'all Squad, over at theyallsquad.org. He says, I love what you do, Ryan. I know this is going to a great cause. Keep doing what you do. You help more people than you know. Jake, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. The Y'all Squad team is currently in the background uh, talking about uh, what they're going to do. Um, in the situation uh, where, you know, we, we get into our position and we know how that we need to uh, start using these resources. So we're already working on our plan. Working on that right now. phone started ringing. And we're, we're going to keep you guys updated on what that is, by the way. That's another part of the continued coverage here. Ooh, NATO cast. 15% paints a little 15% area right there in Southern South Carolina. So the tornado threat is uh, seemingly increasing. Blondie2775, thank you very much for that. Yeah, if we take a look at southern Florida, there's a couple more rain bands that's got to go by that might interact with the environment enough to produce a brief tornado. Um, but you guys are pretty much going to be out of the woods after these swing by. Um, eastern Florida, you guys still have to, like, you still have to wait until this goes by before we can call that done. Uh, so you guys are still needing to be on high alert. And then obviously all of the uh, eastern Georgia area, south, southern South Carolina, eastern South Carolina, into North Carolina, you guys have still got a long ways to go before this is over for you. It's hatched, yeah.
Um, let's get an update from Brad. Brad, uh, just chiming in uh, to see if you got any updates for us. Uh, are, you, are you hearing anything? Um, are you seeing anything uh, that we haven't uh, heard from you so far? Uh, and what's your plan uh, for the rest of the, the day? Are you going to get some rest anytime soon, or what's up? I hear food. Do I hear food over there? What kind of food did I get? Oh, let's go. I told them to surprise me because I, I didn't want to think about it. And they did good. Looks like there's a lot of traffic. Um, it's almost at a standstill on Interstate 10 between Tallahassee and uh, Live Oak. So I wouldn't try that uh, if I'm traveling out here. There's also a ton of traffic, obviously, in all these roads that connect Perry to Tallahassee and Live Oak as well. Valdosta is starting to see some road closures, and it's hard to get up there even on I-75. So there's a lot of standstill traffic right now, even on the interstates as a result of the storm. Yeah, how long will the NHC live stream last? Um, yeah, so uh, sorry, a little bit delayed on the message right there. Uh, we're still just north of uh, Stenhatchee, I think is how you say it, uh, working on getting a video up right now. Um, we have seen a lot of search and rescue boats, ATVs, things like that. They're heading down to uh, that area uh, to unfortunately try to rescue some people that had stayed. Uh, we've also seen a lot of the National Guard uh, pulling up as well. Um, probably going to start heading further south, try to get to some other areas, um, Cedar, Cedar Key, um, all, all those little areas that weren't safe to, to ride it out in, uh, going to go check it out, um, and then uh, probably catch a nap and then probably actually start heading home at some point, uh, but it's not going to be till later on this afternoon when we're able to do that. So um, just going to go out and start looking for a little bit more damage. Um, is there anything that you need me to do? Um, no, not really. Uh, just keep showing us uh, whatever's going on in front of you. We, we still haven't heard a whole lot about the extent of the damage in some of the hardest hit areas because it's, I mean, it's really still happening in a lot of those areas. So we are uh, just waiting and seeing, and then we're also tracking what's happening with this as it moves on up into Georgia. So just keep chiming in or, or I'll keep uh, coming to you ever so often. Uh, Michael Dennison, yeah, thank you. In, in Stanhatchee, uh, Stan um, the, the, the whole, all the neighborhoods are underwater. Um, there is not one, <clears throat> it, uh, there's not, not one dry house there. We couldn't even drive all the way in there because there was, you know, feet of water over the roads just from the river, not, not including the actual surge from the Gulf uh, that had pushed over um, into, into the town. So, um, that, that area is completely submerged. There's probably folks that are trapped there. Uh, I, I'm anticipating that that's, that's how it is all up and down the West Coast. Um, those areas that, you know, we're going to experience that 12 to 17 foot storm surge. Um, as far as damage uh, back in Perry, there was some structural damage. Businesses took some, took some damage. Uh, power lines, tree, a lot of trees down, a lot of trees in this area. Um, but, but some structural damage as well. So as, if I see anything, I'll let you know. Okay, sounds good. That is from, uh, that was Brad Arnold, and uh, he's going to be with us for uh, the rest of the evening, um, or until he needs to get some rest, because remember, all these guys drove all the way down here, they was up all night, they was chasing a hurricane, big adrenaline rush, and uh, you know, at some point, they're going to need some rest, so we'll, we will gladly uh, let them take that whenever they need it. Um, here's some uh, more damage from Tallahassee, which ended up getting a lot more tree damage uh, than what I guess we originally thought. Um, uh, so we're starting to see a lot of pictures pull, uh, pour in from these areas. Uh, Carly, yes, if you don't care to just put it over here next to me, I'm just going to grab it and devour it during the NHC uh, live stream. Um, okay, we've got an update from Y'all Force One. Go ahead, Caleb. 
We're muted. Uh, yeah, if you don't care. Do you hear us, Rad? Yep, I hear you now. Perfect. All right, so we have finally found our way out of uh, Lee and uh, Madison. We've actually made it south. We're parallel with um, Mayo right now, and that's where we're heading, is over towards Mayo. So we're heading back east. And then we're going to drop south a little bit and take the coastal highway back down towards um, Osceola, stopping in some, or not Osceola. Ocala stopping in some of those towns that have been hard to say. We're going to try and deploy the drone as well uh, down by the coast, providing the wind speeds aren't too high to give you guys a good look at uh, is what, what's happening in some of those coastal cities uh, that have been affected by the storm surge. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, guys. That's Caleb. And just a little note for you guys. I know there's a lot going on and no, no hate to <laughs> the production crew out there, but like uh, it, we can hear you much better through discord and that was through zoom uh so uh, just just a little note um um uh, but anyways that's the y'all squad they're going to go down uh to uh the uh the coast and and show us the extent of what's going on down there uh and then also that'll help us assess the damage hopefully we're going to be able to at some point um talk with uh, an emergency uh, personnel an emergency manager a fire department something just to get an idea of what's needed so we can uh, really get going uh with the re recovery the relief down there um, and, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much uh, what's going on along the coast. We're still waiting for the water to go down in a lot of places. You see, we still have significant flooding, uh, in, uh, Deco beach and Keaton beach, Florida. Uh, we're, we're waiting for the water to go down so we can get in there and really see what's going on. But in the meantime, uh, our focus is shifting a little bit to flash flooding, which is happening in Valdosta up towards Homerville in Georgia and the tornado threat. Uh, we have a tornado warning still for Hollywood and Ravenel in Georgia or South Carolina. And that does look like it could still be producing a tornado right now uh, as it moves up towards Warren Crossroads and Delmer Crossroads. So please take shelter if you're in Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, we've got some information about shelters. Uh, emergency shelters are opening as needed um, in South Carolina. Please visit our shelter update page for location. So that, that's the link that you need to click there. We will retweet this on our Y'all Squad uh, page. So um, at the Y'all Squad, I believe, on Twitter or X, uh, you'll be able to find that there if you need information on shelters. We're waiting on a live stream from the National Hurricane Center, which should start soon just to see what kind of updates they have Yeah, the the um, the volume situation with my mic and, and like the volume of the remote people is it's something we've been working for like a year on a solution to it. But we have so many different audio sources and so many different moving parts. It's hard to manage completely. We're getting better, but I am sorry about the differences in all the different audio levels. Still don't have anything from NHC. Look, it's not just me late to the stream. Sometimes. It can happen to anybody.
Yeah, it's Category 1 right now. We are looking at a Category 1 storm still in Florida, which is uh, pretty, it's a pretty big deal. We haven't had a Category 1 go through this area in a very long time. The Tampa Police Department is live, though. Reported, so no widespread power out. We're asking everyone uh, that is in the zone A to stay where you're at. Don't come out. That water is continuing uh, to come into our area. The storm surge right now in conversation uh, with the Highway Patrol and with FDOT. And we have the Riley, just throw me that link if they go and we'll switch. Uh, is open in both directions except for the West Shore uh, off ramp. That's. Oh, you're kidding. It's closed right now. And these closures more than likely will stay in effect until about five o'clock this afternoon. Courtney Campbell Causeway, only the westbound lanes are open. And as more water comes in, both of those lanes may close as well. Howard Franklin is closed in both directions. Davis Island's bridge. Uh, it's open to get onto the island from Hyde Park, uh, not from Bayshore at all. And the if anyone needs to get off of um, Davis Islands, they need to stay along Plant Avenue. And there's a possibility of that closing down as well as the water comes in. Had a conversation with uh, John Kors early this morning from Tam Tampa General Hospital, and they are keeping all of their personnel. They were putting the uh, uh, first shift that had worked 12 hours. Uh, they were going into sleep. The second shift was coming out. The hospital is full. Everyone's aware that is our our uh, regional trauma center at that location. So they are still tending to the patients. They have the ability to see units up, assessing the damage, and reporting out on uh, the the boats, the docks, any of those issues, the flooding in the downtown area along Bayshore. A number of cars, individuals that have driven into the water and had to be pulled out, rescued by police. Um, so please be very cognizant of your surroundings and also stay tuned, stay informed of the real time information because as that water comes in, it's gonna come in very quickly and you're not gonna be able to react quickly enough of danger. Uh, not suffered a great deal of damage in our community. It's mostly caused by that storm surge, but we need to pay attention to that as well. So next I will have Mirabelle Garrett come up and she is going to communicate with our Hispanic community. Mirabelle. Thank you, Mayor Castor. Uh, ahora, para ponernos al día con relación a la tormenta eh, Idalia, fuimos sumamente afortunados de que la tormenta... I guess the National Hurricane Center no canceled tocó. on us. And this, this keeps buffering. Lots of people drove into water and had to be rescued in Tampa. Yeah, we're hearing a lot about that. Oh, I'm not I'm not shy. I've, I've eaten on camera. I'm just, I'm trying to keep the sandwich away from my keyboard and my microphone. <laughs> I'm not hiding from you guys. Trying not to make a mess.
Sorry, I'm I'm just looking through this giant pile of links that I have here. Uh, so far, what I've heard about the uh, fatality thing is there's two confirmed Idalia-related fatal fatalities, um, but there's not; those are not related to the storm surge or the high winds, as far as I know. Um, so, so far, so good. Yes, Kinsey. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Sorry for being quiet. I'm just, I'm going through. I'm trying to see if there's anything that I've missed here uh, that I haven't shown because we have a, a huge backlog of imagery and links and, and updates. I'm pretty sure I've went through everything. Right now, uh, what we're doing or the main point uh, of, of what we're doing is just kind of relaying news about what's happened along the coast. We're just now starting to figure out what happened. And then we're continuing to look at what's downstream in Georgia and South Carolina and North Carolina. Brian is stuck. Brian's not stuck. He's moving. He, he could get stuck. This is the exact kind of stuff that um, you should not drive through. If you're, you ever heard the, uh, the term turn around, don't drown. This is why we say that. You don't know what's underneath the water there. It could The road could wash out. If you're not familiar with the area, there could just be a huge hole in the ground. <laughs> you know, like maybe that was under construction and there was like a bunch of cones up and like all those got washed away. And now you're just like going to hit the the sinkhole or whatever it was that, the, that was being blocked off. You know, like it sounds ridiculous, but something like that literally could happen. Yep, there is a, another tornado warning over here, too, that I can update you on. Um, the, the tornado storm, the tornadic storm, is still moving up towards Delmar Crossroads. I wouldn't be surprised if they continued that warning up towards Sprucewood, so keep that in mind. Uh, Brenda, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you, Brenda. Thank you, uh, Kentucky Honey, <laughs> for the uh, support. A lot of people are asking about whether or not it's going to loop around. We'll talk about that. Uh, as soon as I get done with this sandwich, we will talk about the models and the forecast and the future of the storm. Because I know that's something that we haven't had a chance to do today because we've been so focused on like the, the now. We might have a second to go over that, though, right here in a minute. 
Okay, so as expected, they're reissuing this tornado warning now for Charleston and Dorchester County uh, in uh, Georgia. This is going to include Spruce Wood, Salisbury Acre, Acres, and Crestwood. Take shelter now. And look at all of these areas of rotation. All coming up towards the coast. The eye is still looking really good on radar. We've got we still got this huge semicircle blob here, uh, where the worst conditions are occurring between Douglas, Homerville, uh, Valdosta, and Blackshear. It's going to continue to go in this direction. Some places that we've got to be concerned about later this uh, afternoon and evening is going to be Hazelhurst, Baxley, uh, Reedsville, Statesboro. Swainsboro, and then, you know, even areas near the coast, Savannah, Hilton Head, you guys are going to see an increase in winds and rain as that approaches as well. How bad will it get in Vidalia, Georgia? I couldn't tell you exactly, but it's going to be similar, but slightly less than what we've seen in Valdosta. And it could be around the same. I think the winds are definitely going to be much less, uh, but the the rain, the flash flooding, all that is probably on its way to Vidalia. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, draw a line from Douglas to Vidalia um, and all that area in between could be experiencing flash flooding within the next couple of hours, almost certainly. Lisa, thanks for becoming a slight risker. Yeah, I'm still not, we're not getting much in the way of news updates um, about what's happened along the coast, which it could go one or two ways. Like, well, that could be a really good thing. Uh, it could be that there's not much news to report on. <laughs> uh, or it could be a really bad thing. Uh, and it's so extensive uh, that we just haven't had time to compile how to tell the world like you know there's several different ways to look at that i'm hoping it's the 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 first thing um because that would be the best case scenario and remember the water still hasn't gone down in a lot of the places that we need to assess um we got an update from riley go ahead riley yeah ryan i was just about to add and say that i'm assuming the reason we haven't seen damage reports is because most damage from a hurricane outside of tree damage is going to be structure damage from the strong storm surge and points like cedar key are still under eight feet of water so the majority of the damage is not yet visible so once we see that storm surge recede which it is doing right now then we might actually be able to see what the damage is absolutely so we are waiting for that and then while we wait for that, we are continuing to monitor uh, the ongoing situation, <coughs> which is this, uh, you know, the continuing hurricane here through Georgia. I want to call out some locations that will be next in line for the heaviest rains and strongest winds. So uh, the combination of heavy rains and strong winds is going to be Willacoochee, Pearson, Nichols, Taylortown, Denton. Um, Douglas, uh, Baxley, Hazelhurst, Glenville, Reedsville, Claxton, all the way up there to, towards Statesboro and Vidalia. Okay. If you live in any of those places, you're going to have a rough couple of hours coming up as the hurricane is coming right for you. And, and it is still a hurricane at this point. A lot of times, um, you know, by now the thing would be a tropical storm. You know, you would just be worried about the, the rains, but we are still going to see up to hurricane force winds through a lot of this area. And that could continue all the way uh, over towards Savannah, Georgia as well. Um, but here's where we're going to see really strong winds, but not a lot of rain uh, on the southern side. So if you are in Waycross, 
If you are in Folkestone, if you're in Nahunta, uh, Brunswick, or Darien in Georgia, you are going to get some really strong tropical storm to hurricane force winds, but there's not going to be a whole lot of rain involved with it. Uh, all of the rain is kind of stuck <laughs> back here on the left-hand side of the semicircle, which is quite the sight to see. But it's one of the reasons why we're having such a bad time with flooding. All of the water is kind of just being compiled in this one area here. Uh, we're hearing that several search and rescue teams from other states uh, are currently on their way to Florida. I know uh, one of the people that we work with often uh, through our nonprofit, Marco Patriots, uh, they've got a rescue boat and they are somewhere in the Cedar Key area. So I don't know if they're currently in the middle of doing uh, that kind of thing or not, but I'm sure we will hear from them sooner than later. Oh yeah, models. <clears throat> I promised you guys we would look at that. So just to let you know, we're getting ready to look at a bunch of forecast models. Um, and this is my first time looking at a bunch of them because I've been so focused on the, the now casting and not the forecasting. So, you know, some of these models might show something crazy and we can't take it to heart. Okay, these are forecast models. Let's just see what they're showing. Um, uh, latest 12Z update from the HRRR just to give us an idea of what the uh, reflectivity could look like as we go through the rest of the night. You can see here by 4 p.m. the heaviest rain will be in southeastern Georgia moving out of the Valdosta region and kind of spreading out into the south central uh, South Carolina area. And a lot of the supercellular activity will be out to sea, but any of them that kind of come onto land even for a short period of time will be causing a significant amount of trouble. Uh, the supercell problem could become even worse, though, as we go into like the 8 to 10 p.m. time frame right there around southern South Carolina. It's these storms right here that we're watching for the potential for, um, I'm sorry, that's Southern North Carolina, but the potential for tornadoes. Uh, and then that's going to continue all the way into uh, 5 a.m. Thursday before uh, things really start getting out of here uh, in the middle of the day on Thursday. It'll, I'm telling you, tornadoes and rain, that's South Carolina's a problem with this. I, I'm really not concerned much at all with the sustained winds around the center of the storm. The, the tornado threat and the rain threat is going to be uh, pretty high there if this uh, comes to fruition because you're going to have at around 11 p.m. tonight, you're going to have a training line of essentially supercells going over the same areas over and over again, and that's going to be finished off with our semicircle blob that's causing the emergency flooding back towards Valdosta. So that's going to lead to some big time problems. Uh, in and around uh, places in South Carolina, like, for example, uh, Sumter, Florence, Conway, uh, up there towards Myrtle Beach, and then into North Carolina between Whiteville and Wilmington. I would be watching out big time there for the tornado threat and the flash flooding threat right later tonight. And then it's going to be out of here, y'all. And I, I do want to show you at least a couple of the global models um, just to see if we're still thinking about that loop-de-loop -loop that some of the earlier models were showing uh, this thing leaving the United States and then kind of coming back around for round two. Is the GFS showing that still? No. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> Did you see that? Okay, so here's uh, Hurricane Adalia. Um, <laughs> let's push it forward. Okay, it goes out to sea. Some of the models at this point were taking it right straight back towards Florida, but the latest GFS doesn't do that. It kind of just sits there and then gets <laughs> uh, gets kind of sucked around uh, a mostly invisible trough. I'm not sure what's going on there. And then it gets lifted off. Um, after becoming essentially a nor'easter. So that's probably a pretty unrealistic scenario. Um, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, so let's check out the uh, Euro. What does the Euro show? Uh, let's go to the Zero Z data suite. 
Um, goes out to sea uh, around 9 a.m. to noon tomorrow. Uh, and then we see it try to go down to the south. But it gets pulled up by that same piece of energy. But this is a very more, I guess, realistic view of this. It gets pulled up and then slung out uh, to sea or back up towards Nova Scotia and New Brunswick uh, around 8 p.m. Uh, way, way into the future around September 7th. So this is a a pretty realistic view of what could happen here. And essentially what this means is it's going to be nobody's problem after it leaves the U S I don't think we'll ever think about it again. And the idea of the potential wraparound or the round two is fleeting. Now it was a real possibility at one point, but I think that the models are kind of coming away from that consensus. There's going to be a big piece of energy, some sort of trough that drives it up to the North. So that's that. Um, the rest of the country, for the most part, uh, is going to have okay weather. We're, we're going to have semi-zonal flow. A couple little troughs come through, but really through September 8th, at least for now, um, it's looking like your friendly weather dude here might be able to take a couple days break. Of course, we'll be working uh, with the nonprofit to, uh, you know, make sure we ut properly utilize our resources. But um, the weather will be at least somewhat calm for a little bit. What's going on here in uh, Yal Force One? What do we got going on here? Are they helping? Are they? Uh, Getting somebody out of the side of the road. Yeah, I think they've, uh, yeah, they've got a tow strap hooked up to the, the truck there. And they're going to try to pull this guy out. Look at that. Y'all force one. Caleb and Austin. Kyle and Chandra out there saving the day. I thought that was Reed Tamer for like two, 2.5 seconds. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Very cool. Uh, they are currently located um, uh, somewhere between, uh, they're, they're around Mayo. They're still uh, technically in the Madison area, but they're, they're closer to Mayo. They're trying to make it to Perry. Uh, I don't know if they'll be able to make it or not, but that's what they're trying to do. Uh, Hidden Spectrum, thank you for the very generous super chat. Uh, Harry Brake, thank you uh, for your contribution as well. Linda Harper, thank y'all. Okay, so we got that guy out of the ditch, and he's on his merry way. Uh, let's see here. Somebody said, did you get any sleep, Ryan? Yes. Thanks to meteorologist Andy Hill, who took the graveyard shift last night. Um, I did sleep for probably around two and a half hours, three hours. So I'm good to go. I'm good to go for a little while longer. I don't, how long have we, how long have we been live? We started at, f so we've been going on. I can't do math. Hold on. I'm fine, but I can't do math. <laughs> Six, seven hours, something like that. 
Um, and we're going to go to at least we're going to go at least ten. If I feel like extremely tired after ten hours, um, then we might call it a day. But we could go twelve. That's the YouTube limit on uh, preserving the the live stream. Seven hours. Uh, we're already getting reports of power being restored in Ocala, Florida. Uh, we, so we did lose power there uh, briefly, but thankfully the biggest part of uh, the um, the storm uh, missed that area completely, which is good news for our Y'all Squad team because that's where they're headquartered. Uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. Um, two updates for you here. We have broken the eight-foot mark, and we are now at 7.96 feet of water in cedar key also um the sarasota police department recently tweeted or asked whatever that the ringling causeway bridge and the siesta bridge are both closed indefinitely um i'm not sure what indefinitely means as like are they broken beyond repair or what that means but they're closed okay all right thank you very much uh riley for that update it looks like the water is going down in Steenhatchee uh, pretty significantly. We can see the pier a little bit back there again, or the boat dock, whatever that is. We still see a lot of debris in the water, and it's definitely still out of the uh, normal area that it's in, but this definitely looks lower. Um, uh, if we come down to Cedar Key, I'm interested in this one as well. Uh, oh, yeah, this one's going down a lot. So uh, Cedar Key, um, we're st we can see ground again. We can see ground again, uh, which is good. And what else do we have? Fish Creek. Fish Creek, there's something blocking the camera lens here, uh, but I still see a lot of water out there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Keaton Beach, this actually looks like it's higher. This, this definitely looks like the, the water's not going down yet here, which makes sense. The, the winds are still oriented in a way to where it's pushing the water on shore. That'll start going down sooner than later, though. Um, and yeah, same thing for uh, Deckel Beach. The water seems like it's higher here than it was before. So we're going to continue to see the storm surge uh, probably maintain in this area, and it's going to go down like everywhere else. Uh, and it'll eventually go down uh, right around Keaton as well, but it might take a little bit longer. The Ringling Causeway Bridge is closed. Did the NHC ever go live? They did not. Okay. Uh, Tracy Robertson, thank you very much for the very generous super chat. And I really do appreciate everybody for sharing the stream uh, and liking it. You've helped a lot. I think we've we've reached a lot of people today that normally would have never paid attention to mainstream news and all that kind of stuff. So we're doing what we're here to do. Thanks to you. Uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. Um, it looks like there has been some upgraded hurricane warnings and tropical storm warnings. We might just want to zoom out for a second, take a look at those. There are some tropical storm warnings that got bumped up to a hurricane warning, as well as some hurricane warnings that are now tropical storm warnings. All right. Give me just a second. I'll pull up a good graphic uh, for that. Uh... Okay. Uh, so here is a look at the watches and warnings. All the pink that you see over here is excessive heat warnings and um, red flag warnings. Uh, but the reds, uh, a lot of what you see over here in the red is going to be um, hurricane warnings and hurricane watches and tropical storm warnings. The dark red is tropical storm. 
the lighter red is um, hurricane warning. So you can see that there, we've got hurricane warnings going all the way up to south, southern, southern South Carolina. And this might actually not even be fully updated here. But the tropical storm watches go all the way up to the tip of um, North Carolina. And we'll refresh that periodically and show you as the new updates roll out. Search and rescue, I think, is officially underway now in places like Cedar Key where the water is going down. Uh, Horseshoe Beach, also search and rescue is ongoing. It was hit very bad. The water is going down now, but I'm seeing some initial video of what looks to be very, very bad. Um, okay, I think we've got an update from Y'all Force One. Uh, go ahead. You hear us now? Uh, yes. Awesome. So right now, I just wanted to update you guys. I knew you were talking. I've actually rerouted because from everything that we're hearing, they're actually trying to get everybody out of Perry um, right now. Police are kind of shutting that area down. So we're actually heading towards the Cedar Key area just to see what's going on down there and see if we can deploy a drone to get you guys a better. Talking about us going to Perry, we have an interview of what's happening. Um, we also heard from the emergency manager that we spoke to yesterday. Um, or the city manager from um, Crystal River, and they sent us a photo as well as a video, I think, um, of about a foot and a half to two feet of water inside Crystal River. So there's definitely storm surge all the way down the coast that is affecting people. All right. Well, thank you so much, um, and we'll keep checking back in with you. Keep us updated. Every time uh, you hear something else or you make a new decision as to where you're going next, just let us know as uh, part of – what we're doing now is really just tracking what these guys are doing right now. They're, they're trying to find where the damage is, what's going on. Uh, hopefully we're working on getting in touch with, you know, more uh, emergency officials. We've, we've been talking to some city managers and, and stuff. And, and basically we just need to find the right people to ask, like, what do we do with this uh, $37,000 we've raised today? Thanks to you guys. Um, and, and literally it, we're going to coordinate with these local officials down here and just see what is the best way to make this work. We don't have a whole lot of red tape. <clears throat> we do this like for YouTube, <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? Like we're not like the red cross where there's like a million different, we're not the government where there's like a million different paper uh, trails and like red tape and, you know, optics. I, you know, we're going to do whatever it takes to help people. That's all that matters. Um, so we just got to get in front of the right people to see what is needed and how to get those resources deployed as quickly as possible. Once again, if you want to help us do that, we are closing in on $40,000 raised. That's, that's going to go a long ways. Uh, but I would love to see us potentially get up there to, um, a hundred thousand. Um, it's just so we can really, uh, you know, get some uh, relief on the ground out there and, and try to make every dollar go as far as possible. So if you want to help go to the y'all squad.org, there is a link in the description and it's tax deductible. You can do a credit card, uh, and a bunch of different methods. Um, and it, we would appreciate it a lot. And if I look and sound tired, it's because I, I, I'm, I really not, <clears throat> I think my voice is just given out from talking so much. I'm I'm feeling fine. I saw some <laughs> somebody in the chat was like, "Wow, what's wrong with him?" I uh, David said I'd focus on Steenhatchy. Uh, we are from there, and everyone on the east side of the bridge is hurting. Headed over there with an airboat soon. Okay, well we've got people close to there, um, uh, so that that is definitely a place that we will uh, kind of focus some of our uh, relief efforts. I think that Cedar Key, Horseshoe Beach, those three areas <clears throat> are definitely going to be the hardest hit when all is said and done.
the uh, tornado warning near Charleston has been allowed to expire. <clears throat> Cedar Key would be a great candidate. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Cedar Key is on the list. Guys, I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Okay, that solved it. There we go. It felt like there was a... I don't know what it felt like. But it was very hard to talk just now. Chandra is sending me a bunch of images uh, of their hurricane intercept. Uh, Chandra, you should post that to Twitter. I'll retweet it. If you can get it up there, that'll be an easier way to show it anyways. Yeah, Sarasota schools are going to reopen on Thursday. I'd say a lot of the schools up here in uh, the Big Bend, especially closer to the coast, probably won't open Thursday. Uh, we'll obviously share that information as we find out exactly what's going on. Next in line for some of the strongest winds, once again, is Douglas, Georgia and Nichols, Georgia. Get ready. The flash flooding is on its way, too. And yeah, Riley, if you're still around, uh, you can we can go ahead and uh, let you talk for a little bit. Guys, if you have any questions uh, for Riley, maybe he could look at chat a, a little bit as well. I'm going to finish my sandwich and grab me another water, and I'll be right back. All right, yep, sounds good. Uh, definitely, if you have questions while well, we're waiting for more information on the damage, we can answer questions. Um, as of now, or actually right now, they have the um, U.S. Coast Guard flying our aircraft just off the coast looking for people who might need um, aerial help and also doing some aerial recon just looking at the damage so pretty soon we should start to see both pictures from law enforcement agencies government and just individuals on twitter as um the water starts to recede I'm looking at chat here is there a yes there is still a flash flood emergency for val Doza. I don't remember how to pronounce that town name, and every single person I see in chat says it's pronounced differently, so I'm going to say it how I feel like saying it. Um, either way, um, what's the highest surge height? The highest surge height we've seen today officially was 12 feet. That was um, in the Cedar Key region. Uh, this uh, We don't have that camera up anymore. Um, Carly, maybe we could put that camera up in place of one of the LSM people, probably Jennifer. Um, how do you make a donation to the relief effort? Uh, if you go to um, the y'all squad.org, we are a 501 C three. Uh, you can do your donations there. And after you fill out your donation form, uh, you'll be sent a, a uh, tax deductible form to your email and my headset just died so that's not very convenient um if you're in charleston county there is an emergency shelter for you um we're gonna have ryan retweet this when he gets back it is the they don't say what it is oh and here's chandra's video i can't put that on screen i used to be able to put that on screen but i can't because i'm back in minnesota now What's going on with Valdo Valdoza? Uh, still just a lot of rain. Um, they're in the eye wall right now, so that's going to be the area of enhanced winds. But most of the rain is moving out of the area. But it is still going to continue to rain. You could see another one to two inches. Yes. Yeah, here's the people correcting. I see Valdosta, Valdosta, Valdosto. See, y'all can't even make up your minds. <laughs> Um, why aren't I in school? I am in school. I move into college on um, Friday. Second year, I am a water resources major. Um, 
why doesn't he have your remote in? Uh, so funny story. Ryan has so many um, like stuff plugged into his computer. If you try and remote in, uh, everything breaks. So we've learned uh, don't remote into Ryan's computer. It looks like we have two $1,000 donations to the Y'all Squad. Michael Watson and Adam Dillon. Big shout out to you guys. Thank you so much. Um, we're definitely going to need these funds as we start to see the water go down, most likely immediately, actually, because you can see on the two cams, lower right and lower middle, that water does damage. Like there's That's unavoidable, and we knew that was going to be the biggest threat with the storm. Where are you in Minnesota? I am south east minnesota uh in the cornfields there's a lot of corn in minnesota that's it yeah that's ryan slipping by he likes to do that what can you expect in eastern north carolina uh eastern north carolina you can you're gonna see a lot of rain localized amounts up to a foot uh probably the minimum amount of rain we could see in most of east carolina or east northeast East North Carolina, sorry, we've all been awake for a very long time here, is two inches. And that's a lot of rain, especially for these areas that are already drought stricken where we have harder ground. That water isn't going to sink in. It's just going to sit on top or run off and lead to stronger flooding than we would normally see. Val Dost, uh, that's a new one. I have not seen that one. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen like 10 different pronunciations for that town. Uh, Pasco County is starting search and rescue now. This is November 3, Romeo Lima, Charlie, alternate Sarnet control for the state of Florida, Division of Emergency Management. Sarnet is currently in a controlled and directed net for emergency or priority traffic only. Individual stations should refrain from radio checks and other general traffic. Please contact Ned Control with any emergency traffic. November 3, Romeo Lima, Charlie. Hey, I'd unmute the mic. That make that's helpful. Yeah. It's not a Ryan Hall stream if we don't unmute the mic. Wow. Actually, you know, that hasn't happened in the last couple of streams. So I thought that I had completely I thought I've outgrown it. I thought it became better than that. But uh, here we are again. I forgot to unmute my mic. <laughs> but uh okay, we, we should be good now. What I, I don't even remember what I was saying. Uh, what I was trying to say was I'm ready to go. I'm refueled. I'm ready to go. But I, I'm also uh, being very realistic about the fact that everybody on the team is very tired. None of us really slept last night, and we'll probably have to end this stream sometime, at least within the next four hours, maybe even sooner than that. So what I'm going to try to do uh, for the the next um, uh, you know little bit is just really rapid fire dive into uh, what's going on out here and answering questions in chat and then back to news. I'm going to go like in a triangle like that, and then once I feel like we've covered pretty much everything and um, we're just waiting on like the next thing to happen, we're probably going to go ahead and call it a day so that we can get some rest and then. Come back for the next storm and, and really start getting ready for our um, relief efforts in uh, Florida. There's a chance that even I will go down there for, for some period of time if I'm able to. Um, and we've just got to figure out like you know, exactly what's happening. So let's dive into this now. Let's uh, the current state of the storm is it's still a category one category one 85 mile per hour hurricane uh, moving to the north northeast 
and that was at 12 o'clock. So 18 minutes ago, uh, we got that update from the National Hurricane Center. The rain, the the extremely heavy rain that's causing the flooding is now in Pearson and it's moving up towards Douglas, Nichols, and Taylortown. Uh, we've also got an expanding rain uh, band here that goes from Baxley all the way back down towards Tifton. That will cause problems in the form of flooding as well as probably some tropical storm force winds. Now, everybody on the southern side down here uh, is also experiencing those tropical storm force winds, but there's not a lot of rain associated with it. You're getting ready to see the winds really pick up in Brunswick and Darien, uh, but the strongest winds still are going to be right around that center core, uh, and that's going to be moving between uh, Waycross and Pearson here before too long. Another area that we're watching very close is uh, these super cells or these individual kind of uh, cells that are moving up into South Carolina. This is a spiral band uh, from Hurricane um, Adalia, and it's rotating. So the, the little cells inside of it are rotating, and you can see that they're actually getting hey, Ryan, bigger, too. Brad. Uh, I just want to let you know I'm headed over to Cedar Key to take a look at it and see, see what it kind of looks like. So uh, it should be there in about an hour. Okay, Brad Arnold is on his way to Cedar Key. So we're going to be keeping up with him, and I'm sure he's going to give us a, a view of what's going on there uh, in about an hour. And that's also where Y'all Force One is going. So we'll, we'll be able to see exactly what's going on at Cedar Key here soon. And then, of course, uh, we're going to continue to watch these supercells as they come onto shore. I'm pretty concerned about Charleston, South Carolina, all the way up to Georgetown. Uh, as this area is kind of like the prime location for potential tornadoes uh, in the near future. But I'm also concerned about these areas that could come right back up towards Hilton Head and Beaufort in South Carolina. So we're watching that all the way through the evening. That doesn't end when this stream ends. I want everybody to understand that. If we do end the stream here at 2 p.m. or something like that, the, the danger of the storm does not end because we stopped the stream. In fact, the tornado threat's probably only going to go up the later we go into the evening. Uh, so it's important to keep that in mind and have some way of getting warnings, uh, have a backup plan for, you know, how, how are you going to get those warnings? National Weather Service, no weather radio. That's my uh, number one uh, suggestion for that. Uh, the farther south and the farther west we go, the, the better off we are. These rain bands down here in Florida really are not causing much of a problem at all, even though they are technically associated with the Dahlia. Um, I think for the most part, Florida, uh, outside of the cleanup uh, that's going to have to happen here, is for the most part done uh, with Hurricane Adalia. We're still going to see some strong winds, especially in northeast Florida, Jacksonville, places like that. Um, but the, the worst of it is definitely over, uh, and now we're assessing the damage uh, in this area right here. So, that's what's happening right now, okay? Now, what are you guys up to? Uh, McKinney, thank you so much for the support. Uh, Casey Jones says, downtown Sarasota is flooded. Yeah, we're getting a lot of updates from Sarasota. Uh, let's see here. Okay, this is a pretty important one. Sarasota County government uh, says that uh, Mansota Key Road north of Blind Pass in Middle Beach is washed out and traffic cannot pass in either direction. Stay away from this area. So this is Casey Key Road. Uh, all pretty much all the roads in Casey Key are flooding, but the one, uh, the Minnesota uh, or Minnesota Key Road, is completely washed out, and traffic cannot operate in either direction. Roger Davidson has been a member for fifteen months, and he's heading down to Florida. Be careful, Roger. Amy says, thanks for the coverage. Uh, let's see. Um, Calvin says, great job with this coverage. Hope everyone stays safe. Uh, Salty says, thank you for all you do. From Momsters Deals, JS says, what do you think of Savannah and more specifically Statesboro? That is northwest of Savannah, and it looks like you will get the worst on the northwest corner of the storm. Yeah, so in Savannah, specifically up there near Statesboro, that, that is one of the candidates for potentially seeing the worst of the storm. Remember, this is the, the area that we're watching. It's going to continue to come to, kind of come up in this direction 
uh, and kind of spread out as it goes this way. So Statesboro is definitely in that, and uh, so is the northwestern side of Savannah. So, hey, Ryan, you got a copy? This is Chris. What you can expect is some strong winds and some very bad flooding if you live in a flood-prone area. That's that. That's pretty much the extent of it right now. Hurricane force wind gusts and potentially uh, very bad flooding. Yeah, Chris, go ahead. Hey, buddy, sorry for the delay. We finally made it up to Tallahassee. Uh, actually, the sun is out. It full-on sunshine here in Tallahassee after a very bad morning here in northwest Florida. Uh, I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to say is we were in Tallahassee and to see if you needed us to uh, go anywhere. I know I've got a lot of footage to send to you here shortly. Uh, is there anywhere that you need us to uh, head to at this time? Uh, not just yet. We've got the Y'all Squad on their way to Cedar Key, uh, the the main vehicle, uh, just to go assess and see what's going on down there. Uh, but that's basically what we're doing right now. And then uh, we're probably going to come together sometime tomorrow uh, and really get to, to work with uh, whatever sort of boots on the ground uh, efforts that we have. So um, you're good where you are. And um, I'm sure we will be updating you as soon as we figure out what needs to happen next. Chris Hall is storm chaser, but at the moment there's a disaster, he immediately becomes a part okay. of the y'all squad right, as well. Sounds good. I just wanted to check in before I head back south and lose service again. So, Don Green, thanks for becoming a slight risker. Yeah, it's been busy. It's been busy in the world of weather. Uh, I would love it if the next week or so is quiet. Um, and we've got an update from Y'all Force One. Go ahead, Caleb. Hey, Ryan, I just wanted to give you a quick update. So um, trying to get anywhere right now is not a speedy process by any means. It's taken us almost an hour to go 20 miles. Um, so right now our plan is I think we're going to head down towards Stan Hatchie because it's directly south of us. Try and get a uh, view of what's kind of happened there, which should give us an idea roughly what's happened in other places such as Cedar Key, because um, we, we can probably be there within the next 25 minutes. Uh, I think it's over two hours to get there from where our current location is. Okay, that sounds good. Um, just keep me updated, and whenever you get you know to any of these places, uh, if we have the ability to just ask you know somebody um you know what what they think is going to be needed like tomorrow or or the next day or what what's the next steps here uh if we can just figure out what that is then we can go ahead and send you guys back towards headquarters and we can start working on a plan on you know what what's the first thing we've got to do is it a truckload of supplies is it you know um uh, you know food is it something like that uh, and uh, the the first step though is is getting into contact with somebody who can uh, officially tell us how we can be of most use so uh, just keep us updated and we're also going to keep trying on our end to uh, get a hold of some people i'm sure our inbox our email inbox is full it's overflowing uh so hopefully we've got somebody on that and we will be talking to you intermittently throughout the rest of the uh, afternoon so that guys that was caleb with the y'all squad they're in y'all force one uh, trying to find uh you know uh, just just assessing the damage pretty much it's part of the reason why they're there usually we have to wait on somebody to do this for us and then we have to like analyze the pictures we have to see like okay what about this street what about that street and who do we need to talk to here um but with them there they're figuring it all out as we go and it's going to make the whole process of our relief uh efforts uh, much much the faster so that's what's going on with caleb in y'all force one Another just incredible view of the before and after of the storm surge there from Hurricane Adalia. I can't believe we watched that unfold live seemingly 
forever ago, but it was it wasn't that long ago. Latest update on Hurricane Idalia from NWS Atlanta. Not much uh, of an impact at all, really, for the Atlanta area, southeast uh, Georgia, obviously, getting a tropical storm. Atlanta, not so much. That shed was a trooper, yes. Uh, is Brian stuck? No, I think the uh, the video feed just went out on us. I think he's fine. The water's really gone down quite a bit in Cedar Key. Uh, another big shout out to Radar Omega, by the way, for their awesome network of cameras. That th This has been just unbelievable how well these cameras have held up. Do you think the name will be retired? There's a very good chance that it will be. I, I don't want to, obviously, I don't make that call. I don't even know exactly what the criteria is to make a storm a candidate for being retired, but I would almost certainly, I mean, just from seeing what we've saw so far, I would say it's definitely in there. Uh, Shiv says, Ryan, I found you in late 2021, and I'm always amazed at how far y'all have come and the accuracy you provide. Thank you for doing what y'all do. Well, thank you for being here and, and watching us for so long. We, uh, we try really hard. This, <laughs> we, uh, we, we, it, I, and I think that's an understatement. We, we try really hard to, to make these streams as good as they are, and I know that you know, we have some bugs. We have some some technical difficulties every once in a while, but um, you know it's a it's a huge team effort, and there's a lot of things that have to happen to make all this work. And it's a lot of effort, but we do it because we love it. And um, apparently, uh, as a it, I, the the growth of this channel has been a, a testament to it, it's extremely valuable to countless people during severe weather events. Sarasota, Sarasota City Operations will resume regular business hours tomorrow. Awesome. That is another thing that was completely expected. I think that the the flooding, the kind of flooding that we saw in Sarasota today was probably on the higher end of what was expected, uh, and yet we're still going to be back to normal tomorrow. I think that some of the harder hit areas, um, it's, you know, I don't know when we'll have school again in places. I don't know if there's like an elementary school or something like in the Horseshoe Beach area. But those are the kinds of places that will probably be the most impacted. Uh, TPA to reopen uh, to arriving flights only at 4 p.m. Wednesday. So uh, Tampa is going to reopen their airport at 4 p.m. Uh, today. That's in three and a half hours to arriving flights only. I don't know when uh, we'll start seeing outgoing uh, flights uh, again, but uh, that's good news. Yeah, um, we have officially raised over $40,000 today for uh, the victims of uh, Hurricane Adalia. Um, and we're apparently, somebody earlier said that they were uh, their company or something, they were going to attribute uh, $10,000. I don't know how that's coming, I'm, I'm, but that's not included in this. So it could, it's probably actually around $50,000. Uh, 
so yeah, that we're definitely going to be able to uh, do a lot with that. It, you wouldn't believe how far even uh, just ten thousand dollars goes um, when you're doing like supplies uh, specifically. Uh, but obviously, we're going to use every dollar of it. We're going to stretch every. Uh, we're going to stretch it as far as we can possibly get it, and try to get as, as many people help as possible. Um, we're just trying to figure out right now how, what does that look like. Is it supplies? Because <laughs> sometimes they don't need supplies. Sometimes we'll show up to an area and we're ready to like go get bottled water, and they're like, "Listen, please don't give us another daggone bottle of water." <laughs> and and like we we always listen because we don't want to. You know, we want to make sure everything that we do is completely necessary. The winds are calming down quite a bit, but they're still really strong, uh, especially right in here um, and probably on the front side of uh, the, you know, the winds that are pushing out uh, this way. So uh, Kingsland, uh, Brunswick, Jacksonville, you guys are getting ready to get a pretty good tropical storm force gust. Uh, the rain situation is still uh, a big problem there near Pearson, Stokesville, um, and that's going to continue to be a problem and become a new problem uh, for Hazelhurst, Jacksonville, Baxley, Taylortown, all the way up there to Reedsville and Vidalia um, as we go through the next little bit. Flash flood warnings will be issued, and thankfully we haven't seen any more flash flood emergencies yet. Um... Hopefully we don't see any more of those, but you can see how the rain was definitely more intense down here. We're still seeing incredible totals up here, but nothing quite like what we saw down towards Valdosta. As the storm slows down or as it pivots, there's a point where it's going to pivot and move more east. Um, whoever ends up underneath that axis where the heaviest rain stays for a slightly longer period of time might end up with even more rain. Uh, than the areas down there near Valdosta. So we've got to keep that in mind as well. I don't think Brian's stuck. I think that he's purposefully just sitting there, probably flying his drone or something. Yeah, um, Horseshoe Beach, so far, out of everything that I've seen, Horseshoe Beach seems to be one of the hardest hit areas. Obviously, Cedar Key is pretty bad off. Obviously, uh, uh, St Steen Hatchy. Am I saying that right? Um, uh, but these areas are all, uh, yeah, Steen Hatchy, um, all the, uh, these areas are completely uh, like underwater so, uh, to an extent. Uh, but the Horseshoe Beach area specifically seems to be one of the harder hit areas. They moved to new frequencies in DMR two days ago. All right, Matt, I'm going to be in uh, Madison County. Um, I'm going to go down 53 down to Mayo, so I'm hoping things are open. If not, I'll be prepared to cut my way in. Thank you for the information. <laughs> Um, for those who may just now be tuning in, just a little bit of a recap. Hurricane Idalia made landfall this morning near Keaton Beach, Florida, as a Category 3 hurricane. The extreme winds right now are decreasing as Idalia moves inland and weakens. But hurricane, hurricane force wind gusts are going to remain possible and flash floods are going to be uh, widespread as the storm goes through Georgia. Uh, flooding risks from both heavy rainfall and coastal storm surge are possible through portions of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina through early in the morning on Thursday.
Is there a press conference going on? Can you guys link that to me? doing some googling hold on In nearly in merely 12 hours Idalia went from a category 1 to a category 4 hurricane that is uh, extremely uncommon. Extremely uncommon. Leanne says, I appreciate everything that you and the All Squad do. I'm, com I'm a committed fan. Uh, I hope this little bit helps. And I wish I had more to offer. I love you guys. And congrats on the new mini squad member. Leanne, thank you so much. That was super nice. The governor uh, press conference, it should be on like some government account. I can't watch it through like Fox News or something because they'll, they'll like uh, copyright strike it or whatever. Even though it's like free, like we, you know, <laughs> if they stick their logo on it, it's theirs, I guess. I don't know. As Ryan mentioned, Augusta, Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys are in for potential flash flooding. Uh, and it's not really started yet. The heaviest rain has not started yet, but it will here soon. The heaviest, heaviest rain will probably stay just a little bit off to your south, but wouldn't be surprised to see flash flooding in and around Augusta. Uh, Nick and Ashley says, hey, Ryan, I work for the largest manufactured home builder in the country. We want to work with you and give you and give a few families free homes. How can we get with you about this? I'm an exclusive with the biz. Um, we need you to reach out to us via email. Um, uh, and there's a contact form on our website, the uh, fill that out, and maybe if some of our mods can figure out how to message them, maybe we can pull them into a Discord conversation or something. Uh, that's huge. Like we would obviously love to work with you and on some way to try to get some people homes. Lord knows, uh, some people are going to need them. Uh, in says. Uh, I walked into history class and they had you up on the screen. Look at there. Thanks to everybody who's tuned in. Tracy, uh, Tracy says, thank you for your organized and clear reporting watching from Oregon. Tracy, thank you so much. Okay, Ron DeSantis. Okay, there it is. Duh, Ryan. 
Most of the traffic signal assessments have been completed. We have about 50 locations left to complete, and we will be deploying generators for those traffic signals that need power. Um, as we continue to respond to this storm, all 13 of our traffic management centers across the state will continue their 24-7 operations, inputting real-time traffic data into Florida 511. Again, that is the most accurate and timely information you can get for traffic at florida511.com. Uh, we have 185 road rangers that are continuing to patrol our interstate system and responding to motorists as needed. Um, one thing to remember, there is still high water in a lot of areas of the state. If you see water overtopping a road, please do not drive through it. If you see water, please stop, turn around, go a different way. It can be really dangerous to drive through flooded roadways. Thank you again, Governor DeSantis, for your leadership and support as we respond to this event. Okay, so we're going to have, um, you know, all these assets are, are in motion. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of efforts at power restoration. Uh, you're going to see the, the, the roads cleared in the, in the really significantly affected areas. That's going to just increasingly happen. And we're going to do uh, whatever we need to do to help these local communities uh, get back on their feet. Any questions? Uh, what time did uh, the I cross into Georgia? That's a good question. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, I think it was... Um, I think it was probably within the hour, within the last 30, 40 minutes. This morning, at what time did it <laughs> Did they say that they, it crossed into Florida 40 minutes ago? What would you say? Probably, uh, probably. Are they not in Florida? Probably happened somewhere between midnight and 2 a.m. And do you have an idea of how many people might have stayed in the house? I know with Ian there was a form families filled out. Somebody needs to yeah, so give them on, our stream. On this particular one, we uh, did door to door because it was just a little bit different scenario with much less people. So, uh, Florida Highway Patrol and local sheriff's office agencies, again, in, down in Levy County, had about 100 people that stayed at homes. And then, anecdotal, or I should say anecdotally, but up into Taylor County, it was more uh, in the Georgia. Georgia okay. <laughs> okay. I knew I was missing but something I, there. Sure I knew I was missing something. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> Hold on, I'll get you back. Uh, we had a track that was bringing the eye maybe into Leon County, and then they shifted that this morning. And so I would say, Leon, uh, this was from where we were when it was going there. This is the shift Leon wanted for sure. I mean, you know, you, you go out there. I mean, I've been out. There's uh, there's been rain and wind. There's some debris, but but nothing. I think like if that wall would have would have impacted Tallahassee, I think you would have seen significantly more damage. So that bend northeast really helped the Tallahassee and Leon County. Are you Is there any kind of bridge damage like we saw during the end, uh, Sandoval Island like we saw there? So I, I, I'm going to let Jared come up. I, I don't I don't think we've identified that. Um, there are. Uh, of course, in the Tampa Bay area, some of those bridges were closed, some because of water, some because of wind. But structurally, I haven't got any reports that they're problematic. And then uh, as you get in closer to, to kind of the ground zero, uh, those bridges are not passable, but that's primarily because the, the water uh, is overflowing. Is that accurate to say? Yeah, that's accurate, Governor. I'd say we're still in the process of doing damage assessments. Um, we haven't seen anything anywhere close to what we saw at Pine Island, Sanibel Island. Um, uh, for the locations where there's still high water, you know, we have to wait till the water recedes to really find out what's going on there. But we have not seen any major damage yet. Are you seeing any significant river flooding inland, um, whether it be the Swanee or I guess it could even go over the St. John's if there's enough rain over there? What do we see? What do we, I'm sure we are. Yeah, so, so short answer is we're starting to see some reaction. Um, all of this rain is going to have to drain into those basins. So usually what happens in these incidents is we don't see the actual river action for, a, you know, 24, 48, sometimes as much as 72 hours after the fact. The St. John's River is a very, very slow responding river. If you remember back during Hurricane Ian, that almost took 45 days to correct itself on that particular uh, body of water. So again, it's gonna take a little bit of time for them to completely react and then obviously go back down. I will say, I mean, you know, the, the one thing of this, the storm moved a little bit faster than some of the other ones have moved. I mean, some of these things will just dump water and they go, you know, so slow. You know, this one, this one moved a little bit faster, which is um, at least when you're talking about the flooding, 
uh, is uh, is a little bit better than when they're when they're slow. Is it speed what, the reason that well, he's right about that. What, is, what does it look like for recovery for some of these counties that were hit, particularly hard, like Taylor and Sewanee? I know that, like, I think, I mean, Calhoun County was still a mess four months, five months after Michael. Well, we're gonna we're in the process of doing those. Uh, of course, stabilize, rescue, recovery, whatever needs to be done right off the bat, uh, power save lives all that that's with it without saying but then there will be damage assessments to see yeah we're gonna save lives all that good stuff in terms of in terms of damages in each of who these watches counties, these there is going to be debris of course that's going to be something that's going to need to be done uh these counties are not going to be able to afford that on their own of course even with a 75 percent cost share with the federal government and so i would like imagine who are they talking the, to you know what i mean would want to help these fiscally constrained counties. The legislature has typically wanted to do that. Uh, you know, we may be we may be seeking um, you know better cost share as well. But but yeah, there's going to be things that are that are going to need to be taken care of. And these are the counties along that big bend. They 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 just have very small budgets, and uh, expenses like this are not things that they could absorb the way some of our wealthier counties could. Okay, I just saw actually that the there was an oak tree that fell on the governor's mansion here in Tallahassee. And is your wife and kids okay? We're fine. It's in fact uh, she called me probably about 45 minutes ago and told me this is a really I guess ancient oak tree split in half and part of it fell i don't know that it fell on like the residence per se i think it was a little bit off to the side uh so that's going to be cleared I, I don't know if they're gonna have to cut down the whole tree uh, if they do cut down the whole tree that's just going to be more room for uh my kids to hit baseballs in and so in some respects for us even though the tree was nice uh we'll probably make do and just be be, be, be uh, quite all right can you comment on some of the health care facilities in these smaller counties did any of them have to close for so I'll, I'll let Kevin uh, do. Um, I've spoken with a number of the main chains um, who uh, had closed hospitals in the Tampa Bay area. They're all doing very, very well. Uh, most of them are, you know, going to be reopening today if, that, if they haven't already. I know who uh, he's talking to, but like, who's he talking to? The Nature Coast. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So uh, we did have a couple of if you know, you facilities know. and nursing homes that did have to do some evacuations, but they did that as a part of the evacuations that we called for two days ago. Um, to date, as of this minute, there have been no reports of any issues inside the health and medical uh, industry, whether that's assisted living facilities, skilled nursing facilities, nursing homes, or hospitals so everybody everybody is reporting what we would call green and they're good to go and everything uh, right. city of brandonson's or bradenson's florida uh, water plant is offline due to hurricane Adalia. yeah i don't have those numbers right here we could get with uh the agency for health care administration secretary Weta, or even secretary latipo and figure out what those numbers actually were well, can you kind of talk about the discrepancy between some numbers that are being reported on fatalities and the citing MHP and you saying that there's no so so right so so there's a process for confirmed fatalities that just goes through law enforcement and medical examiners and then they do that and so so that has not been done yet uh, where we've had a confirmation now I know there's un unconfirmed reports those may end up becoming uh, confirmed and then of course we deal with this in every storm. Uh, what is a fatality that is a direct result of the storm versus what would be something where, you know, you have a, a fatality that's unfortunate but, but may not necessarily have, have a causal factor with the storm. I mean, for example, in Fort Myers Beach, you know, people, uh, there were fatalities because of that storm surge, no question. Well, if you're out the day after the storm and you're picking okay, up Okay, I think I get the gist here. They are, uh, you know, just answering all the basic questions that you might have. Um, the, the media uh, is, you know, trying to, to see, uh, you know, what's, you know, what does the government know that maybe we don't know? And it looks like we all know just about the same exact thing. And that's that there was some pretty significant damage um, out here in uh, portions of Florida. And uh, some places got it worse than others. And, you know, we're we're still just basically trying to learn what, you know, what's happening next. We still don't know the complete extent of what happened in Horseshoe Beach, for example, uh, because, um, you know, we're we're still assessing uh, what happened as the water goes down.
Uh, so uh, I just wanted to read something from Brad Arnold uh, real quick uh, that, you know, I, I think needs to be read. Um, Brad said, uh, I just want to give a huge thank you to folks that helped clean up after natural disasters. A major hurricane made landfall a couple of hours ago, and I've already seen power line crews, bulldozers, tree removal services, and all that kind of stuff out helping people. It's incredible. So that is incredible. Uh, we, we know from being involved with all of these storms, uh, you know, anytime there's a hurricane or something like this that happens, there's almost always a lot of people with that kind of equipment who take time off work, who take time away from their lives and they just sit there and they wait for something bad to happen and then they go help. And, and I just can't imagine what the world would be like if it wasn't for people like that. Just imagine how lonely you would feel um, if you, you lost everything uh, in a hurricane. First of all, no matter how many people are there to help you, that's devastating, that's horrible, uh, that, that shouldn't happen to anybody. But just imagine if you were com completely left alone after that, nobody cared other than maybe FEMA three months from now. Uh, the, the fact that, you know, strangers from all over the place come and flock to these sorts of situations to help people is one of the reasons why, you know, uh, a lot of us have a, a positive outlook on the world still. Because we see it. We, we see the, the worst of it through Mother Nature and we see the best of it through uh, people to come in together afterwards. Every, uh, every day, it's part of our job. <clears throat> uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, just looking at radar here, um, it does look like the area of intense velocities associated with the eye wall to the um, east near Lakeland is starting to starting to broaden out and more of an area is going to be impacted with these strong winds that we're seeing um on the west side we did just have a 44 mile per hour wind gust and that is still about 30 miles away from the eye wall itself which will still be packing a punch okay all right um yeah so the wind field is expanding uh the heavy uh, flash flooding inducing rains are expanding uh, and we're going to continue to see that become a problem. Uh, we're also waiting on some of these bigger storms to kind of make it up into South Carolina to potentially start producing more problems in the form of tornadic activity. Okay. Um, so that's what we are dealing with right now. We do have um, uh, another super chat from Don. Thank you so much. Uh, Dom, as he says, hey, I've been watching for a couple years now. I just want to say that this is my primary source of weather information. Thank you very much for the information you share. I hope this little bit helps. Thank you. The bomb says, what should we be expecting in coastal Bryan County, Georgia? I live less than a mile from where from the water. I'm a little worried. So there is definitely some storm surge uh, problems that are going to come out of this. We're talking about two to five feet, maybe. And the biggest problem for you is going to be the potential uh, tornadic uh, problems that we have over the next little bit. So, you know, that's uh, once we get past the, you know, I don't know, four o'clock time period or something, it's really going to be getting much better uh, for you. Uh, and we're going to be focused on areas north and east of you. Nobody is expected to, to get in on the catastrophe, catastrophe side of this thing. Um, now that it's out of Florida, the only way that we could see that now is if there's some sort of freak devastating tornado that goes through a town or if there's uh, some really bad flooding, um, which is that that's definitely possible. But hopefully we don't see that. Uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, we have the drone up on y'all force one if you want to take a look. All right. Um, uh, guys, this is uh, the drone. Going up uh, Y'all Force One, which is located near Steenhatchie. Um, and they're, they're, we're getting an aerial view of an area that I believe was probably just recently completely underwater. I see a lot of sand, uh, a lot of um, uh, dirt and stuff uh, along the roadways and down there. Uh, you can see that the water has receded quite uh uh, pretty much completely. It looks like it's back in its uh, correct reservoir there uh, in the waterway that you can see up on the top right side of your screen. 
Uh, however, I do believe that the vast majority of these homes uh, were flooded. I believe, I think that's the, what we're looking at here. Um, and uh, I don't know exactly which way the ocean is, though. I think he's panning us around towards it right now. But this is up north, uh, or this is above Steenhatchee, um, Florida. I see vehicles moving down there, so that's a good sign. And basically, I think what uh, we're doing is just assessing and seeing what's going on. Obviously, we can tell a lot from just being on the ground, uh, but getting the aerial view is um, a, a good move as well. But yeah, the water is completely back in uh, the, the bay inside of the Steenhatchee River. Uh, from what I can tell, I can't see anywhere where it's coming out of the banks. Hey, Ryan, just a little note here. Um, they are a decent ways inland okay. because there is still some floodwaters um, closer to the shore. And I would assume that those roads are probably blocked off. So we'll see if we can get a view of closer to the shore here with the drone. But this area, I believe, is closer to that 5 to 10 mark above or 5 to 10 feet above sea level. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you can tell that there was a lot of water here. Um, so the fact that we can't see the ocean necessarily uh, from exactly uh, where that drone was is pretty impressive that we saw the water uh, come out of its uh, natural causeways in, in that regard there. I think we've got an update from the uh, the y'all squad vehicle. Do you guys have something? Yeah, so we were going to fly over and, hey, Chandler, can you mute that tablet? Uh, we were going to fly over and check out the um, storm surge a little bit to the closer to the ocean here, but Coast Guard is actively flying around attempting to make uh, aerial rescues right now, so that's not something we want to prohibit them from doing, from having the drone up in the air, so we opted to bring it back down. Okay. Um, we'll head a little bit further towards the where the storm surge was probably largest. It's like a couple hundred yards down the road. Uh, see if we can see anything, but obviously doing that on foot because we, like we said, don't want to inhibit any uh, rescue missions that are happening actively right now. All right, sounds good. Keep us updated, and we're following along. So let me show you guys real quick where they are um, because I, was, I wasn't I was aware that they were so far inland. Uh, and once again, you can see the, on the roads and some of those uh, yards that we were just looking at, some debris. Um, this is where y'all force one is right here, way back towards South Avenue. Uh, the ocean is way back up in here. So it looks like the, there was a lot of coastal flooding right up, uh, obviously coming out of the, um, uh, the main ocean inlet, uh, but the river came out, uh, all the way back up towards, uh, probably the campground back here. Uh, and even beyond that up towards, uh, Oak Avenue and Cedar Avenue. So that was a pretty extensive um, amount of flooding that happened here near Steenhatchee, but most of the water has completely gone down now. It's, it's like it's came, it's went down almost as fast as it came up. Go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, Cedar Key has hit the seven foot mark. What this means is we're now only experiencing minor flooding impacts. Also, if you take a look at Brian's camera, that looks like a weather station. I believe that was a weather station that was on the beach in uh keaton beach uh that was blown over by a 77 mile per hour wind gust and that was half an hour before we saw the eye reach the beach okay wow um thank you riley and this is uh, the live view that um he was talking about there where we see the weather station toppled over from brian Mfinger near keaton beach florida um large tower taken down there um, and we've seen a lot of uh, damage from around Keaton Beach. We've seen uh, a lot of uh, damage from Cedar Key. Um, I'm still waiting to see a lot of what happened around uh, Horseshoe Beach. I, that's the one that I honestly, I, from what we saw, that's where the shed was. So there was definitely some crazy uh, storm surge that came in there. But I haven't seen any sort of the, uh, the aftermath uh, yet. Uh, so we are waiting that. 
Uh, but it looks like that area is the place where we're going to be focusing most of our relief efforts. Um, so from Cedar Key all the way back up towards Keaton Beach, that was definitely the hardest hit. And we're starting to learn more about that. As we learn more, I'm going to let you know. It's currently 1.03 p.m. on the East Coast. We've been going for, I don't know, eight, nine hours now. Uh, the plan is to keep going uh, probably till um, we'll, we'll probably officially call it here uh, within the next hour or two. All right. So we're going to keep going for another hour or two, maybe a little bit longer than that. I don't know yet. It depends on exactly what's going on, um, but we will probably start wrapping it up around then. Uh, so if you guys have any questions for me, I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, monitoring the chat as we uh, allow for some new. Um, uh news to come in what is it is there a tempest on that yeah so the weather station closer to the top that is one of the tempest stations oh uh the anemometer that's a young anemometer that's different that's for the mesonet but you can actually see the other weather station on tempest's website uh that's one of their weather flow tempests huh well, <laughs> um, sorry, we, we had a hard time getting Riley off the screen there. Um, the, uh, so what he's talking about is the specific kind of weather station that's on that tower is a weather flow uh, tempest, which uh, statistically speaking has about a 20% chance of coming from uh, shopryanhall.com. I don't know if that's where they got it or not, but <laughs> it's, it's my favorite station. I, if I had a big, nice tower like that, it's what I'd put on it too. I don't necessarily see it. <laughs> But I believe that it's there. The button got stuck. Yeah, yep. The hurricane is still a hurricane. At last we heard, you know, we got an update at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, I, okay, so that was just five minutes ago. Still a hurricane. 80 mile per hour winds uh, with this still. Uh, most of the water levels should be going down completely. I think we're even starting to see it go down in Keaton uh, Beach and De uh, Deco Beach. Yeah, so that latest update is going to be... Um, NOAA radar data indicates that the mas maximum sustained winds are near 80 miles per hour with higher gusts. The estimated minimum pressure based on a recent surface observation from Moody Air Force Base is 978 millibars. A weather flow station near Jekyll Island in Georgia recently reported sustained winds of 43 miles per hour with a gust to 55. That's our last update as of 1 p.m. from the National Hurricane Center. Waffle House Index. So there's definitely still some Waffle Houses closed in Florida, but I don't think there's there's no more Waffle Houses ahead of this storm that are going to be closed. They're all going to be open. Category 1 hurricanes can hit Waffle Houses all day, and they're going to be just fine. You can have a waffle on the patio of a Waffle House in a Category 1 hurricane if you wanted to. I don't recommend it, but you could. Yeah, I agree. The forecast was incredibly 
Um, good. Uh, honestly, on a forecasting level, I don't think this could have went any better for anybody involved in the uh, the weather enterprise. I think we all, everybody involved in this did a, a really good job. Um, we uh, On our channel, we started talking about this what well, seems like forever ago before the storm even formed way down in uh, Central America. And, uh, f you know, we I think we properly talked about how the rapid intensification could happen and, and, you know, the places where it could make landfall and all that stuff. And it just ended up being a, um, a pretty much exactly the, the way that we thought it would go. So the whole weather enterprise, National Hurricane Center, National Weather Service, media, the whole nine yards, everybody has done a great job. Uh, got another significant donation to the y'all squad.org huge shout out to, um, Shannon Eccles. I hope I'm saying that right. Who donated $750 to the y'all squad. Uh, she said, um, I went through hurricane Hugo in 1989 and remember the absolute devastation it caused. I'm so glad to see you've started this organization to help people get back on their feet after natural disasters uproot their lives. Thank you so much, Shannon, for the generous contribution to our nonprofit organization. We're getting dangerously close to $50,000 raised now. Um, we've got uh, Chandra and the, the whole Y'all Squad crew um, working hard on figuring out how we're going to utilize that. The goal is to be fast, right? Because insurance companies, FEMA, even you know a lot of the, the big ones that, that always come in, Obviously, we love that we have them, and they they do great work. Uh, but sometimes it takes them more than a, you know a half a day uh, to start doing things. Our goal is to be really fast, uh, at least with the uh, the initial push that we have to try to get supplies and you know things people need to them. Will this cause any effect on the Virginia coastline as it makes its way out of the United States? Just some choppy seas, really. Um, I, I wouldn't expect too much uh, in the way of, uh, you know, significant impacts out of this. All right, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan, um, in response to that, this storm will not be, or this storm will not have that much, that much impact on the seas. However, we did have Hurricane Franklin out there. Um, that is going to do a significant amount of water churning and all that water is getting thrown at the east coast of the U.S. right now. So there is going to be significant rip currents and significant um, just in general water flow in that area. I think they could even see storm surge up to two feet associated with both Hurricane Franklin and Idalia combining. Yeah, and that goes all the way up to Maine. Um, Hurricane uh, Franklin is even causing some high surf uh, problems uh, all the way up to Maine. I haven't seen like any of the warnings coming out of the Can Canadian uh, offices, but I'd, I'd say even up there towards Nova Scotia, uh, you guys are going to have some rip currents and some waves as a result of Hurricane Franklin, which I believe at one point became a Category 5 hurricane out there in the middle of the ocean. It was only r rated as a cat four though. Uh, but uh, two incredible storms. Uh, none of us alive today have, have seen two major hurricanes in the Atlantic uh, at the same time like that. Um, so it's crazy how so many firsts are happening during this little stretch here. The first major landfall in that specific part of uh, Florida in a very long time. The first time we've had two major hurricanes in the uh, Atlantic at the same time. Uh, in a long time, and um, yeah, just uh, absolutely crazy how active and busy we've been here at the Weather House. And we have an update from our live uh, team out there, the Y'all Squad team. Uh, go ahead, guys. Oh, no. Oh, no. I can't hear them. Oh, 
I, I wonder. Yeah, I cannot hear. I, maybe try coming through on Z. Oh, I hear something now. Right. Yeah, I got you now. Yes. yes. I don't hear you now. Sorry, guys. We're we're having some yeah. hey, major Steve suburban. You're unmuted twice, and we just can't hear you at all. Uh, I would mute on Zoom and leave your um, Discord unmuted and figure out what the input is because I believe it probably got switched again. Yeah, the Discord input is probably the wrong thing. But I do see the green light coming on around his name, so I don't know. But Caleb, if you can hear me, until we get your audio figured out, just keep pointing uh, the camera there. Um, and, you know, once we uh, get that figured out, we'll talk to you. But you can see that they're still pretty decently inland um, in the Steenhatchy area. And uh, we're looking at pretty significant water damage in front of us here. Uh, this is right now, the water's still going down, so there's still a long way for the water to go to where it's back in its normal spot, it seems like. But it was much higher than what we see right now. I don't know what's happening there. Uh, maybe, maybe do the inverse. Maybe mute on Discord and unmute in Zoom. I don't know. I don't know why that would help, but it's a weird audio issue there. But this is live. This is coming from uh, outside Y'all Force uh, One right now. Caleb's holding the camera, um, and this is exactly why they went down there, just to see exactly the extent of the damage. And of course, there's a lot more scenes like this. Yeah, we're still not hearing anything. Uh, Shane says, thank you, Ryan, Andy, Frank, and everyone else on the team. I've been watching you for two years, and you honestly have changed the game. I love supporting you and everyone involved, as well as uh, people impacted. Keep it up. Uh, Joe says, thanks for the best weather coverage this side of the Irish wind gauge. Okay, so we're going to figure out these uh, audio issues, and we're going to come back to Caleb. Every time on the tablet you kicked us off because i was talking. oh i hear you now caleb you can hear me now yes okay great okay i just won't walk as far okay i don't know what the deal is uh but basically what you can see okay <laughs> caleb it's like whenever you start talking and and like you're trying to actually say something i can no longer hear you but like okay, whenever here. you're not trying to say anything to me i can hear you perfectly Right, that's that's of course the case, right? <laughs> Here, let's try it and join Discord on my phone just so we can uh, we can talk to you then. Okay, all right. Give me this update. Uh, so remember, guys, uh, you know Caleb and, and Chandra were out in the hurricane with that microphone, so it also might be a microphone problem. I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll next time we'll we'll bring uh, extra microphones. Ryan, do you got a copy? Uh, yes. Hear you loud and clear. Cool. Awesome. So basically what we can see here on camera is the storm surge has significantly uh, come up. We're probably about 200 yards from where the river actually lies, where we're going to be standing. Um, there is some houses off in the distance that we can see. I'll have five to six feet of water. Uh, it looks like mostly everything is kind of raised here. Um, as we were coming in, we saw some more like mobile homes and um, other homes that weren't necessarily raised up in the greatest shape to withstand flooding like this. Um, but we're going to continue to assess the damage, see how we can help, and try to meet with the emergency manager quickly um, to see what kind of supplies they need and what uh, things are going to help get them back on their feet here. All right, sounds good. And just 
so we can get a better understanding of what we're looking at. And if you don't know, just let me know. But like, is the water that we're seeing in front of us here, is that just ponding left over from when the water was coming in from the ocean? Or is that still connected to the ocean and it's still going down? Yep. So this is still connected. It is flowing through the river, the bay that comes through here. We can see actually flowing in the back side of the camera. Okay. Some of these trees. I'll try and zoom in on it. Okay, yeah. I see now. Okay, yeah. And there's, is there any uh, water marks or anything you can zoom in on to kind of show us the scale of how high it was at one point on any of the buildings? Absolutely. Or so you can see on the door there. Oh, okay, yep. Uh, the dirt mark. All right. Okay, well, um, yeah, that that's uh, definitely what we came down there to see. Just let us know if you come across anybody that uh, needs anything or whenever we get a chance to talk to somebody that's uh, in charge down there. Obviously, they're going to be really busy. Um, but uh, as soon as you know of any sort of thing that we could start working on, um, let us know and we'll let you get back to it, okay? All right. So this is the um the state of part of steen hatchie uh we're not necessarily looking at the uh the, the hardest hit area once again there there's still some parts of this that are uh, unaccessible uh but you saw there that we had it probably uh, three or four feet um coming out of the river well displaced back from the uh the main ocean inlet so uh that shows you how significant the flooding was and uh, the reason those houses and the, those buildings and stuff were where they are and and the reason why a lot of the, that stuff wasn't on stilts is because I mean, water usually doesn't come up there at all. So we're going to continue to watch the Yal squad work their way around. Um, they're probably going to try to make contact with somebody uh, here soon and then make their way back to Ocala uh, or Ocala, Florida, which is where the Y'all Squad headquarters is for the next, I don't know, if, uh, until Saturday, I think. And then we might move it a little bit closer to like Perry or maybe to Tallahassee. I don't know. And um, we're just going to be running our operations out of there as we figure out what we're going to do with the $45,000 now that you guys have uh, allowed us to accrue. Um, obviously, there's more on top of that. The, the Y'all Squad organization has been a thing uh, for a while, so we had some some stash back. Uh, we've got, uh, hopefully, I, I don't remember exactly who it was, and I'm so sorry, sorry but somebody said that they were sending a $10,000 donation um, so once every, once all the dust settles, I, I really hope and I think that we're going to end up with around $100,000 uh, to potentially try to uh, put into action out here. And that, you know, it's it doesn't sound like a lot when you're talking about a potentially hundreds of millions of dollars disaster, but it will change the lives of uh, some people out there who were able to find who need the help that's fallen through the craps, the cracks and not receiving it from uh, elsewhere. So that's what we're here to do. And if you want to help us do that, once again. There's a link in the description, theyallsquad.org. Um, so Riley is saying that that spot specifically where Caleb was was about um, eight feet above sea level. So that line is approximately a uh, surge, which makes perfect sense. Yeah, the locations are under the pictures, guys, if you want to know where the, the live streams are coming from. Flash flooding is still the name of the game in Georgia. Remember, if you're watching in Georgia and you can do so safely and you want to send a report, you can send me a picture or a video 
um, uh, to uh, my Twitter at Ryan Hall, y'all, and we'll show it here. Uh, but remember, only do that if you can do so safely. Is the White House press briefing, does that have anything to do with the storm? Because I definitely don't want to turn that on if it doesn't. <laughs> I, I, who knows what in the world they're talking about. We got enough to worry about focusing on the weather. <laughs> hey, Lynn, thank you so much. I'm here at our emergency operations center in Dallas, Texas, where we have. Now calling Okaloosa County. Okaloosa County. This is Kilo Oscar 4, Sector Oscar Charlie, for Perkins County Emergency Management. Operator on duty is 54 Kilo Kilo Juliet. Sector John. And Kilo Mike 4, Sector Kilo Yankee. <coughs> I'm assuming it. it's just about like the general, it's just like a regular one. I don't know. The only thing I pay attention to in the, in the whole like news world is weather. Seriously. I'm a, I'm a one, this mind, one thing at a time, one lane. And I stay in mine <laughs> weather. Uh, uh. That's about as uh, as into the 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 press uh, briefings as I get. <laughs> okay, so it is FEMA, so we might as well drop in for a second. Across Florida, and how did people respond in those areas? Again, I think many people did heed the warnings, and there was a lot of public messaging that went out there to let people understand that the danger is not just the cone of the hurricane, but it's the storm surge and the water, which is creating and causing the most fatalities in these events. Um, but again, many people did not, as we are hearing about our first responders going in to support rescuing people from their homes that are now stranded. Okay, we're going to wrap we'll it up we'll way in the back and then edge of the James, on the immediate needs funding, I'm curious if you have recognized the potential long-term ongoing recovery efforts that could be out. It's as loud here. as I can get it. Uh, so if I understand the, the long-term recovery efforts, based on right now or what it looks like going into the next fiscal year? Going into the next, next fiscal year, which ones are at risk here if you do not get the funding you need? Yeah, so what immediate needs funding does is the work does not stop, right? The projects continue to go underway. Our longer term recovery projects for the variety of disasters that we've experienced over the year. The obligation or the reimbursement of the funding for those is delayed into the next fiscal year. Um, if it gets delayed into the next fiscal year, then that just starts us out at a smaller balance of what we had anticipated our needs would be for fiscal year 24. Are there any ongoing okay, so same old, same old um, that? thing that we were hearing earlier. Um, I'm just really interested to try to see if there's anything uh, coming from, you know, some of these, uh, you know, meetings and press releases and stuff that is like new information that you can't just find on Twitter. And it's turning out that the answer is no. <laughs> At least from what I can tell, from what I've seen, from the the few that I've forced myself to watch during these uh, weather uh, events. Uh, will Sebring be okay? Yeah, everybody's going to be okay. 
everybody's going to be okay. The worst of the storm is over now. Uh, we're really watching the potential for flash flooding moving into Vidalia, Statesboro, Swainsboro, um, and Claxton and Pembroke now in Georgia. Uh, we're also watching for the potential for some tornadic storms in South Carolina. Uh, for the most part, though, every, things are really winding down now in terms of the severity of this storm. It's a bad storm. It's still Category 1 hurricane. Uh, still going to cause a lot of problems, but we're no longer longer talking about an ongoing catastrophe. Uh, we're kind of moving into cleanup mode and uh, also, you know, the flash flooding and tornadoes and all that stuff. Kathleen, thank you. A category one storm that far inland is quite rare. Yes, it is. Um, good call out. Uh, the fact that this is a so this made landfall as Cat three, and it's it was a Cat two all the way up till about it got to Georgia. Now it's Cat one. It's expected to be a Cat one all the way until it gets uh, a, into southern uh, South Carolina. That's going to be probably pretty high up there. I don't know what the record is. I don't know how if we even keep up with like the longest a hurricane has ever tracked over land. But that's got to be up there pretty high because you got to think most storms slam into land and go directly up. Um, like towards the center of the country, and that very quickly uh, weakens them. This one is in a unique uh, situation where it's actually it's still over land, um, but it's going just close enough to the Atlantic Ocean over here, and it's just warm enough to where it's able to maintain itself a little bit longer. So we'll have to look into that and see. Um, what's the longest a storm has remained a hurricane over land? Maybe in terms of distance and not time, because we definitely have had a lot of instances where there's a really strong hurricane and it very slowly moves on the land and maybe it takes more hours for it to get downgraded. But distance, this has got to be up there. Um, Riley, go ahead. Hey, Ryan, I'm just going to provide a little bit um, on that. So as far as I could tell from the quick look I made, this looks like it's probably somewhere in the top 20. Now, 20 might not sound like a lot, but there's a lot of hurricanes. Yeah. Um, and then the one that stuck out the most is the Hurricane King, which is the one we mentioned earlier, which is the only other one to go through this part of Georgia. Uh, that looked like it spent the most time over land, but I'm going to say that was cheating because what that was was it was a Category 4 storm when it made landfall in the very tip of Florida and then it worked its way directly up Florida. Oh. So practically both sides of the storm were still able to get warm air, even though the eye was completely over Florida, but that would probably have to set the record for the most time over land because it was technically over land. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, thank you, Riley, for that. Uh, we always, you know, w whenever we have questions like that, we always know we got Riley in the background looking into it and... and no question goes unanswered when you've got Mr. Dibble on your team. Interesting stuff there, for sure. And yeah, there is a lot of hurricanes, and it's different from tornadoes. Um, they are actually properly tracked a little bit better, I think, than stuff like tornadoes because hurricanes are so big. We don't have a whole lot of uh, historical data on tornadoes uh, that goes, you know, hurricane stuff goes way back to like 1850 or something. Uh, a lot of our hurricane or tornado stuff really didn't start getting prolific in terms of like the coverage until the 70s. And then uh, once you get past the 50s, back towards the 19, early 1900s, it's really sporadic, the amount of uh, correct information that we have about the tornadoes that happened. Uh, Canadian says, I appreciate the coverage your team does, uh, Ryan. Uh, Y'all are truly a blessing. 
I know this ain't much, but hopefully it helps. Canadian, thank you so much, man. Uh, John, thanks for becoming a high-risk member. We've got a lot of new members today. Thanks for joining. Uh, if you're a member of the channel, you get a custom emote or a, a bunch of custom emotes. Um, we'll, we will be adding the shed. We will be adding the shed. We've got our graphic designer in the back room. We need a shed emote as soon as possible. And that, that's going to be for members. We, we always try to hold on to something uh, from each stream that has something memorable like that. Um, because a lot of people... I don't know. It's just a it's a way to add a little bit of light to uh, some of these darker situations. And so, somebody asked if if we could do a T-shirt with the shed, and we might. We'll work we'll work on doing that too, and we'll do all the all the proceeds will go to the to the disaster relief thing. That that might be cool if we can come up with a good design. I don't want to just put like any metal shed like looking thing on a shirt. <laughs> a lot of people really got a kick out of the shed earlier. <laughs> Our designer is one of the people uh, in the back room here helping uh, produce, and uh, they're already itching to like stop pressing buttons and go make a shed design. We, you can get it. Yeah, you can get um, Adobe on the Mac back there. You can push buttons and design a shed at the same time. Uh, we got an update from Y'all Force One. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, Ron. Um, I wanted to give you one more last update. We just left um, the Stan. Where were? What was it called? Stanahassee, Stana and um, the National Guard just arrived, and we saw a National Guard on the ground and hauling boats um, to get out into the water, and we also saw the choppers flying around. And I actually got a chance to speak with one of their residents, and thankfully their house was not affected at all, and they had stone shingles, so they saw no damage whatsoever to their house, so that is great news. Um, but, however, the to the other side of the road where you guys saw the flooding, that was actually a really close friend of theirs, and um, they have still yet to hear from them. So, um, I told them to contact us. I gave them our information, and if there's anything we can do to help, that we would be more than willing to help. So, thank you all. Awesome. Um, uh, Chandra, uh, so... How was okay. now? Now that things are uh, calming down uh, a little bit, can you hear me, Chandra? I don't know if she can hear me. I can't hear him. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll come. We'll come back to the y'all squad here. Kyle, go ahead and mute us. Um, uh, but we'll come back whenever we figure that out. I was just going to ask Chandra, you know, what her first uh, hurricane experience was like, but I'm sure we'll get that testimony from her uh, here soon. Um. So uh, that was Chandra, she, one of the members of the Y'all Squad from here in Kentucky, down there in Florida, being close to the action just in case they're needed. It looks like they are needed. Uh, the next step for them is going to be to probably kind of reconvene uh, around HQ and start making the plan for how we're going to, you know, uh, use these resources starting as early as tomorrow. They're going to meet up with Chris Hall. We've got a trailer that we're going to load down to the brim with supplies. Uh, we're going to work with uh, some sort of, uh, you know, uh, maybe it's a school, a church, I, I don't know, some sort of point of access to where we can have a place where you can come and, and get whatever it is that you need. Uh, all of that has to be worked out. Um, and, you know, now we know pretty much exactly where we need to take most of this stuff, which seems to be the hardest hit areas um, are from Keaton Beach down to Cedar Key. This is the area that was definitely hit the hardest today. And we still don't know the full extent of the damage, but it's 
looking like um, it's going to take a long time to recover from it. Yeah, we are very close to 50k. It's a pavilion, not a shed. What is the difference? Is this a Florida thing? Uh, go ahead, y'all squad. Hey Ryan, I just want to jump in on what the discussion in the chat is right now about a difference between a pavilion and a shed. I would say that a shed has walls and a pavilion is just like upright sticks that are holding up a roof, like a dining shelter kind of situation. Shed's where you store your lawnmower. Okay. All right. All right. I get it. I get it. Y'all are just too fancy. All right. Anything that ain't a house or a garage is a shed around here. <laughs> you guys got too many words for your structures. I get it. Too good for the East Kentucky boy. No, I, I, I do see what... Um, uh, I see. I see what a pavilion. I, I get it. I, I would never in a million years just walk up to this and be like, hmm, what a nice pavilion. <laughs> like that's, a, that's a shed, man. <laughs> <laughs> if you park a car under it, then it's a carport. <laughs> We're sticking with the shed. We're calling it the shed. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, the city of Sanford will resume, will resume normal operations Thursday, August 31st. Massive discussion happening right now in chat about sheds and pavilions. Ryan, you better remember to put gazebo on that pole. Oh, okay. Even fancier word. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh my goodness, Shed is off to a huge lead here. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Then <laughs> Somebody said, <laughs> my vote is for it doesn't matter. And that's true. <laughs> 
Okay, we've got 1,500 uh, votes in now. The, the gap is closing between the shed and pavilion. Oh, somebody said an awning. I'm seeing outbuilding. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stick with Shed, y'all. I'll check back in on this poll uh, momentarily, but we're currently at 3,000 votes, and it's pretty close. Shed's got 43%. Pavilion's got 41 Gazebo falling way behind with 16%. Yeah, I actually, I would refer to. I would refer to like the, the more like circular buildings that are really fancy looking as a gazebo. I wouldn't call that a shed, you know, but that's a, a gazebo is a gazebo. That's a different thing. Um, So we're <laughs> we're getting a little bit off the rails here, and I think it's because we're all very tired. Uh, the whole y'all team has been uh, probably awake for way too long um, as we've covered uh, this since, well, really for the past week, um, uh, if not more, but kind of nonstop since, uh, what is it, about 2 or 3 p.m. yesterday. So we're about 24 hours straight into the coverage here. And then our team out there in the field has been driving even beyond that. So we're all um, low on sleep. Um, so, uh, we might be, uh, c coming to an end of our broadcast here. Um, one of the thing, one of the reasons I wanted to stay on as long as possible for was just in case anything happened over here with our potential tornado situation. I do want to say that the potential tornado situation is still a potential situation. Even when I end the live stream it is going to continue to be a potential situation. So just keep that in mind. Um, there's a whole lot of things that are going to happen tonight. We're going to see a lot of heavy rain and strong winds move all the way up through Statesboro, Walt, uh, Walterboro, Georgetown, up through Myrtle Beach. We're going to see intermittent tornado problems from southeast Georgia through southern and southeastern uh, South Carolina up into southern uh, North Carolina. Uh, but for the most part, the worst of the storm is over, okay? And our uh, focus, our, our efforts are going to be uh, really tailored towards uh, what's going on down there along the coastline in Florida to try to help uh, people rebuild, okay? You will see me again very soon, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's neck and neck, Shed and Pavilion. 5,000 votes. Oh yeah, we, we did videos yesterday. We, yeah, so we've been going for a long time. Uh, Hurricane Adalia has... Uh, really been extra <laughs> as far as you know how much uh, time we're spending in front of computer screens uh, over here huge shout out to everyone on the team kinsey uh social media and uh merch uh pretty much a little bit of everything kinsey in the background has made things go very smoothly uh ally uh carly um kyle austin chandra caleb frank my wife my wife stephanie's been helping a lot with news relay listening in to uh emergency management feeds and all that good stuff uh riley andy um i mean there's so many people involved with this it's not even funny um Huge shout out to everybody who's put so much time and effort into making this uh, what it was. And I believe we did a pretty good job of covering the hurricane here. And our goal is to always get better. Hopefully it's a while before we have to do this again, but we'll be even better next time. I think we made some pretty good improvements since Ian. Um, so I the, the goal is just to always get better. It's it, for, you know, for no other reason other than why not? You guys have given us an opportunity here to do something that uh, nobody else really is doing or has the ability to do. 
Uh, so we're going to try to make it the best for you as we possibly can. Uh, go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. Um, it sounded like you were kind of starting to wrap up. So just before we do that, I was going to give my opinion on why we aren't seeing as many damage reports as like we did last year with Ian. Um, part of the concern of the storm, as we were just looking at it from a storm chasing perspective to begin with, is there's not much in the Big Bend of Florida. Now, that's not good when you want to go look at the storm, but that is good when it comes or in terms of what's getting impacted. If there's nothing there, there's not going to be a lot of reports of damage because there's nothing for it to hit. So hopefully what we're seeing is because there's this area so um, desolate, uh, there's not as much damage uh, or as much widespread damage as we saw with Ian. Yeah, I, I think that there's definitely something uh, to that uh, as well. Um, there's with Ian the the brunt of the storm. First of all, it hit a, a much more populated area, and it the the places that got hit the hardest. It was kind of a surprise. They were way outside of the cone of uncertainty. You know, uh, the a lot of the people that normally would have evacuated ahead of a Category Four didn't uh, because the the you know the forecast was a, was a little off uh, on Ian. It really was. Um, this one was so incredibly well forecasted that most people are gone, right? The, the people who are in these areas right now are not taking pictures. They're not submitting reports. A lot of them, uh, they're just in there trying to move the, the trees and stuff out of the way so that, you know, people can get back in there. Uh, and then additionally, I think that places like Horseshoe Beach are still kind of hard to really get to, uh, on like a meaningful, meaningful level, um, to where you can see right up there where the ocean comes in. So I think that we're still just not seeing 100% of the picture yet. And by tomorrow, we, we definitely will. Uh, and we'll have a really good idea uh, as to what exactly we're going to do uh, with the Y'all Squad, uh, which once again, we have over, we have about $50,000 at our uh, disposable to um, get out there and, and try to make a difference. And we're going to hit the ground running as soon as tomorrow to try to make that happen. All thanks to you. If, one last uh, call out here. If you want to help us, uh, the y'all squad.org. There's a link in the description. That's how you can make your donation and it's tax deductible and it's official. It's a 501 C three nonprofit, all that good stuff. And, um, yeah, we would very much appreciate it. Let's see. Uh, yeah. And we'll, and if you subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on, you will get an update on the shed. Okay. Well, if we do some sort of fundraiser with a shed shirt or something, subscribe, I'll do a community post. I promise. Yeah. The, the forecast was very, very, in my opinion, way better w with this one. The shed is still in the lead. Now we've got <laughs> 6,000 votes. Uh, shed and pavilion, neck and neck. Well, okay, shed is up by 1% now. I'm going to leave that going until we actually completely end the stream. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I think we're really, we're, we're wrapping it up here. I'm trying to find trying to find something real quick before we do that but we are wrapping it up uh for little updates that we get uh throughout the rest of the evening please follow on twitter as well at ryan hall y'all And I'll see you guys very soon, either uh, in, in another live stream if needed or in, in just a regular video. Uh, Riley, what do you got? Hey, Ryan, I was just going to say it looks like the next National Hurricane Center outlook is going to be at 2 p.m. Eastern. So we might as well stick around to see what they say about that. And then that's going to be the last hourly update as they also take their eyes off Idalia as it moves out of the U.S. Great idea. I agree. Um, that's, so that's what we'll do. We're going to stick around here, um, until that final update to, for some real closure, uh, on, uh, Hurricane Ad Adalia, um, as we wrap up our coverage. I, I also want to emphasize once again, I know you guys have heard me say it a million times, but when this live stream ends, the, the weather doesn't stop happening. 
All right, so please pay attention. Uh, if you're ahead of this thing where you're going to see some flash flooding, uh, potential tornadoes and strong winds all the way up the southeastern and uh, eastern parts of uh, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. By Thursday afternoon, it's going to be completely gone out of our hair, and we're not going to worry about it at all, though. So thank goodness for that. Barrier Islands and St. Pete is still closed, and we've got an update from Y'all Force One. Go ahead. Tell how my experience was. I never want to do it again. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Can you put the camera on Chandra? Uh, yeah, so my first experience, um, hurricane chasing. There's some stuff going on in the road right now. Is this one working? Good news, we're getting flagged. True. So we're having all kinds of technical difficulties. I'm in technical <laughs> difficulty because I'm so tired. Like I'm sure you can see it all over my face. I'm literally exhausted. Um, from what I experienced, I never, ever, ever want to have winds like that again. Absolutely not. Um, that was buck wild. I can never do that again. <laughs> Um, I actually think I had heart palpitations at one moment. Um, I, I don't even remember. I think I blacked out, to be honest. With you. I don't know. Um, but just seeing all the trees down and damages firsthand and seeing, like, the flood damage as soon as, you know, it pretty much it happened, um, that's hard. Like, I didn't – I know it's, like, harder to see it online and – to watch it happen in real life and everything but like being here and stepping in like right at the floodwaters and seeing people's homes destroyed and all that stuff it's not easy um and that knowing that people were like in this storm and decided to stay home and decided to evacuate like my mind was just completely like racing thinking about them like thinking if they're all right and then also watching the semi trucks flip that was that's something i could have done without <laughs> as well but um hopefully everyone is okay and i'm glad that we made it i'm glad that um, all of our chasers and everybody is okay um, I'm very grateful for you guys. I'm grateful for my team. Um, everyone has been texting me, messaging me, and everybody's ready to get started with recovery. I have EMs calling me right now, um, and I have people ready to set up to help volunteer. So we're going to go and gather all that information and decide what we're going to do from there. And then hopefully we'll give the update on probably Twitter um, and our Facebook page, the Y'all Squad Twitter and Facebook page. Um, and then we'll just kind of have an idea of where we're going to set up and what we're going to do and um, how we're going to spend this money that we um, that you guys were able to raise and that we're going to be able to help a lot of people with that. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Chandra. You guys did uh, great out there, and um, just uh, we're also <laughs> happy that you're okay. And sorry it was a little bit scary, but hey, as secretary of you know a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to helping people after uh, you know severe weather and tornadoes, I'd say it's a very valuable uh, thing to to witness something like that firsthand, so that you know it. You understand more now, probably more than ever, how important it is uh, what we do. So um, this is uh, like uh, uh, one of the first times we've actually sent the Y'all Squad out to a place before, you know, a disaster's happened. Um, Chandra's been to plenty places where tornadoes yeah, have struck at this point and floods and, and all that stuff. But most of the time we're there after. Um, but, uh, you know, this whole showing up beforehand thing is definitely a game changer. And I think it's going to allow us to, um, help even more. So, uh, super proud of the y'all squad and everything that we've been able to do. And, um, yeah, we're, we're at this point now, we're just waiting on the, the final national hurricane center, uh, update so we can get some closure on Adalia and, uh, keep going uh, from there. We're going to wrap it up. 
National Hurricane Center, once again, I do want to give them huge props on nailing the forecast from their first advisory. I, I think that the exact landfall uh, was correctly predicted uh, from the, the first advisory from the National Hurricane Center. <laughs> Uh, the literally the exact spot. So uh, good job, National Hurricane Center. Once again, everybody involved in this did a great job. Uh, couldn't have went any better. And I think that if we end up hearing about, um, uh, you maybe maybe there's no fatalities directly as a result of storm surge um, and and strong winds. I think that that has to be accredited to the weather forecasting uh, enterprise because this was communicated extremely well, and we got a lot of people to evacuate. Uh, go ahead, Riley. All right, so we just got our um, last update from the National Hurricane Center. 75 miles per hour, so that is just, that's literally one mile per hour away from being a tropical storm. So it does remain a hurricane, however, a very weak one. And by the next outlook, we certainly will have a tropical storm. Um, also, all of our storm surge across the um, west coast of Florida is now starting to recede. Uh, we are seeing that everywhere. Uh, I know we were looking at Cedar Key a lot as our point of interest for the strongest storm surge. We are now only one foot above what the tide would have been without storm surge. And you can actually see that on the lower left camera that is... Um, it just looks like a normal beach. Obviously, Keaton Beach and Deckel Beach, they still have a decent amount of surge, but it is coming down. There is going to be relief to that. Also, I see uh, Carly, our treasurer, just pointed out Rachel Black donated $1,000 to the Y'all Squad. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, other than that, I mean, that's all we have on this storm. And I think, oh, that's my weather radio going off here in Minnesota. That's interesting. <laughs> But yeah, as far as tropical systems go, that's all we have. Okay. All right. Oh, also, more importantly, we have to figure out what it was. Was it a shed or a, um, oh, we have another. Mark Morrison just donated 1.5 thousand. Oh, wow. The all squad. But still, we need the uh, shed versus uh, pavilion. Yeah, absolutely. I'll I'll give you an update on that now. Um, it's 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 official. We're we're closing in on ten thousand votes, and uh, it's forty five percent shed, forty one percent pavilion. Sorry, fancy people. It's a shed. <laughs> it's in like it will always be a shed. Uh, and that's just the way it goes. Um, so once again, huge shout out to Rachel Black and uh, Mark Morrison. Rachel donated $1,000. Mark uh, Morrison just donated $1,500. Billy Waldrop just donated $1,000. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, every single person that is contributing right now, thank you so much. Um, it, it means a lot, and we're going to make sure it gets put to use and uh, it goes very far, okay? So, I'm going to have to wrap it up now, guys. We've been going for over 10 hours, I believe, and we got to get some rest. We'll see you again very soon, um, and it's a shed. It is a shed. <laughs> I got to find the button. to. So I, I had problems yesterday starting the stream, and today I'm having uh, problems ending the stream. All right, seriously, thank you, guys. Bye.